Chapter 1051 Grim Demon's Appearance Unexpectedly, the invisibility cloak didn't admit defeat this time. Instead, the golden battle god Halbert admitted defeat and left the battlefield. People believe that this was a sign of giving up. Presumably, the owner of the golden battle god Halbert didn't wish to continue. Is it finally ending? Although I knew that it was meaningless, I don't know why, but I still have some indescribable anticipation. Someone said in disappointment. Perhaps it's because of our own expectations. In the real world, we have many things we want to do, but due to our own conditions or various reasons, we can't do it. Sometimes, we will subconsciously hope that someone can do something that we can't. Even if it's just watching others succeed, we will be very happy. His friend said after some thought. That's right. Although we can't participate in the ranking battle, we still hope that there are real humans who can participate and not those fellows with guardians. Another person said. There's actually no difference, right? Aren't companion beasts and guardians the same external forces? How can it be the same? Companion beasts are obtained through our own hard work. That's the power we control. But what about guardians? Their power ultimately belongs to them. They represent the dimension. Even if they win in the end, it only means that the dimensional race they represent obtained victory, not as humans. There were many people who shared the same thoughts as them, but everyone knew that the era of guardians was coming. This was already an irreversible trend. The invisibility cloak took first place, and a guardian immediately issued a challenge. The invisibility cloak was a companion beast. According to the changed rules, it only had three minutes to accept the challenge. Three minutes quickly passed. The human stared at the screen, wondering if the invisibility cloak would still choose a companion beast as its opponent. A light flashed on the screen as the invisibility cloak accepted the challenge. However, this time, the one challenging the invisibility cloak wasn't a companion beast, but a guardian. From the looks of it, he has really given up. Everyone sighed inwardly. Although they knew that failure was inevitable, they were unwilling to see this moment arrive. Grim Demon is a guardian I've never heard of. I wonder who he belongs to. It looks like only the guardian went on stage. His human companion didn't appear alongside him. Does he look down on the invisibility cloak that much? That's true. Although guardians are also at the mythical stage, they are clearly much stronger than ordinary mythical companion beasts. Furthermore, the invisibility cloak isn't a companion beast with very strong combat strength. I believe this guardian will still win in the end. Everyone suddenly felt dispirited. The guardian battle that they had been looking forward to was no longer that interesting. We're finally back on track. Let me see how strong the other guardians are. A man in guardian armor smiled when he saw Grim Demon appear. However, after a while, people suddenly realized something amiss. After Grim Demon entered the cube's arena, he floated in the air. He looked very mysterious, mighty, and domineering. However, he only floated there and looked up at the sky at a 45-degree angle without attacking. Wait, what's going on? Look at that guardian. Doesn't the way he's acting look familiar? Don't tell me he's here to stall for time like those companion beasts. No. Impossible. I don't think it's possible either. What's the point of a guardian stalling for time? Besides, if there's a guardian, why don't you appear with the guardian? Why do you need those companion beasts? But look, he's really the same as the companion beasts from before. He's just standing there without moving. Instantly, Ripple surged once again in the Federation. Everyone was guessing what Grim Demon, the Guardian, was up to. Why was he doing this? Also, was the owner of Grim Demon and the owner of the Invisibility Cloak the same person? Or was he just stalling for time? It's been half an hour, but Grim Demon still hasn't moved. From the looks of it, there's no mistake. He's also stalling for time. Holy SH asterisk T, since he possesses a Guardian, why didn't he use it earlier? Turns out that this is a fellow who started out with the help of a guardian. That's right. If he didn't have a guardian, how could he have killed so many mythical creatures and have so many companion beasts drop? Don't you find it strange? Why didn't his human companion participate? Instead, the guardian went up by himself? As people discussed, the Federation Freedom Investigation Bureau suddenly released an article. The contract between humans and guardians. An interesting idea was proposed in the article. This idea also caused a huge reaction in the Federation. The article pointed out that up to now, more than 40 humans had known to contract guardians. Some of them didn't hide their identities and had even become celebrities among humans. Some were originally unknown youths who ended up becoming famous celebrities in the Federation. The Federation Freedom Investigation Bureau had also interviewed a portion of them. All humans with guardians said that their contract with guardians was absolutely fair. Any party could terminate the contract at any time without any ramifications. However, the reporter from the Federation Freedom Investigation Bureau pointed out that although this contract looked absolutely fair, it wasn't the case. 
after humans contracted with guardians, the growth of humans would stop. As for guardians, they could continue to become stronger. It looked like a fair contract, but in the end, only the guardians benefited. Of course, when humans had the guardian, they could also use guardians to do things that were beneficial to them. However, in the end, humans were more like tools. Grim Demon's lone appearance in the arena gave the Federation Freedom Investigation Bureau's reporter a sudden thought. Hence, he raised the question of whether there was only one way for a human to contract a guardian. Furthermore, he also speculated the possibility of another contract that placed the human in the driver's seat. Before humans violated the contract, the guardian couldn't take the initiative to terminate the contract. How is that possible? The difference in strength between humans and guardians is too great. Even if there's such a contractual method, guardians will definitely not be willing to sign something like that. That's right. Now, humans are in need of guardians. How can they sign such a contract? It sounds like this contract method is even fairer. The guardian obtains benefits from humans, so it doesn't make sense that they can leave whenever they want to. That's right. Even a divorce requires one to split the family assets. Letting all the benefits be taken away by the guardian is unfair in itself. Chapter 1052 Have to Fight As people discussed, Grim Demon felt extremely uncomfortable standing in the arena. This was supposed to be a stage where he slaughtered everyone and made everyone tremble in fear. He wanted people to know that he was back, but now, he could only stand there and do nothing. Although he had already tried his best to appear cool and powerful, Grim Demon was extremely displeased when he thought about how he would have to admit defeat in the future. That detestable human. If it wasn't for her lady demonic neonate, I would have blasted him to pieces, Grim Demon thought gloomily. Since he was only here to stall for time, Grim Demon closed his eyes and waited for time to pass. After an hour, Grim Demon suddenly felt that something was amiss. Opening his eyes, he realized that the invisibility cloak had been forcefully ejected from the cube's arena, and he had one. What's going on? Grim Demon was pleasantly surprised, as he thought to himself, it's not my fault. That thing admitted defeat. Joan wasn't the only one stunned by this sudden development. All the humans on Earth were stunned. Soon, people realized what had happened. Isn't this too much of a bully? How can a companion beast be judged to lose within an hour, while a guardian is judged to have one? It's unfair. I've seen shameless people, but I've never seen such a shameless person. If you want to deem it as the loser, both of them should be deemed as having lost. What right does a guardian have to stand there without moving to be judged the winner? People were furious as they made condemnations about it, but it was useless. The ranking battle continued. Everything was still under the control of the dimension. People couldn't help but feel sad. This was clearly the selection of the king of Earth, but Earth's creatures didn't even have the right to choose. Zhou Wen and Wang Lu were also stunned by this shameless act. Wang Lu said angrily, These fellows are bullying us. Zhou Wen snapped to his senses and said thankfully, I'm already considered very lucky. Thankfully, they didn't deem Grim Demon to have lost. Otherwise, the situation would only be worse. However, Zhou Wen had already thought about it. It was unlikely that both parties would be eliminated. That way, there would be no first place. If the second place was replaced, it would still be Zhong Zia. First place would still fall into the hands of outsiders. However, this way, Zhou Wen's plan of using Grim Demon to stall for the full 48 hours failed. All he could do was let Grim Demon continue accepting challenges. You want to fight? Then let's fight. Zhou Wen was still confident in Grim Demon's strength. Regardless, this fellow already had the strength of a terror grade. It shouldn't be a problem for him to defeat ordinary guardians. As long as the challenger wasn't a guardian at Knight Thearch's level, Grim Demon's victory was almost certain. There were quite a number of guardians challenging Grim Demon. Joan had previously learned about some of them. After seeing some of their battles and looking at the challenge list, he got Demonic Neonate to inform Grim Demon and accept one of the Guardian's challenges. You have to win. Joan finally got Demonic Neonate to inform Grim Demon. Demonic Neonate only needed to inform Grim Demon with her mind. Grim Demon was overjoyed when he heard that, but he still muttered, Why is there a need to select opponents? My strength is enough to suppress everything. No matter how many of those brats come, they will all die. However, despite saying that, Grim Demon still accepted a challenge from a guardian named Darkness Emissary according to the instructions Demonic Neonate had sent. Darkness Emissary had previously been interviewed by the Federation Freedom Investigation Bureau. It was a rather encouraging story. A youth from a small city had entered a famous school with excellent results. After graduation, he took things one step at a time and became an excellent freelance hunter. Then, he obtained the favor of the heavens and unexpectedly encountered a guardian cocoon. It also happened to match his hidden talent, allowing him to leap to the top of the Federation. At that moment, Wei Gu held a teacup in one hand 
as he watched the live stream while flipping through the information beside him. The information was regarding Darkness Emissary. After Wega had graduated, he went through many twists and turns before finally entering the Special Investigation Bureau. He had started off as an ordinary inspector, but now, he was only a low-ranking archive administrator. Although this was only the Bureau's ordinary archive room, the information Wei Gu could come into contact with was incomparable to the past. He wasn't in a rush. He insisted on combing through the files every day. Others weren't willing to do such a boring job, but he enjoyed it. Now, Wei Gu knew the entire archives like the back of his hand. The information regarding Darkness Emissary and Zhou Ming was also included. After he saw Darkness Emissary enter the arena, he pulled out his docket to take a look. They both have the same surname, but why is there such a huge difference between them? Wei Gu couldn't help but sigh after seeing Darkness Emissary's information. The information obtained by the Bureau naturally wasn't as simple as it looked. From the information, not only was Zhou Ming ruthless, but he also didn't care about friendship. His family background was indeed not good. He had a girlfriend in high school, and her family didn't despise him. They even paid him to attend a famous school. In the end, after he made a comeback, he abandoned that girlfriend and found another beautiful one. Wei Gu looked at his first girlfriend's photo. She was indeed not beautiful. She could only be considered average, and was a little plump. He guessed that Zhou Ming's motives were probably not pure when he first got together with her. Later, the girl's parents went to reason with Zhou Ming and had even been injured by him. He really didn't care about their past relationship. Zhou Ming had done many such things in secret. He was a person who only wanted to climb up. Wei Gu was reading when he suddenly heard the door to the archive room open and a person walk in. Wei Gu was a very meticulous person. When he heard the gate, he felt that the person was somewhat different from those who often came to the archives. He hurriedly looked up and saw who it was. He immediately stood up and saluted. Director General, why are you here? If you need any files, just inform me. I'll send them to you now. Shin Yuchi smiled. There's no need to be nervous. Let me take a look at Darkness Emissary's file. Ah, it's already here. So you're also interested. Not bad. As he spoke, Shin Yuchi took the file on the table and stood there to flip through it. I happen to see that Darkness Emissary is up next in the fight, so I took it out to take a look and tidy it up. Wei Gu said. Shin Yuchi nodded slightly and didn't say anything. After reading a few pages, Shin Yuchi asked casually, You are a top student at Sunset College. You should know Zhou Wen, right? Wei Gu immediately answered. Yes, Director General. Zhou Wen is my junior. When he entered the school, I was already the student council president. Do you know much about him? Shin Yuchi looked at the information and continued asking without looking up. I know a little. I originally wanted to pull him onto the student council, but he wasn't interested. Wei Gu said. Chapter 1053 Where is he? After Shin Yuchi left, the fearful expression on Wei Ji's face vanished. He sat back down and picked up his teacup to slowly drink tea as he watched the live stream. If one placed their ear close to Wei Ji's mouth, one could hear him muttering to himself. From the looks of it, my chance is finally here. I just don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. Battles that hadn't been seen for more than a day were about to begin again. Many people were still looking forward to the outcome of this battle. The media had reported a little of Darkness Emissary's abilities. He was indeed very strong. Furthermore, Zhou Ming had recently been very close to a local wealthy family. Perhaps, he had already obtained a mythical companion beast, so his strength was definitely not to be underestimated. As for Grim Demon's strength, it was unknown, but his human companion hadn't participated. This was undoubtedly a huge disadvantage. Without a human's participation, there were no mythical companion beasts available to be used. Grim Demon didn't mind this. He looked at Zhou Ming, who had appeared in the arena in the Darkness Emissary armor, and said condescendingly, I'm happy today. I'll let you live a little longer. I'll give you a two-move handicap before killing you. Zhou Wen massaged his temples when he heard Grim Demon's words, feeling a headache. This bastard. Doesn't he know that I'm stalling for time? If you want to kill him in three moves, how can I stall for time? Zhou Wen decided to summon Grim Demon back to reprimand him after the battle ended. He wanted him to figure out the importance of the Holy Edict. Such a speech excited all the spectators in the Federation. Isn't Grim Demon too arrogant? Perhaps he really has the right to be arrogant. After all, his origins are definitely not simple. The person backing him has so many mythical companion beasts. You said it yourself. It's his backer who isn't appearing in battle. Without a human accompanying him, he can't use companion beasts. Zhou Ming only sneered. Without any hesitation, he attacked. The power of Darkness Emissary was different from Night the Arcas. The moment Zhou Ming attacked, the Darkness Emissary armor on his body erupted with terrifying energy. 
the energy condensed in the air above his head gradually transformed into a dark door. As time passed, the dark door became clearer and clearer. It emitted a terrifying dark aura, like a door to hell. Anyone could tell that using such a skill required a large amount of time to channel the strength. If it was a normal battle, Darkness Emissary wouldn't have the time or opportunity to use such a skill. However, as Grim Demon had actually given him a two-move handicap, Zhou Ming took the opportunity to use this skill. Ordinary people knew that skills that required time to gather strength were typically very terrifying. Grim Demon really deserves it. I'm afraid it's irrevocably committed now. What a powerful essence energy fluctuation. It has such a powerful aura even before it's fully formed. This strike must be extraordinary. After a few minutes, the dark door condensed above Zhou Ming's head. As you wish. Let my door of darkness take you to the seamless abyss. Zhou Ming finally spoke. Almost at the same time, the door of darkness opened. A strange suction force was produced in the dark world behind the door, sucking everything nearby into the dark door. Zhou Ming was very confident in this move. He had once used it to instantly kill an extremely powerful mythical creature. The only pity was that after using this move, the mythical creature was reduced to nothing, leaving no spoils behind. Go to hell. This is the outcome of underestimating me. Zhou Ming sneered inwardly as he waited to see Grim Demon's horrified expression when he was sucked into the dark world. But soon, the sneer on Zhou Ming's face turned to horror. Grim Demon floated in the air and moved. He continued looking down at him as though the suction force in the door of darkness didn't exist. Impossible. The suction force of the dark world is enough to devour top mythical creatures. How can this be? Zhou Ming was alarmed and furious. He gathered his strength and pushed the door of darkness closer to Grim Demon. The closer the door of darkness was to Grim Demon, the greater the suction force of the dark world. However, when the door of darkness was almost in front of Grim Demon, Grim Demon remained standing there motionless. Stop dawdling. You've still got one move left. Grim Demon waved his hand and demonic aura surged, shattering the door of darkness. However, at the same time as the door of darkness shattered, Zhou Ming spewed out blood as he fell backward. Without any hesitation, Zhou Ming immediately surrendered and left the arena. Instantly, all the spectators looked at Grim Demon in a daze. Their shock was indescribable. Although Darkness Emissary wasn't very strong, it was ranked in the top 20. The attack he had channeled with all his might had been easily dispersed by Grim Demon, scaring Zhou Ming into admitting defeat. Furthermore, anyone could tell that Grim Demon had no intention of doing anything to Zhou Ming. It was an unintentional strike. This Grim Demon is so powerful. The asterisk MN, this is too ferocious. Who is his contractor? I really want to know. For real? Is the difference between guardians that great? Joe would never expect a grim demon to be so ferocious. With a casual wave of his hand, he had destroyed Darkness Emissary's all-out strike. The terror grade is indeed powerful. Without the terror transformation ability, even mythical creatures are nothing. Yet, I'm not even considered nothing. How tragic. Joe when wished he could immediately advance to the mythical stage. Grim Demon was depressed. He remembered that the guardians of his era weren't that weak. He was originally prepared to unleash a massacre, but it ended before it even began. What depressed Grim Demon even more was that none of the people who had been constantly challenging him previously challenged him again. The cube also lost its video broadcast because there were no guardians challenging it again. It returned to the ranking menu. On the rankings, Grim Demon was first, while Ye was second. People waited for a while, but no one challenged Grim Demon again. That strike had stunned all the Guardians. Even if someone wanted to challenge him, they wouldn't act rashly like before. I never expected such an unexpected gain. Zhou Wen didn't know whether to laugh or cry when he saw Grim Demon return. He had previously wanted to reprimand Grim Demon, but he never expected that after Grim Demon's ruckus, he would end up with more time. Perhaps he could while away the 48 hours. Well done! Zhou Wen said as he patted Grim Demon on the shoulder. On the internet, the scene of Grim Demon accidentally defeating Darkness Emissary had already become an emoji. Someone even added lines to the picture. Fight me! Eh? Where is he? Chapter 1054 Objective Accomplished Grim Demon's name spread across the world. Many people were studying Grim Demon's abilities, but because there was too little information, they failed to figure out anything. With no guardian continuing the challenge, Zhou Wen finally heaved a sigh of relief. Grim Demon wasn't happy at all. He sat by the side dejectedly, and drew randomly on the ground with a tree branch. As he drew, he muttered softly. Why isn't anyone challenging me? Why isn't anyone challenging me? Zhou Wen pretended not to hear him. It was normal for demonic neonate to come out to take a breather, since he was locked inside the sword. I hope no one will challenge me in the remaining 20 hours, Zhou Wen prayed inwardly. 
Ice Maiden secretly sized up Grim Demon and was extremely shocked. Previously, she had thought that Grim Demon was only an accessory and that his abilities were definitely not very strong. Otherwise, how could he be willing to be the guardian of a companion beast? But from the looks of it, Grim Demon was a genuine terror grade existence. This left her even more alarmed. Even the guardian of a companion beast is at the terror grade? Ice Maiden had never heard of such a thing in the past, nor did she know how Zhou Wen had done it. Time ticked by. No one challenged Grim Demon again. Almost 48 hours later, someone finally challenged Grim Demon again. However, the person who challenged was Ya. Someone is challenging me! Grim Demon stood up excitedly and was about to rush to the cube. Admit defeat immediately after entering, Zhou Wen said lightly. Grim Demon immediately deflated like a balloon. He looked at Zhou Wen with a look of resentment and asked, Why? Don't you want to get first place? No, do as I say. Zhou Wen wasn't completely uninterested in first place. However, he still didn't know the benefits and disadvantages. Wang Mingyuan had once told him not to take first place again, so up to now, Zhou Wen hadn't made up his mind. Furthermore, it wasn't that easy to obtain first place. It was unknown if there were any terror grade guardians that were participating. However, Ninth Arch and the one from Forbidden City who hadn't participated in the battle were definitely at the terror grade. Perhaps such terrifying existences would take action in the final infinite battle. It probably wouldn't be easy for Zhong Zia to maintain his first place. I guarantee that as long as you let me fight, I will obtain first place. Grim Demon looked at Zhou Wen with anticipation. I'll get your help when I want first place. Zhou Wen looked at Demonic Neonate. Demonic Neonate seemed to understand Zhou Wen's intentions as she glanced at Grim Demon. Grim Demon immediately looked at the cube obediently and walked over. Zhou Wen exhorted. Be careful when you go up. See if you will secretly pass you a message. Got it. Grim Demon answered listlessly as he entered the cube. You didn't pass any message. All he did was take back the first spot. If Zhou Wen had known that would happen, he wouldn't have even sent Grim Demon. It was more straightforward to forfeit. When the Federation citizens saw that first place had returned to Ya, they naturally understood that they were all in cahoots. Ya is already a guardian. Grim Demon can't be his, so who does Grim Demon belong to? If we can find Ya, we might be able to know who Grim Demon belongs to. Which family are these people from? They have so many mythical companion beasts, but they actually have guardians like Ya and Grim Demon. It's too terrifying. Did you notice? Second place became Grim Demon, but after the mythical companion beasts admitted defeat, they didn't obtain a ranking. This is blatant discrimination. What can we do about that? The future is the era of guardians. Existences like Ya and Grim Demon are not something ordinary humans and companion beasts can deal with. Instead of thinking about this, we might as well consider where to contract a guardian that's as powerful as Grim Demon. Zhou Wen saw Ya make a gesture before disappearing. It was the gesture Zhong Zia had used every time he won back when they played cards together. Only then did Zhou Wen feel relieved. Although he didn't know what Ya had done, it looked like he had succeeded. After putting away Ice Maiden and Grim Demon, he was just about to find Li Xian and Feng Xiuyun when his phone suddenly rang. It was a message from the Darch. You contracted with Grim Demon? The omniscient Darch seemed to have a question for the first time. I have nothing to do with Grim Demon. Why are you asking? Zhou Wen replied. If there's nothing between you, would he have cooperated with your companion beast to stall for time? If there's nothing, would he have given first place to ya? The Darch said disdainfully. There's really nothing between us. Zhou Wen didn't wish to explain further lest he slipped up. With the Thearchish shrewdness, she could easily guess something from his words. Although Grim Demon is very strong, contracting him is definitely not a good choice. The Darch seemed adamant that Zhou Wen was related to Grim Demon. Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. From the Thearchish words, she seemed to know Grim Demon. Furthermore, Grim Demon was the first to be described as very strong by the Darch. Is Grim Demon really that strong? Zhou Wen had always felt that Grim Demon wasn't that strong because he was too cowardly in front of Demonic Neonate. However, Zhou Wen now felt that perhaps what Grim Demon had said in the past wasn't pure bragging. Then who's a good choice? You? Zhou Wen replied. You aren't qualified to contract me. The Thearka's answer was very arrogant. However, these words seemed to admit that she was also a guardian, but he couldn't be sure. It was also possible that the Darch had deliberately said this to mislead him. However, if you do me a favor, I can consider giving you a chance. The Darch sent another message. What chance? Zhou Wen was alarmed, but he asked the obvious. A chance to contract the strongest guardian, the Darch said. Don't tell me the strongest guardian you are talking about is yourself? Zhou Wen replied. Yes. I'm not interested in guessing. Zhou Wen didn't wish to play any guessing games with her. He bluntly said. 
If the strongest guardian you mentioned is you, I can consider it. The Tharch didn't respond to the topic at hand. Let's continue our discussion after you obtain the dimensional wheel. If I can obtain the dimensional wheel, I'll be the Lord of Earth. What's there to talk about? Joe went probed. Don't tell me you really think that you will be the Lord of Earth after getting first place? The Tharch replied. Didn't they say that the dimensional wheel will bestow immense power? With absolute power, one will naturally be the Lord of Earth. Are you also interested in the dimensional wheel? Jowen said. Let's keep talking until you obtain the dimensional wheel. The Darch replied before going offline. She didn't reply to Jowen's messages. What does she want? Jowen was somewhat puzzled. Chapter 1055 Landing on the Moon After Yo went on stage, the Guardians began challenging him again. Yo was the same as before. No matter who challenged him, he would accept the challenge. However, this time, he didn't immediately accept the challenges one after another. He would always rest for some time to maintain an optimal state. Jowen had also watched a few of Yo's battles and found him very strong. He couldn't find any weaknesses. Together with the puppet avatar and other strange skills, he was virtually invincible. Guardian after guardian was defeated by Ya, but there were still guardians constantly challenging him. Jowen didn't continue watching. It was almost time to head to Sky Pass to meet Shinyuchi and head to the moon. Li Xian and Feng Chiyuan took Ya and followed Wang Lu back to the Wang family. Jowen went to Sky Pass alone. Although mythical creatures could also fly into space, humans had weak physiques. It was safer to take a rocket. Shinyuchi had been preparing for the launch of the rocket for the past few days. In fact, he had begun making preparations after the lunar incident. Otherwise, it would have been impossible for him to complete the preparations for a man rocket launch in such a short period of time. After arriving at the Sky Pass, Shinyuchi personally received Zhou-Wen. What surprised Zhou, when was that way Gu was following Shinyuchi? Isn't this President Wei? Why are you here? Zhou Wen asked Wei Gu. Wei Gu smiled and said, I'm now an inspector at the bureau. I wanted to inform you, but I don't have your contact number. I haven't been able to contact you. You have to give me your phone number later. Since you are classmates, you should build on your relationship in the future. Shinyuchi smiled and said, In the future, little Wei will be in charge of our bureau's liaison with you. Do you have any objections? I have no objections. President Wei is quite good. He's a very capable person. Your bureau sure is filled with talent. Jowen said with a faint smile. If you are interested, the bureau's door is always open to you. Shinyuchi said. Forget it. I can't be restrained. I'm different from others. Jowen said with a smile. Shinyuchi stopped talking about this matter and said. The rocket will be launched at 3.10 a.m. There's still some time to prepare. Perhaps you can rest first. Little Wei, take good care of Jowen. Yes, Director General. Wei Gu saluted. After Shinyuchi left, he went to a room. There was a surveillance video playing in the room. The woman with the nickname of Button was sitting there watching the surveillance footage. Noticed anything? Shinyuchi sat down and asked. This Wei Gu is a smooth and slick person. He's naturally good at gathering intelligence, said Button. He does have some talent. If I can take him under my wing, he might be able to achieve great things in the future, Shinyuchi said. You don't trust him? Asked Button, having noticed something. Although according to the investigations, he really has nothing to do with Jowen and even had some conflicts in secret, it's best to be careful, Shinyuchi said. So you got Wei Gu to follow Jowen to test him? Button pondered. Not entirely. It was better to have someone who knows Jowen follow him than someone who knows nothing about him, Shinyuchi said. That's true. Then what do you want me to do? Buttons nodded before asking again. Stay behind on our trip to the moon, Shinyuchi said. I'm afraid you'll be in danger if I'm not with you, said Button. I need you to do something. I can't let you expose yourself to them. Shinyuchi looked at Button and reached out to straighten the slightly wrinkled clothes on her shoulder. Does what you want me to do have something to do with Joe Wen? Button asked. No, it has nothing to do with him, but it's best not to let him see you. Then what do you want me to do? Button was surprised that she had guessed wrong. If Waku returns alive, I want you to think of a way to stay by his side, Shinyuchi said casually. Button's body trembled imperceptibly, but she immediately returned to normal. Why? Even if he has some relationship with Zhou Wen, it's not worth wasting too much time and energy on him, right? This is my decision. You can choose to carry it out or return to where you came from. Shinyuchi took two steps back and said, as he sized up the well-pressed clothes on Button. All right, I'll do it. But at the very least, you have to tell me what I should investigate, right? Button gritted her teeth and said, There's no need to investigate or do anything. You just need to gain his trust and wait for the day I need you, Shinyuchi said calmly. Jowen didn't know why they had to launch the rocket at night. 
he was rather curious when he first entered the rocket cabin. Although it wasn't rare for people to fly in the sky or burrow into the ground in this era, it was still very nerve-wracking and exciting to be on a rocket. Apart from Zhou Wen, there were eight other members, including Shinyuchi and Wei Gu. As for the four sensors, Zhou Wen didn't know any of them. The other six were unfamiliar faces. Everything was ready. After the countdown ended, the rocket flew into the sky. Zhou Wen was originally nervous and expectant, but he soon realized that the feeling of riding a rocket wasn't as magical as he had imagined. It could even be said to be boring because he couldn't see anything in the cabin. He couldn't experience the feeling of leaving Earth and watching it shrink. I looked forward to it for nothing. Zhou Wen suddenly felt that it was better to fly out of Earth on a companion beast after he advanced to the mythical stage. The rocket launch was very successful. Soon, they entered a predetermined orbit. Everything seemed to be developing in a good direction. However, everyone knew that their fate would only be decided when they reached the moon. Up to now, they still hadn't figured out what the creature that had destroyed the lunar base was, nor had they discovered any other dimensional creatures. More than 70 hours later, Zhou Wen and company successfully landed on the moon, but they were still a distance away from the base. Apart from two people staying behind, Shin Yuchi, Zhou Wen, and company headed for the lunar base. This landing was simple. They hadn't brought any tools, like lunar rovers. In fact, they wouldn't need to use them. Mythical companion beasts were much more useful here than lunar rovers. Zhou Wen originally imagined that he could see more stars on the moon, but now, he realized that what he could see was rather limited. It was far inferior to what he could see on Earth. It didn't match his expectations. President Wei, do you want to ride with me? Zhou Wen summoned the great might to draw bull and invited Wei Gu. Wei Gu looked at Shin Yuchi and saw him nod slightly. Only then did he smile and said into the communicator, All right. Chapter 1056 Bone Pottery Everyone was nervous because this was the moon. If anything happened, just damage to the spacesuits could result in their deaths. After arriving on the moon, they had already used radar to scan the area, but they didn't find anything abnormal. Zhou Wen didn't dare be careless. He kept Truth Listener on, but here, Truth Listener's ability seemed to be affected. It wasn't as useful as on Earth. Everyone felt uneasy as they headed for the base. With a mythical companion beast mount, they moved quickly. The Great Might Bedraw Bull quickly adapted to the gravity here and ran no slower than on Earth. Shin Yuchi also summoned a mythical companion beast. It was a giant rhinoceros. It was more than enough for the rest to sit on. Although they had already seen the photos, they were still shocked by the scene before them when they arrived at the base. The base that was hundreds of meters long had been squashed into a pit by some creature. Most of the buildings were flattened. Even if they weren't flattened, they were crushed into the rock stratum. There was no need to look. It was impossible for there to be a living person inside. However, there were no dimensional creatures around. After Shinyuchi communicated with everyone, he planned on heading straight to the Essence Crystal Mine, which was also the spot where the tree stump had been found. Similarly, when they arrived at the Essence Crystal Mine, they didn't find any dimensional creatures, nor did they see any astronauts. There were quite a number of Essence Crystal ores scattered on the ground. In the excavation crater, there were also quite a number of Essence Crystals shimmering with a charming luster. It's gone! An inspector named Wang Chou Yuan said as he stared into the mine. Everyone knew what he was talking about. Previously, the huge pit was where the tree stump was. As its roots were spread out, they had dug a huge pit. But now, there was only a huge crater left. The tree stump had gone. Everyone's hearts turned cold. Without the petals and the tree stump, their trip was equivalent to a wasted trip. What's that? Zhou Wen saw something strange as he looked at a corner of the mine. Everyone traced Zhou Wen's gaze and saw something in a huge hole in the mine. However, their eyesight wasn't as strong as Zhou Wen's, so they couldn't see what it was. Zhou Wen, can you see what it is? Shin Yuchi asked Zhou Wen. It looks like a human's back is facing us, but it doesn't look like a human. Zhou Wen said as he organized his words. What do you mean it looks like a human, but not a human? Wei Gu asked. I can't see the front. His back looks like a human, and he's wearing ordinary human clothes. But this is the moon. How can a human sit here in ordinary clothes? Zhou Wen said. Everyone used the binocular function of their helmets to take a closer look. Indeed, they saw a figure sitting with his back facing the cave entrance. They could only see his back, but they couldn't confirm if he was really human. Retreat. Let the companion beasts take a look. Shin Yu ordered his companion beasts to approach. Everyone felt a little uneasy as they watched the rhinoceros slowly approach. However, the figure remained motionless. The rhinoceros walked to the side of the figure, but the figure still remained motionless. Shin Yuchi frowned slightly and didn't let the rhinoceros attack. Wang Chiu Yuan, go take a look. 
Wang Chiu-Yuan responded and carefully looked over and approached. Director General, it's a human, a dead human, but this place is a little strange. Wang Chiu-Yuan said in surprise after circling around the person sitting there. He sounded very surprised, as if he had discovered something unbelievable. What's strange? Shen Yuchi immediately asked. Fire! There's fire here! Wang Chiu-Yuan's voice sounded from the communicator. Everyone was alarmed when they heard that. Logically speaking, it was impossible to ignite a flame on the moon. Therefore, it was indeed strange for Wang Chiu-Yuan to say that there was a fire there. Do you know that person? Is he an astronaut from before? Shen Yuchi asked. I don't know him. I don't think he's an astronaut from before. His looks are a little strange, and his clothes are also very strange. Wang Chiu-Yuan couldn't describe him accurately. Survey the surroundings. Report any situation immediately. We'll head over now. Shin Yuchi led everyone over. Zhou Wen and company were very careful. There was actually a person without a space suit sitting there. This was very strange to begin with, making them feel uncomfortable. Everyone carefully came to the cave, and indeed, they saw a dead person. His flesh and blood were shriveled, and his face and clothes were covered in dust. He looked like he had been dead for a long time. He looked like someone from the East District, but his cheekbones were especially high and his eyes were deep. He was somewhat different from East District people. His hair remained relatively intact. Under the dust, one could tell that his hair was black. The style of his clothes was very strange. It looked like a robe with long wide sleeves. They didn't look like the clothes worn by modern people. This wasn't too strange. The strangest thing was that there was a white jar in front of the person's toes. It was at most 20 centimeters in diameter. Inside the white jar was a tiny flame that looked like a lighter's flame. Although the flame was very small, it gave off a magical feeling. This was the moon. There was no oxygen, yet the tiny flame was burning steadily. This was very unusual. Everyone looked at Shinyuchi. He was the leader of this operation. Now that he had encountered such a strange matter, he naturally needed to make a decision. Don't touch him. First, explore the area and see if there are any other discoveries. Shinyuchi said as he sized up the white jar. Director General Shen, did you notice something amiss? Zhou Wen asked Shinyuchi. Shinyuchi said, Have you seen this jar before? No. Zhou Wen had already taken a careful look and couldn't tell what the jar was made of. It looked a little like jade, but it wasn't that exquisite. Saying that it was made of clay wasn't right due to its luster. If I'm not wrong, it should be bone pottery, a special kind of pottery. Shinyuchi said. Are bone pottery and bone porcelain the same thing? Zhou Wen asked with a frown. He had heard of bone porcelain. Because of the addition of bone powder, the porcelain that was produced under heat could be made thinner, harder, and more beautiful. It's not the same. Bone porcelain uses bone powder as the raw material. Bone pottery doesn't use bone powder as the raw material to make the pottery. Instead, it's pottery made from blood and blood sacrifices. It's also called blood pottery or corpse pottery. Shinyuchi continued with a solemn expression. In the past, I saw an expert's collection. He had bone pottery. According to him, bone pottery is usually used in ancient rituals. Ordinary people have no chance of coming into contact with such things. Chapter 1057 Invisible Dimensional Creature Were ancient humans capable of coming to the moon to offer sacrifices? Jowen asked as he looked at the corpse. I don't know. If you had asked me this question before now, the answer would definitely have been no. But from the looks of it now, even without rockets and other equipment, humans might have had the ability to reach the moon. Shinyuchi shook his head slightly. Under Shinyuchi's command, everyone left the cave and continued searching for useful clues nearby. Among the people from the bureau, there were professional investigators. They were much more professional than Zhou Wen, so he didn't focus on the investigations. He slowly walked on the moon as he switched his life soul to Glimmer. He could clearly sense that the Glimmer life soul was growing, but this growth wasn't enough for it to break through to a perfect body. Could it be that I have to use Glimmer's interstellar teleportation ability to advance to a perfect body? Zhou Wen now roughly understood how Glimmer could advance. He felt relieved. The Glimmer life soul already had the power to advance. It was only because he had never used Glimmer's ability that he was unable to break through the final barrier. Now, Zhou Wen only needed to use interstellar teleportation once to advance to perfection. If I were to use Glimmer to teleport back to Earth, I should be able to advance to a perfect body. Zhou Wen planned on teleporting back to Earth after the matters on the moon were over, allowing Glimmer to advance to a perfect body. Shin Yuchi and company kept investigating and had already discovered many clues. According to the current clues, the previous astronauts had been attacked by an unknown creature when they dug out the tree stump. Furthermore, according to the measurements of the mine, 
they discovered that there should be a natural pit hole under the tree stump. The creature that had attacked the astronauts was likely hiding in that natural pit hole. Director General, there's something very strange, Wang Chiyuan said as he surveyed the area. Speak. Shen Yuchi and company looked at Wang Chiyuan. There aren't any astronaut corpses at the scene, nor are there any signs of a fight. This means that the dimensional creature is very powerful. It can directly devour them or forcefully detain them. However, look at these footprints. These footprints belong to that mythical companion beast. These belong to those astronauts. Wang Chiyuan pointed at the footprints. If we were to encounter a powerful dimensional creature, even if we were quickly devoured after discovering it, we would subconsciously retreat. Even if we didn't take a step forward, the center of gravity for the step will shift. This should be obvious from the changes in the footprints. But from the looks of it, there's no sign of that at all. It's as though they didn't see any terrifying creature and were devoured without realizing what was happening. Everyone looked carefully at the footprints on the ground and realized that this was indeed the case. What do you think of this situation? Shen Yuchi asked Wang Chiyuan. I'm certain that they didn't see the dimensional creature. It's possible that the dimensional creature has invisibility, or it might have hidden somewhere and launched an attack when they weren't prepared. Wang Chiyuan scanned his surroundings. If that thing has invisibility, we have to be careful. Perhaps it's watching us from somewhere nearby. Everyone was alarmed as Zhou Wen's reaction was the greatest. This was because he knew that the dimensional creature might not be invisible, but because its life form was so advanced, this resulted in them being unable to see it. In other words, that dimensional creature might be a terror-grade existence. Is there really a terror-grade monster hiding on the moon? Zhou Wen was alarmed as he and Truth Listener scanned their surroundings at the same time, but they didn't discover anything. However, this only made him even more alarmed. Zhou Wen, what's your take? Shin Yuchi pondered for a moment before his gaze landed on Zhou Wen. I think it's best we leave this place quickly. Zhou Wen was originally interested in the petals and tree stump, but now that they were gone, and that there might still be a terror gray creature here, it wasn't suitable for him to continue taking risks in such an environment. Let's head back now. Shin Yuchi had just given the order when he suddenly heard a tragic cry. The screams coming from the communicator were short, as if someone had grabbed the person by his throat just as he had started shouting. Everyone was alarmed as they looked around, but they didn't discover anything. They didn't find any dimensional creatures or blood. No one even discovered anyone injured. However, one of them was missing. A perfectly fine person had vanished beside them. Lu Dong. Lu Dong. Everyone felt their souls leap out of their bodies. As Shinyuchi summoned his companion beast to stand guard, he shouted for the vanished inspector. No response. The communicator was terrifyingly quiet, as though the inspector had been erased from the world. Zhou Wen didn't hesitate to release Ice Maiden. At that moment, he was almost certain that the dimensional creature on the moon was likely a terror grade existence. Shinyuchi and company, who were feeling nervous, were shocked when they suddenly saw a woman beside Zhou Wen. However, when they saw Zhou Wen's behavior, they imagined that the woman was Zhou Wen's companion beast, but her aura didn't seem right. At times like this, no one was in the mood to investigate if the woman was a companion beast or something else. Shin Yuchi immediately gave the order to evacuate. It's best you don't go over. Zhou Wen stood there without moving because Ice Maiden's eyes were looking in the direction of their retreat. Furthermore, she looked rather solemn. What did you discover? Wei Gu stopped and asked Zhou Wen. That thing should be over there. Zhou Wen said as he looked in the direction that Ice Maiden was looking. Shin Yuchi and company hurriedly retreated. Shin Yuchi looked at Zhou Wen and asked. Can you see it? I can't see it, but she can. Zhou Wen looked at Ice Maiden and asked. How is it? What is it? Are you confident? It's very tricky. Even if I can win, I'm afraid I won't be able to protect you. Ice Maiden said. So it's really at the terror grade? Zhou Wen no longer had any doubt. To make Ice Maiden say such words, it had to be at the terror grade. Director General Shen, it looks like we can only escape separately. Zhou Wen wanted to summon the Earth Elemental Beast and planned on using its Earth Escape ability to escape. Whoever moves first will become its target, Ice Maiden said again. Upon hearing Ice Maiden's words, Zhou Wen had no choice but to give up summoning the Earth Elemental Beast and stood there motionless. Even though Zhou Wen didn't move, someone didn't believe him. An inspector summoned an epic companion beast that could fly. He wanted to use its power to escape in another direction. Chapter 1058 Wei Ji's Decision However, as he flew up, he suddenly vanished along with his companion beast as though he had been devoured by an invisible monster. Didn't you say that the dimensional creature is over there? Wang Chiyuan said in horror. It's still there, Ice Maiden said expressionlessly. Shin Yuchi's expression changed constantly. He suddenly turned around and ran. At the same time, he ordered, Follow me. 
Wang Chiyuan, didn't hesitate and ran with Shen Yuqi. Wei Gu followed as well. Zhou Wen only thought for a moment before following. The few of them jumped into the mineshaft together. Shen Yuqi led the way and rushed towards the dead person they had previously discovered. When they got to the side of the corpse, they were already covered in cold sweat. Thankfully, they had made the right bet. The invisible dimensional creature didn't attack them. Director General, what should we do now? Wang Chiu Yuan asked Shen Yuqi. We can't leave now. Shen Yuqi looked at the dead person and the bone pottery jar in front of him. Perhaps our chance for survival lies here. Zhou Wen had to admit that Shen Yuqi was indeed the head of the bureau. He was bold, careful, and quick-witted. All the nearby creatures had been devoured, but this sitting dead person hadn't been affected at all. Therefore, Shen Yuqi took a gamble. From the looks of it, he had made the right bet. At the very least, the terror great creature didn't immediately attack them or chase after them. What's this? Ice Maiden had also joined in their retreat. She didn't attack the terrifying creature. From the looks of it, she didn't have much confidence. Otherwise, she would have attacked without retreating. I don't know. A dead person that was originally here, Jowen said. That creature seems to be afraid of something here. It hasn't approached, Ice Maiden said as she looked nearby. From the looks of it, my guess should be correct. Perhaps the things here can help us escape. Shin Yuchi's gaze landed on the bone pottery jar. Of the things here, the bone pottery jar was naturally the most magical. The tiny flame in the altar was still burning, as though it wouldn't be affected by any external force. If there was anything here that could affect the terror creature, this was most likely the culprit. Zhou Wen and company stared at the bone pottery jar, but no one took it. Ice Maiden didn't know what it was as she constantly sized up the bone pottery jar, and the dead man. Director General, we have limited oxygen. We have to make a decision soon, Wang Chiyuan said as he stared at the bone pottery jar. Zhou Wen, what's your take? Shen Yuqi didn't immediately make a decision. Instead, he looked at Zhou Wen. This thing is a little odd. It's best not to touch it, Zhou Wen said. Shen Yuqi clearly didn't want to take the risk and wanted Zhou Wen to give it a try. The stronger something was, the more dangerous it was. But before figuring out what it was, Zhou Wen wasn't willing to touch it either. After all, it might be something that could intimidate terror creatures. Since even terror creatures were afraid of it, epic humans might be courting death if they came into contact with it. Now that we are in the same boat, we should work together to tide through this crisis. Otherwise, everyone might die here. Shin Yuchi paused before saying, Why don't we do this? Let's draw lots and choose someone to come into contact with the bone pottery jar. What do you think? If you want to draw lots, you can do so yourselves. There's no need to count me in, Zhou Wen said. Wang Chiyuan frowned and said, Why aren't you counted? Should we take the risk and let you reap the benefits? Zhou Wen shook his head and said, I don't need to reap the benefits. This is because I'm confident of escaping back to Earth alive, so I don't need to take the risk. Wang Chiyuan opened his mouth, but he couldn't say a word. His expression didn't look good. Zhou Wen indeed had the right to say such things. After all, Ice Maiden, who was of unknown origins, was the only one among them who could see the dimensional creature. Furthermore, she remained unharmed despite staring at it. Shin Yuchi nodded. That's right. Zhou Wen, you aren't from our bureau. There's no need for you to take the risk with us. In that case, let's draw lots. Director General, there's no need to draw. Let me give it a try. Wei Gu suddenly said. Although I'm the Director General of the Bureau, I don't have the right to let my subordinates risk their lives. Let's draw lots, Shin Yuchi said. Ever since the day I joined the Bureau, I've been prepared to risk my life, Wei Gu said calmly. I'm the weakest person here. My chances of survival are the lowest. Please allow me to do something within my abilities for the Bureau. If I'm lucky enough not to die, I hope you can remember my tiny contribution. If I die, there's no need to mention anything else. This, Shin Yuchi pondered. Please fulfill my wish, Director General. Wei Gu bowed. Whatever then. What other unfulfilled wishes do you have? If we are lucky enough to escape, I will definitely help you complete them. Shin Yuchi said, as he glanced at Zhou Wen from the corner of his eye. At this moment, Shin Yuchi hadn't forgotten to observe Zhou Wen's reaction. However, Zhou Wen stood there expressionlessly. This was because before Wei Gu spoke, he had secretly made a gesture that only Zhou Wen could see, telling him not to act rashly. Thank you for fulfilling my wish, Director General. If I am to die here, I hope you can take care of my family when you return. I'll be very grateful, Wei Gu said. Don't worry. Our Bureau will definitely not treat meritorious employees unfairly. If anything happens to you, the Bureau will definitely let your family live a comfortable life, Shinyuchi said solemnly. Thank you, Director General. I'm relieved. 
With that said, Wei Gu walked towards the bone pottery jar. He walked to the side of the jar and slowly squatted down to carefully examine the bone pottery jar. President Wei shouldn't be someone who will sacrifice himself for the bureau. Zhou Wen was somewhat worried for Wei Gu, but Wei Ji's secret gesture was telling Zhou Wen that he could handle it. Shen Yuqi and Wang Chiu Yuan looked at Wei Gu nervously. Shen Yuqi didn't forget to observe Zhou Wen. Seeing that Zhou Wen was only watching coldly without any reaction, his doubts about Wei Gu were basically gone. Wei Gu sized it up for a while, but he didn't seem to discover anything. Finally, he gritted his teeth and extended his hands towards the bone pottery jar, hoping to lift it up. If the dimensional creature was really afraid of the bone pottery jar, they could return to the spacecraft and leave the moon with it. The moment Wei Gu held the bone pottery jar with both hands, the tiny flame inside suddenly spewed out, turning into a terrifying flame that shot into the sky. Chapter 1059 Moon Palace In an instant, the fire enveloped Wei Gu, who was holding the bone pottery, turning him into a flaming man. The space suit instantly reduced to ashes. Zhou Wen was given a fright, as he immediately instructed Ice Maiden to save him. Her strength was most effective against fire elemental attacks, but Ice Maiden didn't move as she stared at Wei Gu. Zhou Wen realized that something was amiss. On careful look, he saw that the flames had already flowed into Wei Ji's body. The flames weren't burning from the outside, but from the inside out. Now, Wei Ji's body was like a flaming man. It was as though flames had seeped into every inch of his cells. As for the bone pottery artifact in his hand, it had turned to ashes in the flames. The corpse beside him also disintegrated. He didn't go up in flames, but was reduced to ashes. This gave Zhou Wen a very bad feeling. Shen Yuqi and Wang Chiu Yuan also looked at Wei Gu in horror. Although the flames on Wei Ji's body were terrifying, they didn't hear him cry out in pain. I am finally back. The flames gradually converged into Wei Ji's body. His body remained unharmed in the fire as he spoke. However, Zhou Wen didn't hear Wei Ji's voice. His tone and intonation were completely different from Wei Ji's. Who are you? Zhou Wen stared at Wei Gu and asked. Now, he regretted not stopping Wei Gu. Although the two of them hadn't interacted much, they were schoolmates. Zhou Wen still felt somewhat uncomfortable seeing him being possessed by an unknown creature. Who am I? The flames on Wei Ji's body had almost completely extinguished as he returned to his original appearance. Although his appearance hadn't changed, for some reason, Zhou Wen felt that the present Wei Gu was completely different. He looked up at the universe and said in a strange tone, I'm not human. What are you? Zhou Wen looked at Wei Gu as countless thoughts flashed through his mind. He couldn't think of any way to help Wei Gu retrieve his body. I'm human, Wei Gu said slowly. Didn't you say that you aren't human? Zhou Wen looked at him in puzzlement. He increasingly felt that Wei Gu was in danger. Not only was the thing attached to him a monster, but it was also a mentally ill monster. Wei Gu didn't answer Zhou Wen. He turned his head to look in the direction of Earth, but because this was the back of the moon, he couldn't see Earth. Is Earth still around? Wei Gu asked Zhou Wen. Of course it's still here, but we can't see it from this side of the moon. Zhou Wen found it even stranger. That's good. I should still be in time. Wei Gu muttered to himself. As he spoke, he walked out. Where are you going? Zhou Wen exchanged looks with Ice Maiden and followed him. Shen Yuqi and Wang Chiu Yuan hurriedly followed. Due to Wei Ji's existence, the invisible dimensional creature didn't attack them. If they were far away from him, they would probably be attacked again. This existence that occupied Wei Ji's body didn't seem to be as offensive as the dimensional creature. Take back my companion beast, Wei Gu said as he walked, as though he didn't care about Zhou Wen and company. He didn't walk quickly, as though he was familiarizing himself with this body. Wei Gu was already at the epic stage, but epic humans didn't have the ability to survive on the moon. However, now that he was walking naked on the moon, it was as though he was walking as freely as back on Earth. Where is your companion beast? Zhou Wen guessed the creature under the tree stump might be his companion beast. If he could subdue it, their danger would be greatly reduced. However, now that Wei Gu was possessed by him, Zhou Wen didn't know if he could recover. Thinking back to when Wei Gu left school, he had once said that he would find his life meaningful if he was lucky enough to barely defeat the heavens. But now, he was already doomed without doing anything. He didn't know if there would be a day when he could realize his value. Wei Gu didn't answer as he continued walking forward. He was walking in the direction where Zhou Wen and company had previously encountered the invisible creature. That terror creature is retreating. It seems to be afraid of this person. Ice Maiden whispered to Zhou Wen. Isn't that terror creature his companion beast? Zhou Wen whispered. That's a terror grade dimensional creature. It's naturally impossible for it to be a companion beast. Ice Maiden paused before saying. This person seems very strong. I also know that he's very strong. Now, I just want to know if there's any hope for Wei Gu to live. 
Zhou Wen asked. I'm afraid it's impossible to retrieve his body. Ice Maiden answered firmly. Soon, Wei Gu returned to the spot where the tree stump had been dug out. He stood in front of the huge hole and stared at it. A strange divine light shot out from his eyes, like two divine lamps. When the light shone into the hole, a strange change immediately happened inside. Suddenly, Zhou Wen and company saw a figure gradually condense in the hole. It was a huge dark gold toad. In the legends of the East District, the moon is also called Toad Palace. Legend has it that there's a golden toad inside. Could it be that this is the legendary golden toad? Shin Yuchi said as he stared at the golden toad. Zhou Wen had roughly guessed that the one who had devoured the astronauts and inspectors was most likely the golden toad. However, he didn't know what power Wei Gu had used to make the terror creature show itself. Soon, Zhou Wen realized that Wei Ji's target wasn't the golden toad. His gaze shone into the hole, revealing an ancient jade door where the mind's wall originally stood. The jade door was crystalline and emitted infinite coldness. Zhou Wen looked carefully and saw that on the plaque above the door's brow were the words, Moon Palace! Holy sh asterisk t, there's really a moon palace. Could Chang'e and Moon Rabbit be inside? Zhou Wen was surprised when he swept his gaze across the corner of the plaque. His surprise turned into disbelief. In the corner of the plaque was a tiny palm symbol. The tiny palm symbol held the moon symbol. There's actually a tiny palm symbol here. Zhou Wen was pleasantly surprised. This was an unexpected gain. Shin Yuchi and company also looked at Moon Palace in surprise. Although it wasn't strange for mythical places to appear in this era, seeing the legendary Moon Palace still set palpitations through their hearts. After all, the legend of Moon Palace was famous in the East District. The divine light in Wei Ji's eyes vanished as he slowly walked towards the Moon Palace. After taking a few steps, the golden toad opened its mouth and extended its python-like tongue towards Wei Gu. Wei Gu extended his hand and beckoned. Flames immediately appeared in his hand, condensing into a flaming axe that severed the golden toad's tongue. Chapter 1062 Illogical Points The golden toad's tongue was severed by the axe. Blood immediately spewed out from its mouth as it let out a shrill cry. And at the spot where its tongue was severed, flames burned. When the blood spewed into the air, it also burned like fireworks. How powerful! Zhou Wen was alarmed. Even Ice Maiden didn't dare underestimate the strength of the golden toad, but Wei Gu had chopped off its tongue with an axe. This was just too terrifying. Wait! Axe? Lunar Osmanthus Tree could the one possessing Wei Gu be the legendary logger? Zhou Wen looked at Wei Gu in surprise. The more Zhou Wen thought about it, the more he felt that it was possible. In myths and legends, the logger was a human. As he had committed a huge mistake during his immortal cultivation, he had been punished by the furious celestial arch. He was only allowed to leave after he had chopped down the Osmanthus tree on the moon. However, the Osmanthus tree on the moon wasn't an ordinary tree species. Instead, it was a type of undying tree. When the axe was pulled back after a chop, the wound on the tree automatically healed. Therefore, the logger ended up logging on the moon forever, never to leave the moon again. This was only one of the versions of the punished logger legend. Joe originally didn't believe it, but now that such a person had appeared, it was difficult not to connect them together. However, according to legend, it's impossible for the Osmanthus tree to be chopped down. Why is there only a tree stump now? How did the logger die? Joe Wen was puzzled. While Joe Wen was still pondering, the injured golden toad retreated into the moon palace. The possessed Wei Gu also walked in. If you want to leave, this is the best opportunity. Ice Maiden informed them. Director General Shin, are you returning to the spacecraft? Zhou Wen asked Shin Yuchi. Shin Yuchi pondered and said, Little Wei made such a huge sacrifice. Since he can still be saved, we can't abandon him. We have to think of a way. Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. He never expected Shin Yuchi to say such a thing. In that case, are you going in to save him? Zhou Wen stared at Shin Yuchi and asked. I can only say that I'm going in to take a look. If there's a chance, I'll save him. If there's no chance, I won't throw my life away. I'll just do my best. You and Wei Gu are also schoolmates. You won't abandon him, right? We were only from the same school and not from the same class. We didn't have much interaction and don't have any ties. Save him yourself. I'm not in the mood to take the risk. Zhou Wen said. Shin Yuchi was slightly taken aback, but he didn't say anything else. He led Wang Chiu Yuan into the Moon Palace. After they entered, Zhou Wen took out his phone and snapped a picture of the tiny palm symbol behind the words. Moon Palace! With a click, the phone screen showed the download interface. I wonder if Chang'e is really in the Moon Palace. It should be very interesting when the Chang'e companion beast drops, right? Zhou Wen saw that his phone was constantly on the downloading screen. It didn't seem like it could be downloaded in a short period of time. Should I enter? Zhou Wen looked at the door of Moon Palace. 
The cold air inside was like fog, preventing him from seeing anything. Truth Listener's ability couldn't penetrate it either. If I were you, I wouldn't choose to enter, Ice Maiden suddenly said. Why? Jowen looked at Ice Maiden. Ice Maiden said, The existence that possessed your classmate is too powerful. The Golden Toad's strength isn't weaker than the present me, but he can heavily injure it with a mere strike. With such strength, even Grim Demon might not be able to emerge victorious if he were to fight. It's best you consider it carefully. After a pause, Ice Maiden continued, Furthermore, this matter is somewhat odd. According to what I know, it's impossible for humans to advance to the mythical stage with their own strength, much less reach the terror grade. That creature said that he's human, but his strength is very terrifying at the terror grade. Unless he's not human, there must be some secret behind this matter. Joan didn't say a word as he looked at the Moon Palace door in silence. He didn't care if the person who had possessed Wegu was human, but there was something that Joe Wen was very concerned about. For Shinyuchi to risk his life for Wegu, something didn't seem right no matter how he thought about it. Do you think it's possible that Shinyuchi knew of the existence of the bone pottery jar from the beginning? Joe Wen said after some thought. What do you mean? If he knew, why did he take the risk to come here? Ice Maiden frowned. That's right. It doesn't make sense, but there's something else that doesn't make sense. Although I haven't interacted much with Wei Gu, I do know him a little. He's definitely not someone who would sacrifice himself for a place like the Bureau, yet he actually took the initiative to take the risk. This doesn't seem like his character. Is it possible that he was forced to do so? After all, even if lots were really drawn, Shinyuchi might have tampered with him. The person who eventually had to go was still likely to be him. He might as well have taken the initiative. If he succeeded, he could still obtain Shinyuchi's recognition in the future. Ice Maiden said, No way Gu knows that Shinyuchi is afraid of me. If he really needs to risk his life, he will probably seek help from me. It's impossible for him to stop me from interfering with his actions. Joe would pause for a moment before continuing. Is it possible that Wei Gu also recognizes the bone pottery and knows what's inside, so he took the initiative to take the risk? It seems illogical, Ice Maiden said with a frown. But adding the two unreasonable things together seems to make sense. Otherwise, I really can't figure out why Wei Gu and Shinyuchi would do something so illogical, Zhou Wen said. It's not difficult to find out the answer. Just go in and take a look, Ice Maiden said as she looked at the door of Moon Palace. Then let's go in and take a look. Zhou Wen glanced at his phone and realized that it was still downloading. He got Ice Maiden to lead the way as the two of them entered through the Moon Palace door. He didn't have a feel of it outside the door, but the moment he entered, Joe Wen felt a terrifying coldness pass through the space suit that could withstand low temperatures. It made him shiver. When Ice Maiden walked over, Joe Wen immediately felt the coldness dissipate significantly as his body warmed up. How did Shinyuchi and the rest survive such a low temperature? Joe Wen felt increasingly puzzled. Even his body couldn't withstand it. He didn't believe that Shinyuchi and Wang Chiu Yuan could withstand such low temperatures. Thankfully, with Ice Maiden as an ice elemental expert beside him, the coldness naturally receded wherever she went. Zhou Wen could vaguely see that there were many jade buildings in the cold fog, like a fairyland in myths. Chapter 1061 Toad Palace Boom! Deep in Moon Palace, a terrifying explosion sounded. Zhou Wen saw a faint red flame flash in the distant fog. It was as though a building had caught fire. Mixed into the fog were flames and smoke, and the red glow in the white fog looked unnatural. Is Waco fighting? Zhou Wen felt as though the whole of Moon Palace was trembling. The cold fog didn't feel as cold as before. Ice Maiden scouted ahead as Zhou Wen followed behind her, heading deeper into Moon Palace. In such a land of extreme coldness, it was Ice Maiden's home ground. She controlled the frost aura, preventing it from injuring Zhou Wen at all. As they walked, snowflakes floated out of the fog. Under the red glow of the flames, they looked like burning ashes. Zhou Wen held one and took a careful look, but he was surprised to discover that it wasn't ash or a snowflake. It was the petal of an osmanthus. Could these petals be the one Shinyuchi wanted me to see? Zhou Wen summoned an ordinary musical note sprite and placed the petal on it. In the next second, he saw the petal transform into a strange light that fused into the musical note sprite. The musical note sprite immediately began to evolve. It's true. Zhou Wen was overjoyed as he hurriedly reached out to gather the petals that floated over. These petals had magical effects on companion beasts, but Zhou Wen didn't feel anything when he touched them. Clearly, they were ineffective on humans. He gave a few petals to different companion beasts and realized that those at the legendary stage could immediately evolve. However, those at the epic stage only gained a slight boost in stats without any immediate evolution. Just as Shinyuchi had said, the petals of the Osmanthus could only be used once. If they came into contact with the petals again, they wouldn't be able to absorb much. 
Even so, it was already very impressive. Zhou Wen wanted to collect more. I wonder where these petals came from. I hope there are more. If I can get hundreds or even thousands of them, they will be of great use in the future. As Zhou Wen walked forward, he carefully gathered the petals. Perhaps it was because Wei Gu had already cleared all the dimensional creatures in Moon Palace that Zhou Wen and Ice Maiden didn't see any dimensional creatures wherever they went. There were jade towers one after another, but there was nothing inside. It was cold and empty. If it wasn't for the crazy battle in the distance, Zhou Wen would have imagined that this was an empty palace complex. He approached the flaming glow in front of him, and the cold fog dissipated. His vision also became much better. One petal after another. There are already more than forty. Zhou Wen was delighted. In the future, when he obtained mythical companion beasts that needed to be fed, one petal could advance them to the epic stage. There would be no need to go to much trouble. Suddenly, the flames erupted. They illuminated almost all of Moon Palace. At that instant, Zhou Wen saw many things clearly. The most eye-catching was the huge osmanthus tree. It was thousands of feet tall and stood at the brightest spot in the distance. Amidst the flames of war and the cold fog, the osmanthus tree was swaying. Large petals fluttered in the cold fog and flames, like snowflakes or ashes. There were thousands of them, virtually uncountable. Zhou Wen was stunned. He almost couldn't believe his eyes. With so many osmanthus petals, even if he could only collect half of them, there would probably be tens of thousands, not to mention if he collected them all. With so many petals, can I advance all the musical note sprites to the epic stage? I now have nearly a hundred thousand musical note sprites. If I advance all of them to the epic stage, the epic musical note sprite legion, together with the unified command of the golden harp, will produce combat strength that's probably stronger than ordinary mythical creatures. Zhou Wen wished he could immediately rush over and take the petals for himself. However, reason told him that there was no such thing as a free lunch in this world, nor were there any flower petals that he could pick up for free. He might not be able to return alive if he rushed over now. Ensuing under the huge osmanthus tree was the most intense battle. There was no sign of anyone. Terrifying cold air and flame shot out from there. With Zhou Wen's eyesight, he couldn't see the battle. All he could see were dazzling lights. Without a doubt, it was a true terror-grade battle. Where did Shen Yuqi and Wang Chiu Yuan go? Zhou Wen had been searching for their traces, but he couldn't find any traces of them despite looking for so long. They definitely didn't go to save Wei Gu, but I didn't encounter them along the way. They shouldn't have turned back. Could it be that they really went to the huge osmanthus tree? However, considering the aftershocks from such a battle, I reckon ordinary mythical creatures wouldn't be able to withstand it. Would they really dare go there? Zhou Wen looked around and used the occasional erupting flames to size up his surroundings. After watching for a while, Zhou Wen suddenly realized that Shen Yuqi and company's target was likely not the Osmanthus tree. This is Toad Palace. Although the Osmanthus tree is magical, the most precious treasure of Toad Palace isn't the Osmanthus tree. Zhou Wen observed the deeper parts of Frost Palace from afar. The buildings there were different from the jade buildings here. They were made of Osmanthus wood, forming pavilions and palaces. Zhou Wen suddenly recalled something. Although Moon Palace and Chang'e were very famous, Moon Palace's owner wasn't Chang'e in truth. Moon Palace was only where Chang'e lived, not the Moon Goddess Temple. Moon Palace's true owner was actually the Lady Supreme Yin, or rather, the Moon Goddess. Supreme Yin and Supreme Yang had a lofty status in the East District's mythology. Lady Supreme Yin's status was nothing Chang'e, who had ascended simply from consuming an elixir, could compare with. Could it be that Shinyuchi and company's target is there? The more Zhou Wen thought about it, the more he felt that it was possible. The area where the Osmanthus tree stood was only a small area of Toad Palace. Shinyuchi and company could completely circle around that area and enter the depths of Toad Palace. Let's take a look over there. Zhou Wen temporarily gave up on the idea of picking up the petals and got Ice Maiden to lead him around the battle and head deeper into the wooden buildings. Compared to the gorgeous jade buildings, the wooden buildings looked ordinary, but as long as one realized that the wood came from the Osmanthus divine tree, they would immediately feel that the wooden buildings weren't that ordinary. Shinyuchi and company are indeed here. From afar, Zhou Wen saw Shinyuchi and Wang Chiu Yuan kneeling in front of a wooden hut. He didn't know what they were doing. Chapter 1062 Moon Goddess Temple Due to the distance, Zhou Wen couldn't see the situation clearly. With a thought, he put on the invisibility cloak and approached Shinyuchi and company. Ice Maiden silently followed behind Zhou Wen. With her skills, even if she didn't turn into her terror form, Shinyuchi and Wang Chiu Yuan wouldn't be able to discover her. When Zhou Wen got closer, he saw that the wooden hut they were kneeling in front of looked more like a temple. However, the temple didn't have a plaque or a sign. Even the temple walls were made of osmanthus wood, but despite having been made into a wooden hut, there were still buds growing on it with beautiful osmanthus flowers blooming. 
Upon arriving in this area, there was no longer the Moon Palace's coldness. Instead, it made one feel refreshed and comfortable. It was indescribably pleasant. The door to the wooden hut was closed. There were no dimensional creatures around Shen Yuchi and Wang Chiu Yuan, but they were kneeling in front of the wooden hut's door, their heads on the ground, motionless. Could it be that there's an invisible force suppressing them, forcing them to kneel? Zhou Wen looked left and right, but he couldn't see any energy fluctuations. He looked at Ice Maiden beside him. Ice Maiden clearly knew what was on Zhou Wen's mind. She said in a voice that only Zhou Wen could hear. They aren't suppressed by any power. That's strange. There aren't any dimensional creatures or powers suppressing them. Why are they kneeling here? Or should I say, what's the point of kneeling here? If this is really the moon goddess's temple, could it be that they are kneeling here to ask for benefits from her? But how do they know that the moon goddess will give them something good by kneeling? As the story of Chanya's ascension to the moon was so famous, people didn't know much about the true moon goddess. Joan had only heard of the legend of Lady Supreme Ean, but he wasn't too sure what kind of goddess she was. Since Shinyuchi and company were kneeling here, they definitely knew something. Joan was somewhat puzzled. How did they know? The conclusion obtained solely from the analysis of myths wasn't necessarily correct. People like Shinyuchi definitely wouldn't risk their lives for such a guess. Director General, is this really useful? Wang Chiu Yuan knelt there, not daring to move, but he couldn't help but speak. It's useful. Just kneel down and don't move. Stop talking. Shinyuchi answered. They then fell into silence again. They knelt there without moving or saying a word. This left Zhou when somewhat depressed. He originally imagined that he might hear some secrets, but to his surprise, they stopped talking. If you want to know something, why don't you ask them now? Ice Maiden said. Ask them. That's right. Why didn't I think of it? You're smart. Zhou Wen suddenly understood what Ice Maiden meant. Shin Yuchi and the rest were kneeling in front of the wooden hut. They definitely had their orders and wouldn't dare to stand up. If he were to ask them, they probably wouldn't dare remain silent. Zhou Wen put away the invisibility cloak and walked towards Shin Yuchi and Wang Chiu Yun, who were kneeling in front of the door. Shin Yuchi and Wang Chiu Yuan were alarmed when they heard the footsteps. Even if they didn't dare look up, they quickly recognized that it was Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen, you came at the right time. We are trapped here and can't move. Quickly save us. Wang Chiu Yuan pleaded. If Zhou Wen hadn't heard their conversation, he would have been frightened and wouldn't have dared to go over. All right, I'll save you now. Zhou Wen curled his lips and walked to Wang Chiu Yuan's side, reaching out to pull him. Don't. Don't touch me. Wang Chiu Yuan's body trembled as he hurriedly shouted. Director General Shen, what's going on? At the very least, you should make up a story to deal with me, right? Zhou Wen squatted down and pressed his fingers on Shen Yuchi's arm as he said calmly. Shen Yuchi lay there, not daring to move. Wang Chiu Yuan said, We originally wanted to save Little Wei, but we couldn't see the path clearly in the cold fog. We accidentally came across this place and were cursed. If we move, we will explode. This fabrication sucks. Director General Shen, why don't you make one up yourself? Zhou Wen said indifferently. Shin Yuchi finally said, Before we came to the moon, we perused a large amount of information and gained a lot of understanding of the moon according to myths and legends. However, the information was only inferred from myths and legends. We didn't know if it was real or fake, so we didn't announce it. That's an interesting fabrication. Continue. Zhou Wen pressed his fingers on Shin Yuchi's arm as though he would push them at any moment. Moon Palace is actually equivalent to a cold palace, a place where royalty are put under house arrest. Therefore, Chang'e isn't the moon's master. She's just a prisoner. In myths and legends, the moon's true master is Lady Supreme Yin, Lady of the Moon, who is also the moon goddess. The place we are now is the true residence of the moon goddess, which is the moon goddess temple. Shin Yuchi paused for a moment before continuing. We believe that the nature of the moon goddess temple is similar to earth temples. There might be benefits if we worship here. This story is quite sound, but don't tell me that you didn't know of the existence of the bone pottery jar and the dead man before coming to the moon, Zhou Wen said coldly. In fact, the bone pottery jar and the dead man were discovered long ago. When I was on Earth, I had already done a lot of research and consulted many experts. That's why I knew that the bone pottery jar is actually a kind of sacrificial artifact, Shin Yuchi said. You knew that the person who picked up the bone pottery jar would be possessed, right? Zhou Wen stared at Shin Yuchi and said, I wasn't sure about that. I only knew that the bone pottery jar was used to offer sacrifices to deities. In ancient times, shamans used the bone pottery jar to communicate or invite deities to possess them. However, they usually used water or alcohol. I've never heard of such a flaming bone pottery jar. I don't know what uses it has. Shinyuchi was clearly unwilling to admit 
that he had long known the consequences of touching the bone pottery jar. Zhou Wen didn't expose him as he continued asking. Did you originally want me to touch the bone pottery jar? Why would I have such thoughts? I definitely didn't have such intentions, Shen Yuqi said. Did Wei Gu know about the bone pottery jar? Zhou Wen didn't say anything else as he asked Shen Yuqi another question. The matter regarding the bone pottery jar is a top secret in our bureau. Little Wei's clearance isn't high enough to come into contact with those secrets. Wang Chiyuan added. Zhou Wen had roughly guessed it as well. He and Wei Gu were actually sacrificial goods brought by Shen Yuqi. Shen Yuqi had originally wanted to lure Zhou Wen to touch the bone pottery jar. Shen Yuqi originally felt that a youth like Zhou Wen, who was proud and had powerful strength, would probably want to study the unknown when encountering one. However, to his surprise, Zhou Wen was like an old man who was afraid of death. Despite possessing such strength, he was still extremely cautious. Furthermore, he didn't seem curious at all. He didn't touch the bone pottery jar. This had left Shin Yuchi feeling very disappointed. Chapter 1063 Lady Supreme In. How could Shin Yuchi know that Zhou Wen had suffered death too many times in game? Therefore, he was especially careful in reality. He definitely wouldn't touch anything unknown. However, Zhou Wen wasn't sure if what Shin Yuchi had said was true. Just as he was about to ask something else, he suddenly heard a creak as the door to the moon goddess temple opened. Shen Yuchi and Wang Chiu Yuan were immediately overjoyed. However, they didn't dare look up and continued kneeling on the ground. Zhou Wen and Ice Maiden looked up without any qualms. Inside the moon goddess temple, there was a wooden statue. It was a dignified and beautiful woman. When Ice Maiden saw the wooden statue, her expression immediately turned solemn. She was even somewhat alarmed as she involuntarily retreated. However, with every step she took, Frost footprints appeared on the ground. After taking a few steps back, she was frozen as though she had turned into a jade statue. Although there wasn't any frost on her body, she gave off a feeling that she was frozen. It was extremely strange. Zhou Wen was alarmed. Ice Maiden was an ice elemental terror creature. The creature in the temple had to be unimaginably powerful to freeze her. Shen Yuqi and Wang Chiu Yuan were overjoyed. They had been waiting for this moment. Now that the moon goddess had appeared, the disrespectful Zhou Wen and Ice Maiden would naturally be punished. Zhou Wen stood there motionless. Even an existence like Ice Maiden had been frozen. If he moved, he might freeze even faster than her. Instead, he stood still and temporarily didn't feel anything strange. However, when he looked at the wooden sculpture, Zhou Wen lamented inwardly. He couldn't retreat or advance. Ice Maiden was right. It's best not to enter such a place, Zhou Wen thought. However, Ice Maiden was too careless. Ever since she had come to this world, the strongest she had seen was at the Terror Grade. Furthermore, Zhou Wen had the Terror Grade Demonic Neonate, Grim Demon, and the Seven Seas Dragon King by his side. Therefore, although she found this place somewhat strange, she didn't take it to heart. She felt that even if something went wrong, they should be able to resolve it. That's why she still entered with Zhou Wen. Since fate has brought you here, choose one among yourselves. I will help you walk the world and do good deeds to prevent calamity. The moon goddess statue's lips didn't move, but an ethereal voice sounded. Zhou Wen found the line familiar. Although delivery was different, he seemed to have experienced a similar scene. Don't tell me it's the one in three choice of mythical companion beasts. As Zhou Wen thought to himself, he saw a pearl and a jade slip fly out from the moon goddess statue and land on the wooden table in front of the statue. Why are there only two? Aren't there usually three choices? Zhou Wen's heart stirred as he immediately thought of something. So that's how it is. Someone has been here long ago and obtained a mythical companion beast from here. Shin Yuchi must have known about this long ago, so he personally came to try his luck. However, this moon goddess doesn't seem to be very picky. She actually gives companion beasts to anyone. Now, there are three of us, but there are only two companion beasts. The two of them have been kneeling here the entire time. They are very respectful of the moon goddess. It's very likely that the moon goddess will let them choose first. After they choose, what has it got to do with me? Zhou Wen's mind raced, but he couldn't think of a good solution. Zhou Wen would be thankful if the moon goddess didn't find fault with him or freeze him. He didn't dare dream of choosing a companion egg. Furthermore, Zhou Wen had many mythical companion beasts now. There was no need to take the risk. Shin Yuchi and Wang Chiu Yuan clearly thought the same. The two of them were overjoyed. Wang Chiu Yuan looked at Shin Yuchi and saw him nod slightly. Only then did he bow to the moon goddess statue. Thank you, your excellency for your reward. I want that pearl. After he bowed, there was no reaction from the temple. The moon goddess didn't speak again. The pearl became even brighter, but it didn't fly out. Zhou Wen found it odd. He had previously chosen companion eggs. After a choice was made, the companion beasts would typically fly over themselves. Wang Chiu Yuan didn't know what to do. 
he didn't dare enter the moon goddess temple, so he could only look at Shinyuchi. Don't go in yet. Let me give it a try. Shinyuchi was also somewhat puzzled. It was indeed as Shouwen had imagined. He knew that someone had come here and knew the details, so he had personally come to try his luck. However, the development was different from what he knew. When the person who had taken away the first companion beast made the choice, the companion beast had flown over by itself, but for some reason, there was no movement. Your Excellency, I choose the Jade Slip. Thank you for your reward, Shinyuchi said as he knelt. Just as Shinyuchi said that, the bamboo slip lit up. However, it only lit up, without any intention of moving. Director General, I think we need to go in and retrieve them ourselves. Why don't I go in and take a look first? Wang Chiyuan said as he looked at the luminous pearl and jade slip. Shinyuchi nodded slightly. Wang Chiyuan bowed again and said, Your Excellency, I'll be entering to retrieve the pearl. Then, he got up and walked towards the moon goddess temple. Wang Chiyuan was extremely excited. Although there were many more mythical companion beasts available these days, they were still rare. Only a few experts had a chance of obtaining one. With his status, he had no chance of obtaining a mythical companion beast. Now, this was definitely a chance for him to achieve success in a single step. If the other inspectors who had come with him hadn't died, this opportunity might not have landed on him. Wang Chiyuan walked to the door of the moon goddess temple. Just as he was about to step in, Frost suddenly appeared beneath his feet. Then, his entire body was frozen in front of the door. Just like Ice Maiden, there was no frost on his body. His body seemed to have turned into cold jade. What's going on? Isn't she giving a companion beast? Why doesn't she let them take it? Is this the moon goddess's scam? Shouwen was alarmed. This was the first time he had seen such a scamming dimensional creature. In the past, most of the dimensional creatures had laid obvious traps. They clearly informed people of the danger and dared them to come over. However, moon goddess didn't do so. She first told them of the benefits, only to kill them when they went over. Shouwen felt that she shouldn't be called moon goddess, but a scamming goddess. That's right. She's Lady Supreme Ean to begin with. There's a second interpretation to the name. Shouwen thought about it and realized that the divine title made sense. Shinyuchi also wore a puzzled look. This was completely different from the information he had obtained, but his information couldn't be wrong. Therefore, he didn't know what had gone wrong. Did that person lie to me? Shinyuchi's expression changed. Why didn't you choose? At that moment, a voice sounded from the moon goddess temple. Although she didn't say who she was talking to, there were only three people. Shinyuchi and Wang Chiyuan had chosen, while Zhou hadn't made a choice. She was definitely talking about Zhou Wen. Can I still choose? Zhou Wen asked in surprise. This was because these items were supposed to be unique. They would be gone after being chosen. Chapter 1064 You Can Have It All If you don't want to choose, you can request both. The voice that came from the moon goddess temple left Zhou Wen's mouth agape in surprise. He failed to immediately recover from his shock. He didn't know that he could make such a choice. In the past, when he had chosen Truth Listener and Banana Fairy, he could only choose once. There would be no reaction if he tried again. But this entity was different. She actually said that he could choose them both. Conspiracy. It must be a conspiracy. This Lady Supreme wants to scam me after scamming them? Zhou Wen didn't believe that such a good thing would happen and felt that there was definitely a trap. Shinyuchi also thought so, so he kept looking at Zhou Wen. If Zhou Wen were to choose to take both, he might end up worse than Wang Chiyuan. Your Excellency, I'm not doubting you. It's just that I've heard from others that a person can only choose a companion beast once, right? Zhou Wen said. That's right. A person can only choose once. The moon goddess's voice floated out again. Zhou Wen never expected the moon goddess to admit it so quickly. After some thought, he carefully asked again. One person can only choose one companion beast? Yes. The moon goddess answered with certainty. Then why are you allowing me to take both? Shouwen felt that the moon goddess's trap was a little too obvious. No matter how stupid he was, he wouldn't fall for it that easily, right? Although Shinyuchi knew that Wen was very careful, he couldn't help but feel somewhat disappointed when he saw that Wen wasn't tempted. Choosing and requesting are two separate matters. The moon goddess's voice sounded, leaving Wen and Shinyuchi stunned as their emotions underwent a subtle change. You mean? Wen looked at the pearl and jade slip in disbelief. Now that these two companion beasts have been chosen, there are naturally no rules. Anyone can take them away and hatch them. The moon goddess's words left Shinyuchi somewhat dumbfounded. It must be a conspiracy. There must be a conspiracy. Shinyuchi reacted and stared at the pearl and jade slip in the temple, as he thought repeatedly. That works too. However, your excellency, your divine might is too powerful. A mortal like me can't enter your temple. 
No matter how greedy Zhou Wen was, he didn't dare enter to take them. However, just as Zhou Wen said that, the pearl and jade slip flew out and quickly landed in his hand. Zhou Wen held the pearl and jade slip in disbelief. Could it be that my luck has really turned for the better? I actually encountered such a good thing. Or could it be that I'm handsome and confident, and Lady Supreme Ying thinks that I'm a promising talent? Zhou Wen looked at the pearl and jade slip in his hand, and was momentarily at a loss. Meanwhile, Shen Yuchi gritted his teeth so hard that they almost shattered. He had been tricked. Furthermore, he had been tricked by a deity. However, he still couldn't figure out why the moon goddess would entrap him, and Wang Chiu Yuan, and give Zhou when the companion beasts that originally belonged to him, and Wang Chiu Yuan. This didn't make sense. It didn't make any sense at all. According to the information he had obtained, the moon goddess was a goddess who saved the world from calamity. It didn't matter if one came from a noble family or a lowly family. Therefore, she didn't have any requirements for their physiques. As long as one sincerely knelt and prayed, they would be rewarded by her. But from the looks of it, that wasn't the case at all. Zhou Wen didn't even kneel. He even caused trouble in front of the moon goddess temple. That was a great disrespect to the moon goddess. Now, not only did the moon goddess not punish him, but she had also scammed them and given their companion beasts to Zhou Wen. This infuriated Shin Yuchi to the point of nearly exploding. He couldn't understand why this was happening. Thankfully, Shin Yuchi had experienced too many storms in his life. He had long reached the point where he didn't show his emotions on his face. Even though he didn't show it at all, he was so angry that he almost went crazy. Lady Moon Goddess, you are truly wise, mighty, beautiful, and magnanimous. After Zhou Wen confirmed that the companion beasts in his hand weren't fake, he thought about the praises his limited vocabulary could afford and used them all to praise the Moon Goddess. He now felt that the Moon Goddess was the best deity in the world. A deity with such foresight should be the only true god in the world. Those gods such as God, Jade Emperor Buddha, and the like were nothing compared to the mighty Moon Goddess. They should have long been eliminated. That's not what you were thinking. Didn't you say that I should be called Scam Goddess? The words that came from the Moon Goddess Temple instantly made Zhou Wen break out into a cold sweat. Nothing of that sort. You are the gentle, beautiful, and kind goddess of the moon. If anyone dares to be disrespectful to you, I'll not let him off. Zhou Wen hurriedly said, not daring to think too much. Moon Goddess seemed to have the ability to read minds. Beside him, Shin Yuchi's face turned pale. If the Moon Goddess really had the ability to read minds, what he was thinking would probably lead him to an outcome worse than Wang Chiu Yuan. Just as he thought of this, his body quickly froze, turning into a jade statue like Wang Chiu Yuan. Since you have already obtained the companion beasts, would you mind doing me a small favor? The Moon Goddess didn't harp on the matter. You also know that I'm weak. What can I do for you? Zhou Wen's heart skipped a beat as he thought to himself, as expected, there's no free lunch in this world. I wonder what this moon goddess wants. It's not a big deal. Go to Moon Palace and help Chang'e defeat the logger. The moon goddess said. Your excellency, your divine powers are boundless. Isn't it just a matter of moving your fingers to deal with the logger? With my lowly strength, I won't be of much help even if I go. Instead, I might become a burden. Zhou Wen wasn't crazy. How could he be a match for the logger? However, the moon goddess's words confirmed that the one possessing Wei Gu was the logger. If I could leave this temple, would I need to seek your help? The moon goddess said. Her abilities are very compatible with the moon palace. If you take her to help in the battle, you might be able to defeat the logger. Moon goddess was naturally referring to the frozen ice maiden. You also said that it's a might. Zhou Wen still didn't want to go. Ignoring how terrifying the logger was, the body he possessed belonged to Wei Gu. They were former school classmates after all. Neither Wei Gu nor the logger had made attempts on his life. It wouldn't be right for him to kill them, much less destroy Wei Ji's body. Of course, you can also choose not to help. However, if the logger succeeds, the moon will be destroyed. Do you think Earth will be unaffected? The moon goddess said calmly. Zhou Wen naturally knew that the moon had a huge influence on Earth. If the moon was really destroyed, Earth would definitely be greatly affected. It was even possible for an apocalyptic calamity to happen. Didn't the logger say that he only wants to retrieve his companion beast? It shouldn't be that exaggerated to the point of destroying the moon, right? Zhou Wen was skeptical. Do you know what companion beast he wants to take away? The moon goddess asked calmly. Chapter 1065 Elixir of Immortality I don't know, Zhou Wen said, but he thought to himself, it's not like we're friends. Who knows what his companion beast is? Have you heard of the story of Chang'e's ascension to the moon? The moon goddess asked again. I've heard of this before. Legend has it that Chang'e secretly ate the elixir of immortality that belonged to her husband, Ho Yi, who obtained it from the Queen Mother of the West. Then, she ascended to the moon and became an immortal fairy. Zhou Wen had naturally heard of this story. 
as it was so famous, it was difficult for him not to know it. Moon Goddess continued. Then do you know why Chani ascended to the moon after secretly eating the elixir of immortality and not anywhere else? How would I know? Wait. Elixir of immortality. Tree of immortality. Could it be? Zhou Wen suddenly thought of a possibility. You aren't that stupid. That's right. The elixir of immortality is made from the materials from the tree of immortality. Chani secretly ate the elixir of immortality and was pulled to the moon by the tree of immortality. Moon Goddess paused for a moment before continuing. As for the tree of immortality, it's the foundation of the moon. The companion beast is also inside. If the logger fells the tree of immortality, the moon will crumble as well. When that happens, not only will my temple be affected, but even earth will be affected. You can decide if you want to go or not. I do want to help, but I'm afraid that if I'm not strong enough, I won't be able to provide any help. Instead, I'll only be a burden. Zhou and watched as the splendid showcase of ice and fire powers unfolded before him. He couldn't even see a figure. It would be no different from courting death if he went. That dimensional terror creature has the same attributes as the moon palace. Since you can control her, just let her help Chang'e. With her help, Chang'e should be able to last a little longer. Moon goddess said. Just a little longer? Zhou Wen was somewhat puzzled. If that was the case, it didn't seem to be of much use. The logger is an existence that can chop down the tree of immortality. It's not something an ordinary terror grade creature can compare with. Getting her to help Chang'e only serves as a delay. Use this time to retrieve something. With that item, you can defeat the logger and stop him from cutting down the tree of immortality and save the moon from danger. Moon Goddess explained. What is it? It can actually defeat the logger? Zhou Wen's heart stirred. If there was really such a treasure, it was worth a try. The Elixir of Immortality. Moon Goddess's answer alarmed Zhou Wen. Didn't Chang'e secretly eat the Elixir of Immortality? Does it still exist? What effects does it have? How do I use it after I get it back? Zhou Wen asked several questions in a row. Although Chang'e's actions were culpable, the Elixir of Immortality was just too magical. A mortal could actually ascend in broad daylight after consuming it. Although it was only a legend, no matter how weak the effects were, he should be able to advance to the mythical stage after eating it, right? The medicinal effects of the Elixir of Immortality can allow a person to possess powerful and immense strength for a short period of time. If you take the Elixir of Immortality to Chang'e, she will naturally have the ability to defeat the logger. Of course, you can also eat it yourself and fight the logger yourself. That's up to you, Moon Goddess said. Is it just a temporary increase in combat strength? Zhou Wen was somewhat disappointed when he heard that. Not entirely. Although the medicinal essence can't be maintained forever, the burst of improvement will also allow your body to obtain permanent benefits. With your body, this little benefit is enough to help you break through to the mythical stage that is unreachable by humans. Moon Goddess said. Zhou Wen was overjoyed, but on second thought, if he could easily obtain something as good as the elixir of immortality, why didn't she get Shinyuchi and company to go? Why did she choose him? The elixir of immortality is precious. There must be a terrifying creature protecting it, right? Zhou Wen asked carefully, afraid that he would infuriate the moon goddess. Of course there's protection, but you don't have to worry about that. If you take my token over, it will naturally view you in a different light and won't make things too difficult for you. Moon goddess paused before saying, Now that the moon is in danger, this is your last chance. If I wasn't confident, I wouldn't be sending you. Zhou Wen felt that it made sense. Once the moon was destroyed, this moon goddess probably couldn't even protect her temple. She definitely wouldn't do anything rash. All right, I'll make a trip. Where can I get the elixir of immortality? Zhou Wen thought for a moment and felt that this matter was beneficial to him. If he could obtain the elixir of immortality, he could use it to advance to the mythical stage without wasting any time advancing glimmer. This was because even if the glimmer life soul advanced to a perfect body, it was unknown if it could push him to the mythical stage. After all, everything was just his speculation. The elixir of immortality was much more reliable. With Chang'e being a precedent, he could obtain some benefits no matter what. If there was really danger, he could use the Glimmer Life Soul to directly teleport back to Earth. There wouldn't be too much of a risk. He could also test if that made Glimmer advance to a perfect body. Walk west from here. After passing through the Osmanthus Forest, you will see a medicine mortar. The Elixir of Immortality is inside, said Moon Goddess. After telling Joe, when the detailed steps, Moon Goddess dispelled the ice from Ice Maiden's body and allowed her to regain her freedom. When Ice Maiden came to life, she looked into the Moon Goddess Temple in horror. Clearly, she was somewhat afraid. Ice Maiden, help Chani fight the logger. Try your best to stall for time. I'll come back to help you after retrieving the Elixir of Immortality. Zhou Wen explained the general situation to her, 
and got her to help Chang'e while he headed west to retrieve the elixir of immortality, as instructed by Moon Goddess. The Osmanthus forest was beautiful, but the Moon Goddess told him that these Osmanthus trees were not trees of immortality. There were a total of two trees of immortality on the moon, one growing on the surface of the moon, the one at the entrance to Toad Palace. However, that tree of immortality had already been felled, leaving only a stump. There was also the huge Osmanthus tree in Toad Palace. It was the foundation of Toad Palace. Once it was destroyed, the moon would collapse. It couldn't be lost. Joe Wen reached out to pluck some petals and tested them with his companion beasts. Indeed, these petals didn't have the effect of evolving companion beasts. Just as the moon goddess had said, there were no other dimensional creatures in Toad Palace. He didn't encounter any danger along the way and passed through the Osmanthus forest smoothly. When Zhou Wen rode the Great Might Vidra Bull through the Osmanthus forest, his download was finally completed. A moon icon appeared on the phone's home screen. However, the name of the dungeon was a Moon Palace, but the name Toad Palace. Moon Palace sounds better. Toad Palace keeps reminding me of that toad. A place like the moon should have some beautiful legends. When I return with the Elixir of Immortality, I'll go and see how beautiful Chani is. Zhou Wen was very curious about the beauty of this fairy, who was known for her beauty. Chapter 1066 Jade Rabbit Before leaving, Zhou Wen had asked Moon Goddess what the medicine mortar looked like, but she told him that he would identify it at a glance after leaving the Osmanthus forest. It would be easy to recognize it. Now, Zhou Wen knew why he could recognize it at a glance. The white object was clearly a huge ring-shaped mountain. Moon Goddess had actually called it a medicine mortar. Zhou Wen knew that he wasn't mistaken, because the surrounding ring-shaped mountains were all gray. Only this one was white, and looked especially striking. According to what Zhou Wen knew, many of the ring-shaped mountains on the moon were formed from meteorites, but this white ring-shaped mountain looked somewhat special. As the mountain wall of the ring-shaped mountain wasn't very tall, only about two to three hundred meters, the great Mai Vidra Bull leaped up and arrived at the edge of the ring-shaped mountain, allowing him to look inside. The mountain wall inside the ring-shaped mountain was much higher. It was probably about a thousand meters tall. The interior space was much bigger than what he saw from the outside. If this thing is a medicine mortar, how big would the pestle have to be to match it? How big would the pill made from it be? Can humans eat it? As Zhou Wen thought, he sized up the interior of the ring-shaped mountain. Zhou Wen didn't find any pills or anything like that. He didn't even see a pill-shaped stone. The interior of the ring-shaped mountain was clean as though it had been washed with water. In a corner of the mountain, there was a huge white rabbit lying on the ground. The rabbit was surprisingly huge. If it stood up, it would probably be about the same height as Zhou Wen. Its white fur was like snow and extremely fluffy. If it were placed in a plush toy shop, one would think that it was a large furry doll. Is this the legendary jade rabbit that grinds the medicine? Zhou Wen had already learned from Moon Goddess that the one guarding the elixir of immortality was Jade Rabbit. Seeing the Jade Rabbit sleeping, Zhou Wen felt that it was best not to alarm it. It was best if he could take the elixir of immortality while it slept. Although Moon Goddess said that Jade Rabbit wouldn't make things difficult for him if he had her token, Zhou Wen still felt that it was better to avoid trouble. He put on the invisibility cloak and entered the ring-shaped mountain. Furthermore, he used Truth Listener to constantly scan the vicinity of the Jade Rabbit, hoping to find the legendary elixir of immortality. Strange, why isn't there any? Could it be that the elixir of immortality has been eaten by the Jade Rabbit? Zhou Wen felt that the possibility was very high. After all, how could Jade Rabbit not eat such a good item after guarding it all day, every day? Just as Zhou Wen was hesitating about waking up the Jade Rabbit, it suddenly pricked up its ears. Its ears twitched a few times before it looked up at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen hurriedly removed the invisibility cloak and revealed himself. At the same time, he took out the pearl and jade slip he had previously obtained. He waved them in front of the Jade Rabbit and said, I'm here on Moon Goddess's orders. She wants to borrow your elixir of immortality. Before Zhou Wen could finish his sentence, he felt that something was amiss. The originally docile Jade Rabbit's eyes immediately turned red when it saw the pearl and jade slip in Zhou Wen's hand. Its fur stood on end like an enraged bull. Holy sh asterisk t, is this what Moon Goddess means by it won't make things difficult for me on her account? Zhou Wen felt that he had definitely been scammed by Moon Goddess. Just as Zhou Wen was in thought, the Jade Rabbit stood up on its hind legs and grabbed a jade pole from somewhere. In the next second, Jade Rabbit leaped up and flew into the air like a rocket. Zhou Wen was still puzzled as to why the fellow was jumping so high. However, he was immediately alarmed to discover that the Jade Rabbit's body was constantly expanding in midair as it turned gigantic. Even the Jade Pestle in its arms was extremely huge. Then, Zhou Wen saw the gigantic Jade Pestle strike at the ring-shaped mountain with the might of a mountain. Holy sh asterisk t. Zhou Wen saw how terrifying the might was. 
he was probably no match for it, as he hurriedly summoned Tyrant Behemoth. Tyrant Behemoth gigantified as it raised its claws to meet the Jade Pestle. Boom! Tyrant Behemoth's body trembled violently, as its back bit involuntarily. The rocks beneath its feet shattered. Tyrant Behemoth, who was in its absolute strength state, spat out blood. Boom! Boom! Jade Rabbit struck down one pestle after another, as though it was grinding medicine. In its absolute strength state, Tyrant Behemoth was unable to move. All it could do was passively take a beating. It was only thanks to Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength that it wasn't reduced to meet pace by Jade Rabbit. Any other companion beast wouldn't have survived. What terrifying strength! Could this Jade Rabbit also be at the terror grade as well? Jowen saw Tyrant Behemoth spew out blood under the continuous bombardment. Seeing that it was about to collapse, Jowen immediately knew that Jade Rabbit wasn't an ordinary mythical creature. Without any hesitation, he summoned the Seven Seas Dragon King that had been parasitized by Primordial Spore. Although this wasn't the sea, and the Seven Seas Dragon King couldn't use its greatest strength, a terror grade was still worth something. Once it used its terror form, it would be much stronger than ordinary mythical companion beasts. The moment the Seven Seas Dragon King appeared, it immediately transformed into its terror form under Zhou Wen's orders. Then, it spewed out a large amount of glue like liquid. Jade Rabbit's Jade Pestle struck down and smashed into the glue, immediately sticking to it. The Jade Rabbit tried its best to pull out the Jade Pestle, but the glue spewing out from the Seven Seas Dragon King's dragon head kept increasing. The stickiness also increased, preventing Jade Rabbit from pulling it out no matter how hard it tried. Jade Rabbit hissed angrily as it exerted all its strength. However, after pulling out a portion of the Jade Pestle, the sticky liquid clung to it like countless white threads. The Seven Seas Dragon King continued spewing out glue as the adhesiveness increased. Jowen was overjoyed. He knew that he was lucky. The Seven Seas Dragon King's ability seemed to counter the Jade Rabbit. Unable to pull out the Jade Pestle, Jade Rabbit immediately became anxious. It abandoned the Jade Pestle and struck out its front claws towards the ring-shaped mountain, hoping to tear the Seven Seas Dragon King apart. The Seven Seas Dragon King wasn't to be outdone. It spewed out large amounts of glue to meet Jade Rabbit's claws. When the Jade Rabbit's claws touched the glue, they were immediately stuck together. When its claws reached into the ring-shaped mountain, they ended up stuck, preventing it from pulling them out. The more it struggled, the more glue stuck to its body, making it unable to move. The furious Jade Rabbit's body lit up as it grew bigger and bigger. It became much bigger than Tyrant Behemoth. Soon, Tyrant Behemoth looked like a baby in front of it. Even so, the Jade Rabbit still failed to escape the glue. Jowen was overjoyed. The Jade Rabbit was clearly a pure strength type creature. Its terror transformation was also purely a strength-based transformation, so it was perfectly countered by the Seven Seas Dragon King's ability. Jade Rabbit, lend me your elixir of immortality, and I'll let you go. Jowen said to Jade Rabbit as he stood on the Seven Seas Dragon King's head. Chapter 1067 Battling Jade Rabbit It was unknown if Jade Rabbit could understand him, but it ignored Zhou Wen and continued struggling. However, as its body was covered in glue like liquid, its struggles were futile. A pure strength type creature has such a weakness. Once they are restrained, there's almost no chance of turning the tables. Tyrant Behemoth has the same weakness. Zhou Wen ordered the Seven Seas Dragon King to take the initiative to attack when he realized that Jade Rabbit was refusing to surrender. The Seven Seas Dragon King's tentacles swept towards Jade Rabbit, but unfortunately, Jade Rabbit was just too big after its terror transformation. The Seven Seas Dragon King's tentacles were unable to wrap around Jade Rabbit's body. All it could do was bite at its flesh. The Jade Rabbit's flesh was terrifyingly tough. The tentacles with dragon heads nearly had their teeth chipped when biting at it. They failed to bite through its flesh. All they did was tear off some rabbit fur. What a powerful physique. Zhou Wen was secretly alarmed. The Seven Seas Dragon King was at the terror grade after all. Furthermore, its strength wasn't considered weak among the terror grade creatures. Yet, it was actually unable to break through the Jade Rabbit's defense. The strength of this fellow's physique was unimaginable. If it hadn't been restrained by the Seven Seas Dragon King's ability, it would have been a huge problem. From the looks of it, I have no choice but to let Demonic Neonate take action. Zhou Wen summoned Demonic Neonate. Jade Rabbit, I won't be holding back if you don't hand over the Elixir of Immortality. Zhou Wen shouted at Jade Rabbit again, but it continued struggling and ignored him. Neonate, let it see some blood. Zhou Wen instructed Demonic Neonate with his mind. Demonic Neonate received the order and immediately unsheathed her demonic sword that flew towards Jade Rabbit. The demonic sword was just too small. In front of the gigantic jade rabbit, it couldn't even be considered a needle. However, the demonic sword's offensive strength was clearly much stronger than the Seven Seas Dragon King's. It tore through the jade rabbit's flesh and stabbed right in. 
A drop of blood flowed out along the sword hilt. Jowen was about to shout at Jade Rabbit again, but when his gaze landed on its face, he was stunned. Jade Rabbit's originally red eyes had turned black. Then, its eyelids drooped down as crystalline tears shimmered inside. Wah! Jade Rabbit suddenly cried as large drops of tears streamed down. As it cried, its huge body slowly shrank and returned to its original size. It cried in the glue and soon, it was wet. Jowen was depressed. Why are you crying like a child when you're a terror creature? Jade Rabbit, hand over the elixir of immortality, and I'll immediately release you. Jowen said to Jade Rabbit. It would have been better if he hadn't said it. With him saying that, Jade Rabbit cried even more tragically. Its tears flowed down like a stream. Jowen was just about to say something, when he suddenly realized that something was amiss. The tears had drenched the Jade Rabbit's fur, and the sticky liquid that stuck to its body had automatically fallen off, preventing it from sticking to it. When Jade Rabbit realized that the glue on its body had been removed, it was immediately surprised and delighted. It jumped up and rushed to the edge of the ring-shaped mountain. With another flash, it was gone. Its speed was terrifying. Jowen was immediately depressed. He didn't expect Jade Rabbit's tears to be able to remove the Seven Seas Dragon King's sticky liquid. Jade Rabbit was gone before he could obtain the elixir of immortality. With Jade Rabbit's speed, even a mythical companion beast that was proficient in speed wouldn't be able to catch up. Since demonic Neonae didn't chase after it, it was obvious that any attempts would be pointless. From the looks of it, the moon is doomed. It's not my fault. Jowen saw that the Jade Pestle of the Jade Rabbit was still stuck there. It couldn't take it away in time, so he walked over to put it away. After the Seven Seas Dragon King dispelled the sticky liquid, Jowen reached out to grab the Jade Pestle, hoping to pick it up, but after exerting some force, the Jade Pestle remained motionless. It's heavy. Jowen held the jade pestle with both hands, hoping to pull it out. However, the jade pestle remained motionless, surprising Jowen. Jowen got the Seven Seas Dragon King to extend its tentacles to sweep up the jade pestle, but even after using all its strength, the Seven Seas Dragon King failed to lift it. It can't be. The Seven Seas Dragon King is at the terror grade, but it can't even lift the jade pestle? How heavy is this jade pestle? Jowen was alarmed as he had another idea. Perhaps it's not just a matter of strength. The Seven Seas Dragon King can even move a building after all. Perhaps it's possible that only the Jade Rabbit can lift this Jade Pestle. Demonic Neonate suddenly turned her head in a direction. Jowen turned his head and saw Jade Rabbit retracting its head and hiding behind the mountain. Why is it back? Jowen thought for a moment and knew what was going on. Jade Rabbit was definitely unwilling to part with the Jade Pestle, so it had come back for it. Jade Rabbit, if you want the Jade Pestle back, Exchange it with the elixir of immortality. Jowen shouted at the spot where Jade Rabbit was hiding. Jade Rabbit seemed to know that Jowen couldn't catch up to it, so it became a lot bolder. Although it didn't dare come over, it extended its head and paw from behind the mountain wall. Then, it raised its paw and made a universally known gesture at Jowen. Holy sh asterisk t, this rabbit actually knows that? Jowen was somewhat surprised. Jade Rabbit knew that Jowen couldn't lift its jade pestle, so it wasn't afraid of Jowen's threat. Jowen really had no choice. The jade pestle was terrifyingly heavy. He couldn't lift it at all. What should I do? Jowen glanced in the direction of Moon Palace and saw that the flames were becoming more and more blinding. Clearly, the logger was at a huge advantage. He didn't know how long Chani and Ice Maiden could last. Is the moon really going to be destroyed? Jowen wondered how he could obtain the elixir of immortality from Jade Rabbit. Jade Rabbit's speed is too fast. If Demonic Neonate doesn't chase after it, it means that she knows that she can't catch up to it. Furthermore, Jade Rabbit's strength and physical toughness are extremely terrifying. It's virtually impossible to catch it. However, if I don't stand any chance, why would the moon goddess send me? Does she want to use Jade Rabbit to kill me? But there's no need for that. She can even freeze Ice Maiden with her strength. If she wants to attack me, she could have done it in front of the moon goddess temple. But if I have a chance of obtaining the elixir of immortality, where's the chance? Jade Rabbit isn't someone I can match. Jade Rabbit. I seem to remember having something like that in the past. Jowen suddenly thought of something as he sank his consciousness into the chaos bead and rummaged around. After a while, Jowen found something. It was a translucent jade box with mysterious cloud patterns on it. This jade box was something Jowen had obtained from White Cloud Mountain's Jade Rabbit's Lunar Prayer Stone. Back when the Darch had guided him to obtain the jade box, he had only discovered some low-level dimensional crystals inside. Jowen was quite disappointed because they weren't of much use. He had felt that the jade box might be a little special, so he had stored it away in passing. Now, he suddenly recalled that the jade rabbit's lunar prayer stone was said to be a manifestation of the jade rabbit, 
when it descended to the mortal world. The jade box was supposed to have been hidden by the jade rabbit. He didn't really know if it had anything to do with the jade rabbit. Chapter 1068 Exchange for the Elixir of Immortality Zhou Wen didn't know if the jade box had anything to do with the jade rabbit on the moon. After all, legends were only legends. Many legends were just far-fetched. When he took out the jade box, he only felt that the material of the jade box was somewhat similar to the jade pestle. He compared the jade box with the jade pestle and realized that the materials were very similar. He casually opened the jade box and suddenly heard a whoosh. The jade pestle, that even the Seven Seas Dragon King couldn't move, actually moved by itself and flew into the jade box. The jade pestle shrank as it flew over before quickly landing in the jade box. The box fit it perfectly. Joe and looked at the jade pestle lying silently in the jade box and was alarmed. The Seven Seas Dragon King couldn't even lift the jade pestle, but it didn't seem to add much weight to the jade box. Jade Rabbit immediately became anxious when it saw the jade pestle taken away. It stood on the edge of the mountain and shouted and jumped at Joe, one as though it was threatening him to return the jade pestle or it would eat him. Joe enclosed the jade box and stored it in the chaos bead before saying to Jade Rabbit, Exchange for it with the elixir of immortality. Jade Rabbit was even more furious when it heard that. Its body expanded once again and soon, it became an extremely huge rabbit. Its body was much taller than the ring-shaped mountain. The ring-shaped mountain was like a toy model in front of Jade Rabbit, while Zhou Wen and company were ants inside the toy. Jade Rabbit revealed its ferociousness, but because it had suffered under the Seven Seas Dragon King, it didn't dare rush down. All it did was flare up outside. Since you don't wish to exchange for it, I'm leaving. Zhou Wen carried demonic neonate and ordered the Seven Seas Dragon King to head out of the ring-shaped mountain. The Seven Seas Dragon King's tentacles danced as it quickly rushed out of the ring-shaped mountain. Jade Rabbit was screaming fiercely, but it didn't dare rush forward or stop Zhou Wen. It was in a panic. Wah! When Jade Rabbit saw that Zhou Wen was really leaving the ring-shaped mountain, it cried out again. Its body rapidly shrank back to its original size as it rolled on the ground and cried. Give me some of the elixir of immortality and I'll return the jade pestle to you. Zhou Wen said to the crying Jade Rabbit on the ground. Jade Rabbit crawled up from the ground, its eyes still brimming with tears. Then, it gestured with its front paws as though it was outlining a square. Zhou Wen took out the jade box and asked Jade Rabbit. You want this box? When Jade Rabbit saw the jade box, it nodded immediately and stopped crying. All right, I can give you the jade box and jade pestle, but you have to give me the elixir of immortality. Zhou Wen had no use for the jade box, so he might as well exchange it with Jade Rabbit. Jade Rabbit seemed hesitant as it looked at Zhou Wen and the jade box in his hand. Finally, it nodded firmly. Where did you put the elixir of immortality? Zhou Wen couldn't help but heave a sigh of relief when he saw Jade Rabbit nod. Jade Rabbit waved its paw at Zhou Wen before running in a particular direction. Zhou Wen ordered the Seven Seas Dragon King to follow Jade Rabbit and left the white ring-shaped mountain. He traversed numerous ring-shaped mountains and soon arrived in front of a stone hut. The stone hut was simple and crude, as though it was built by a barbarian. It didn't look anything special. Furthermore, the stone door was covered in dust, making it look uninhabited. Jade Rabbit bowed in front of the stone hut before pushing open the door. It stood inside the stone hut and waved its paw at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen walked to the door and saw that the decorations in the stone hut were very simple. They were all primitive stone tools with stone carvings. Jade Rabbit went to one of the stone pots and opened the lid. Then, it carefully picked up the stone pot and tipped it twice. A crystalline pill rolled out of the stone pot. It was the size of a baby's fist and emitted a strong osmanthus fragrance. The fragrance could penetrate the protection of the space suit, allowing Joe Wen to smell the fragrance. Jade Rabbit grabbed the pill with one paw and pointed at the jade box in Joe Wen's hand with the other paw, clearly indicating that it wanted to exchange it with him. Joe Wen didn't hand over the jade box. He looked at the stone pot and said, You still have elixirs of immortality in that stone pot, right? Didn't you say that you wanted to exchange all the elixirs of immortality with me? Jade Rabbit immediately picked up the stone pot and looked at Joe Wen warily. Then, it pointed at the pill in its paw and the jade box, indicating that it was a one-for-one -one exchange. No can do. You have to exchange all the elixirs of immortality with me. Joe Wen shook his head. Jade Rabbit's face showed a struggle. Finally, as though it had made up its mind, it extended its paws and gestured a two in front of Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen was delighted. From the looks of it, there are more than two elixirs of immortality in the stone pot. Zhou Wen pointed at the stone pot and said, I want all the elixirs of immortality. Jade Rabbit hugged the stone pot and shook its head like a rattle drum. Its body kept retreating as it looked at Zhou Wen as though it was looking at a thief. Don't you want the jade box and jade pestle? 
Zhou Wen waved the jade box in front of Jade Rabbit and tempted it. Jade Rabbit's eyes followed the jade box as it spun. It wished it could grab the jade box, but it couldn't bear to part with the elixirs of immortality. Seeing Jade Rabbit struggling as though it couldn't make up her mind, Zhou Wen asked, How many elixirs of immortality are in the stone pot? Jade Rabbit used its paw to gesture three. Only then did Zhou Wen realize that there were only three elixirs of immortality. Zhou Wen noticed that Jade Rabbit's intelligence wasn't high. At most, it was at the level of a child. His heart stirred as he said to the Jade Rabbit with a smile, How about this? I'll exchange the Jade Box for all your elixirs of immortality. When Jade Rabbit heard that, it immediately shook its head and hugged the stone pot even tighter. Hear me out. Just treat it as leaving the elixirs of immortality with me. In the future, follow me and help me do some trivial things if possible. I'll take care of your food and drink. If you perform well, I'll return one elixir of immortality to you. If you perform well and make me happy, I'll return two elixirs of immortality. Perhaps you can even get back all three elixirs of immortality. What do you think? Joe said to Jade Rabbit. When Jade Rabbit heard that, it extended its paw and counted as though it was calculating something. After some calculation, Jade Rabbit felt that it was worth it. Therefore, it nodded happily and handed the stone pot to Zhou Wen. That's right. I'll help you put the elixirs of immortality away for now. From now on, follow me and you'll live in the lap of luxury. I guarantee you won't regret it. Zhou Wen reached out to take the stone pot. However, Jade Rabbit pulled it back and pointed at the jade box in Zhou Wen's hand. It meant that they had to exchange the items at the same time. Zhou Wen handed the jade box over in exchange for the stone pot. He looked inside and indeed, there were three pills inside. Each of them were jade white and emitted a strong osmanthus fragrance. Just taking in the fragrance made him feel refreshed as though he was about to fly and ascend. When Jade Rabbit obtained the jade box, it was also very happy. It hugged the jade box and rubbed its face against it as though it had obtained a treasure. Chapter 1069 Speculation of the Strongest Companion Beast When Zhou Wen returned, he didn't head to the Moon Goddess Temple. Instead, he circled around and came close to Moon Palace. As Zhou Wen didn't know how true the Moon Goddess's words were, he wanted to head to Moon Palace to take a look. With the Elixirs of Immortality in hand, and having lured Jade Rabbit over, together with the Seven Seas Dragon King and Demonic Neonate, he could greatly influence the battle. It wouldn't be too late to make a move after figuring out who would be beneficial to humanity. At that moment, there was almost no cold fog in Moon Palace. There were flames burning everywhere, and many jade buildings were aflame. Amidst the flames, there was only a jade palace with a small amount of cold fog surging. As for the huge Osmanthus tree, under the remnant blast from the battle, large numbers of petals fell and fluttered everywhere. I'm rich. There are so many petals, and every one of them is equivalent to an epic companion beast. Joe and saw that there were copious numbers of petals. He didn't know how long it would take him to pick them up if he were to pick them up one by one. Therefore, he summoned the army of musical notes and let them fuse with the petals. Companion beasts below the mythical stage found it difficult to maintain their combat strength in space. However, there were a few low-level companion beasts that could survive in space. Although musical note sprites had virtually zero combat strength in space, surviving wasn't a problem. Thousands of musical note sprites pounced at the falling petals. Every musical note sprite immediately absorbed the petals upon contact allowing them to enter an evolutionary state. The scene of tens of thousands of companion beasts evolving together was spectacular. Zhou Wen had almost 100,000 musical note sprites, and the number of petals that fell here exceeded 100,000. He summoned the other legendary and epic companion beasts he usually gathered and got them to absorb the petals. Those at the legendary stage were directly promoted, but those at the epic stage only had their stats boosted. When they used a second petal, the effects became much weaker. Zhou Wen summoned the evil spirit king as well, hoping that he could absorb the petals and quickly advance. To his surprise, he didn't even look at the petals. He had no intention of absorbing them. Is he that picky? Zhou Wen was somewhat speechless. Ever since the evil spirit king was born, it had only absorbed energy from companion eggs. Furthermore, they had to be at the same level. It ate nothing else. There were still many petals falling from the tree, but they were all closer to the battlefield. Zhou Wen was afraid of being implicated, so he didn't dare approach. Just as he was hesitating about whether to pick up the petals, he suddenly heard a loud bang. The Jade Palace, that had emitted a cold fog, exploded and was instantly reduced to ruins. All the cold fog vanished. At the same time, two figures appeared from the ice beam. Clearly, they were unable to maintain their terror states. Zhou Wen saw Ice Maiden land in a sorry state in the ruins of the palace. The huge dark gold toad had fallen with her. At that moment, the dark gold toad's body emitted layers of frosty gas. 
Its body seemed to be covered in frost, but some spots were already charred black by the flames. There was no protection from the frost. It's Ice Maiden and the Toad. Why don't I see Chang'e? Zhou Wen looked around but didn't see the legendary Chang'e. Just as he was feeling puzzled, he saw Wei Gu walk out of the flames one step at a time. He held nothing in his hand, but flames condensed into a battle axe that hung down to the ground. Chang'e, you can't stop me. Give up. Wei Gu said as he walked towards the dark gold toad. Who is he talking to? Who's Chang'e? There's only that toad over there. Zhou Wen widened his eyes in disbelief as he stared at the dark gold toad. He couldn't believe his guess. The beautiful celestial maiden, Chang'e, was actually a toad. Wasn't this too ridiculous? However, the toad stirred up the frost again and stood in front of Wei Gu. It looked like it wanted to continue fighting, but it couldn't even enter the terror state. Its combat strength had greatly weakened. Even if it continued fighting, only death awaited it. Ice Maiden was clearly seriously injured. She was also unable to maintain her terror transformation, but she wasn't as stubborn as the toad. She had already secretly retreated. As Wegu walked towards the toad, he said, Chani, why bother? Let me chop down the tree of immortality. Although you will lose the ability to live forever, you can regain your original appearance and no longer have to be an ugly toad. Isn't this what you want? Or would you rather be an ugly toad in order to live forever? When Zhou Wen heard this, he was certain that the toad was the legendary Chang'e. Chang'e is actually a toad. I wonder how those people who fantasize about Chang'e will react when they see her true appearance. Zhou Wen secretly rejoiced that he hadn't immediately eaten the elixir of immortality after obtaining it. So the elixir of immortality created using the tree of immortality actually had such negative side effects. Zhou Wen would rather not advance to the mythical stage than become a toad. Even if I'm ugly and despised by the world, I will still wait here for him. The toad finally spoke. Indeed, it was a woman's voice. He's only an ordinary human. Even if he has the stunning power of sun strafe, he's only a speck of dust in the river of time. It's already unknown where the dust has landed. That weight will be fruitless, Wei Gu said. No, he'll come. He'll definitely. Chang'e yelled in a frenzy. If you knew this would happen, why did you do it in the first place? I originally wanted to spare your life on account of our similar circumstances. Since you wish for death, I can only fulfill your wish. Wei Gu said as he slowly raised the flaming axe in his hand, hoping to kill the toad. Zhou Wen hesitated for a moment before taking out an elixir of immortality. He summoned the jade rabbit and headed for Chang'e. Chang'e, let me ask you. If the tree of immortality is chopped down, will the moon really be destroyed? Zhou Wen asked the dark gold toad. No. Chang'e originally didn't want to answer when she saw that it was a human youth, but when she saw Jade Rabbit beside Zhou Wen, she was slightly alarmed and answered his question. Was Moon Goddess really lying to me? Zhou Wen frowned inwardly. To his surprise, Chang'e continued. However, the Tree of Immortality is connected to the Moon's companion beast. The destruction of the Tree of Immortality means that when the companion beast inside the Moon appears, the Moon, which is the outer shell of the companion egg, will naturally shatter. What? You're telling me that the Moon is a companion egg? Zhou Wen looked at Chang'e in horror, almost unable to believe his ears. He wasn't shocked by the strength of the companion beasts inside the moon, but the news made him think of something else. If the moon is a companion egg, what about Earth? If Earth is also a companion egg, wouldn't the strongest companion beast that the dimension is seeking be inside the Earth? If the companion beast broke out of its shell, Zhou Wen couldn't imagine what Earth would become. Chapter 1070 The Cause of the Catastrophe The more Zhou Wen thought about it, the more he felt that it was right. It was no wonder the bigwigs of the dimension said that Earth would be doomed once the strongest companion beast was found. Zhou Wen couldn't help but recall a scene after a chick broke out of its shell. It seemed like some fledglings ate their eggshells. Ice Maiden also seemed to have thought of something, and her expression became extremely strange. That's not right. If Earth is a companion egg, wouldn't we be able to find the companion beast inside as long as we keep digging? There's no need to spend so much time searching, right? As Zhou Wen thought about it, he suddenly thought of something. Could it be that the ship that tore through the sky and broke apart the supercontinent was planning to crack the companion egg and search for the companion beast inside the earth? If that's the case, they clearly didn't succeed. What stopped them? Countless thoughts flashed through Zhou Wen's mind, but he didn't know which was the correct answer. While Zhou Wen was still pondering, Wei Ji's flaming axe slashed at the toad. Bunny, stop him. Zhou Wen shouted at Jade Rabbit. Jade Rabbit was somewhat hesitant, but when it saw Zhou Wen raise the elixir of immortality in his hand, it immediately took action. It took out the jade pestle and transformed into the huge rabbit in its terror state. It smashed it at Wei Gu. The flaming axe in Wei Ji's hand rose and collided with the huge jade pestle that jade rabbit had smashed down. With a boom, 
A terrifying shock wave instantly destroyed everything nearby. Zhou Wen was sent flying as the space suit turned to dust, revealing the galaxy shell dragon armor inside. With absolute defense, Zhou Wen survived the terrifying blast. Jade Rabbit's strength was extremely terrifying. The Jade Pestle constantly struck out, showing zero disadvantage when facing Wei Gu head-on. It even had the upper hand. This surprised Zhou Wen greatly. This was because Jade Rabbit had previously been restrained by the Seven Seas Dragon King, preventing it from unleashing its true strength. This had given Zhou Wen the illusion that it wasn't very strong. From the looks of it, the strength of the Jade Rabbit far exceeded the Dark Gold Toad. On second thoughts, Zhou Wen came to a realization. The logger could fell the Tree of Immortality, and Jade Rabbit could also use the Tree of Immortality as a medicinal ingredient. It would be impossible for an existence that could shatter the Tree of Immortality to be weak. As long as it wasn't restrained, Jade Rabbit's strength was just too terrifying. Zhou Wen wore the Shell Dragon Armor, so the radiation and environment on the moon couldn't harm him. The boiling point on the moon was very low, so if ordinary people didn't have space suits to protect them, their blood would boil, making it impossible for them to survive. With the protection of the Shell Dragon Armor, he didn't have to worry about this. However, he hadn't reached a state where he could survive without oxygen. Without oxygen for a long period of time, he would still die. Thankfully, Zhou Wen's Chaos Bead had many space suits and oxygen supplies, so he didn't have to worry. Now wasn't the time to change into his space suit. Zhou Wen quickly retreated to prevent himself from being drawn into the terrifying battle. Chani and Ice Maiden were also sent flying. They had been severely injured, so they were unable to transform into their terror forms for the time being and could no longer participate in the battle. Zhou Wen didn't give the elixir of immortality to Chang'e. If Jade Rabbit could suppress the logger, he could save one elixir of immortality. Jade Rabbit can't stop the logger. Give the elixir of immortality to Chang'e and get her to help Jade Rabbit. Moon Goddess's ethereal voice suddenly entered Zhou Wen's ears. Moon Goddess, didn't you say that with your token, Jade Rabbit wouldn't do anything to me? I was nearly killed by Jade Rabbit. Zhou Wen said coldly. Moon Goddess's voice remained as gentle as before. If I hadn't said that, would you have gone? I also knew that it would be extremely dangerous, but if you hadn't made the trip, there'd really be no hope for the moon. Don't tell me you really thought that I could defeat the Terror Gray Jade Rabbit and obtain its elixir of immortality. Zhou Wen curled his lips. I didn't expect you to defeat Jade Rabbit either, but if you want the elixir of immortality, you don't necessarily have to defeat it. Others might not be able to do it, but you might be able to. Moon Goddess said faintly. You sure have confidence in me. I'm not that confident of myself. Zhou Wen mocked. Moon Goddess said with a smile. Didn't you do it? Furthermore, you did it better than I imagined. Not only did you obtain the elixirs of immortality, but you also brought the Jade Rabbit over and made it assist you. That's because I'm lucky. What if I'm unlucky? Zhou Wen snorted coldly. If you aren't lucky, there won't be anyone in this world with good luck. Moon Goddess said. What do you mean? Zhou Wen asked with a frown. Have you ever bowed at a temple? Moon Goddess asked. So what if I did? Zhou Wen's heart stirred as Moon Goddess seemed to know something. No, you haven't bowed before because no temple's deity will dare to accept your bow. Even I don't dare. Moon Goddess said. Why won't any deities accept my bow? What's so different about my life providence? Zhou Wen finally confirmed that Moon Goddess knew something. I don't know. Zhou Wen couldn't accept the Moon Goddess's answer. What an answer. Zhou Wen said coldly. There's no need for you to be angry. If I could completely see through your life providence... I wouldn't be afraid of being worshipped by you. I can only tell that there's something wrong with it. It shouldn't be your life providence, but a life providence formed due to the influence of external forces. Furthermore, that life providence is too ferocious. If I were to receive your bow, I'm afraid I would be plagued by calamities and catastrophes. Even deities would suffer greatly. Moon Goddess said. Zhou Wen didn't wish to harp on this matter as he asked. Chang Yi said that the moon is a companion egg. Is that true? Yes, the same for Earth too. However, you don't have to worry. Earth is different from others. The companion beast inside won't be born so easily. Moon Goddess seemed to know what Zhou Wen wanted to ask. What's the difference? Zhou Wen asked. If the companion beast on the moon wants to be born, it has to wait until the tree of immortality dies. Otherwise, it will never be born. By the same logic, if the companion beast on Earth wants to be born, it needs similar conditions. However, up to now, no creature knows what those conditions are. Moon Goddess said. Since the companion beast is inside the earth, can't we just dig it out? Zhou Wen asked the question plaguing him. Earth wasn't difficult to dig. A terrifying existence from another dimension tried it before. It was an existence even more terrifying than us, but in the end, Earth still remained intact, 
but the terrifying existence from the dimension disappeared. The moon goddess said, Is the terrifying existence you mentioned the owner of a ship? Joe Wynn's heart stirred as he hurriedly asked, You actually know of the existence of that ship? Moon goddess was slightly surprised. Is it really that ship? What kind of creature is the owner of that ship? Joe Wynn asked, I don't know. A ship tore through the sky, causing the ground to split apart and floods to occur. The world was almost destroyed, and then the ship vanished deep into the crevice in the ground. From then on, it never appeared again. No one knows who the owner of the ship is. As the moon goddess spoke, she suddenly changed the topic. Quickly feed Changi the elixir of immortality. The logger is about to forcefully cut down the tree of immortality. Jade Rabbit can't stop him. Only Changi's power can. Chapter 1071 Reversing Yin and Yang Zhou Wen turned his head. He couldn't see the logger anymore. However, he could see gorgeous flames burning around the tree of immortality. Wounds appeared out of thin air on the tree of immortality's body, as the wooden splinters that splattered out burned in the air. The huge jade rabbit had held back, afraid it would result in collateral damage on the tree of immortality, before it attacked its surroundings with a jade pestle, so it had failed to hit the logger. Zhou Wen was somewhat afraid when he saw jade rabbit's irritable look. He didn't want it to snap the tree of immortality. Zhou Wen knew that if he continued hesitating, the tree of immortality might really be chopped down by the logger. Without any hesitation, he threw an elixir of immortality at the dark gold toad that Chang'e had transformed into. After Chang'e swallowed the elixir of immortality, a large amount of cold air immediately surged out of her, causing her body to quickly disappear as she returned to her terror form. Following that, Zhou Wen saw an extremely terrifying scene. The cold air that filled the sky surged towards the tree of immortality like a tsunami. Everything that encountered the cold froze immediately. As for the tree of immortality, it became more spirited amidst the cold. The logger's flames were actually suppressed by the cold air upon contact. The range of the flames became smaller and smaller. It looked like Chang'e's power was indeed his nemesis. Zhou Wen couldn't see the logger or Chang'e, but he could tell that Chang'e had the upper hand from the dissipation of the frost and flames. He summoned Jade Rabbit back, afraid that it would accidentally injure the tree of immortality. The range of the flames became smaller and smaller. Finally, they were limited to a small area. The logger appeared again, as though he could no longer maintain his terror form. Logically speaking, the logger was bound to lose if he couldn't even maintain his terror form. But for some reason, Zhou Wen felt his heart palpitate when he saw Wei Ji's face. He had a nagging feeling that something was about to happen. Seeing that the infinite cold air had already surged towards the logger, the remaining flames around him extinguished. He was about to be frozen in the cold air. Faced with the infinite cold, the logger suddenly revealed a strange smile. In the next second, the overwhelming cold gases completely drowned the logger's figure. Apart from the cold gases, there was no other force. Not even a tiny flame could be seen. The toad appeared again. At that moment, its entire body was covered in frost, as though it was an ice sculpture. Even without its terror transformation, it still emitted a terrifying cold aura. It became obvious how powerful the effects of the elixir of immortality were. Even now, the medicinal effects were constantly erupting. What a pity. I might become a toad after taking the elixir of immortality. I don't want to become a second Chang'e. Zhou Wen looked at Chang'e and saw her staring at the logger. Zhou Wen looked over and saw that after the cold gases dissipated, the logger's body appeared. It had already turned into an ice sculpture and was completely frozen. However, when he saw the frozen Wei Ji's expression, Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss. There was a smile on his lips that sent chills down his spine. Crack. Crack. A tiny shattering sound could be heard using Truth Listener. It left Zhou Wen feeling extremely uneasy. What was even more shocking was that inside the ice sculpture, the logger's body gradually turned into ice jade. Not only did the cold gases on him fail to injure him, but they also made his strength increase. How is this possible? He clearly has fire elemental powers, and it's a fire elemental power that has already terror transformed. How can he suddenly switch to ice? Ice Maiden was alarmed as she stared at the logger in disbelief. The toad also wore a solemn expression, but it was also somewhat puzzled. Clearly, it couldn't figure out why the power of the logger had turned into an ice elemental power. Not good. Moon Goddess's voice entered Zhou Wen's ears. Almost at the same time, the ice on the logger's body completely shattered as he regained his freedom. At that moment, the logger's body suffused extremely terrifying cold gases. They didn't look any weaker than the cold gases emitted by the toad. I never expected that I would have to rely on the strength of this human body to redeem the situation. The logger raised his arm and looked at his palm. Although this body is very weak, his life soul is surprisingly interesting. It has the ability to reverse yin and yang. Even I benefited greatly from it. 
I really have to thank him. Oh no! The elixir of immortality is refined from the tree of immortality that has the Ian attribute. It can boost Changya's Ian attribute and is very useful against fire elemental powers. However, now that the logger has switched to the ice attribute, Changya's ability to suppress him has greatly weakened. It's impossible to kill or suppress him now. Once the effects of the elixir of immortality fade, no one will be able to stop the logger. It looks like the moon will really be doomed this time. Moon Goddess sighed. Is there no other way? Zhou Wen asked with a frown. Although he still had two elixirs of immortality, they were no longer key to victory. It would be useless even if he was willing to give them both to Chang'e. As you can see, Jade Rabbit's strength is excessively ferocious. If we let it stop the logger, I'm afraid the tree of immortality will be destroyed by it. That ice demon from the dimension has only just entered the terror grade. It's too weak, so it's impossible for it to stop the logger. Moon Goddess sighed softly. The lunar calamity is inevitable. I wonder where my Moon Goddess temple will go in the future. Chang'e transformed into her terror form again as she charged toward the logger. The logger clenched his fist, and the power of frost condensed in his palm, transforming into a frost axe. It then disappeared, transforming into a dazzling ice beam. Crack. Crack. Zhou Wen couldn't see the battle between the two terror creatures, but the tree of immortality was riddled with wounds from the ice beams. The damage intensified. As the tree of immortality was injured, the entire moon began to tremble. Deep ravines appeared on the moon as they constantly spread. It looked like the end of the world was approaching. Is the moon really going to be destroyed? Zhou Wen was alarmed. Leave. I'm afraid there won't be a moon from now on. Moon goddess's voice sounded. Shin Yuchi and Wang Chou Yuan, who had been frozen in front of the moon goddess temple, had also recovered. However, they had no idea what situation they were in. They looked at the quaking and cracking ground with eyes filled with horror. If Earth is really like the moon and is a companion egg, if those fellows in the dimension really find a way to bring it to life, then humans. Zhou Wen looked at the moon that was on the brink of destruction and could already imagine what Earth would look like. The Earth would fracture, volcanoes would erupt, and seawater would drown everything. Humans had nowhere to hide. 99.99% of over 10 billion humans would die in a short period of time. Perhaps a small number of people could use external forces to escape from Earth, but they would be in the ultra minority. Chapter 1072 Then let's give it a shot. Now that the moon is being destroyed, I can still escape back to Earth. If Earth is destroyed in the future, where can I escape to? Zhou Wen looked solemnly at the Tree of Immortality that was beginning to tilt. The legendary Tree of Immortality had the ability to recover on its own, but under the power of the logger, the damage to the Tree of Immortality's body didn't automatically heal and was constantly expanding. Go! It will be too late for you to leave once the Tree of Immortality falls. Moon Goddess's voice sounded from the Moon Goddess Temple. Shin Yuchi and Wang Chou Yuan turned around and ran in the direction of the spacecraft. As the moon had cracked open, many cracks had appeared around Toad Palace and the moon's crust. There was no need for them to leave through the door. However, Zhou Wen didn't move. He looked at the Tree of Immortality and asked, You are the moon goddess, the ruler of the moon. With such powerful strength, why can't you stop him? Moon goddess sighed softly and said, Because I'm a creature born on the moon. The logger can disobey the moon's rules, but I can't. It's ironic. As a creature of the moon, I can only break free from the restrictions and use my powers as I wish after the moon shatters. Then if you were given a choice, do you want to preserve the moon, or do you want freedom and strength? Zhou Wen asked. I've lived here for countless years, so I'm too lazy to move. Moon Goddess said with a bitter smile. From the looks of it, there's nothing I can do even if I don't want to move. Then let's give it a shot and see if we can protect the moon. Zhou Wen said as he took out a calabash. Zhou Wen released the Seven Seas Dragon King. At the same time, he released Grim Demon from the Demonic Sword. Grim Demon, no matter what method you use, protect that tree. Zhou Wen said as he pointed at the distant tree of immortality. I only have one method. That is to kill. Grim Demon's eyes were filled with a ruthless killing intent. It transformed into a demonic aura that filled the sky and swept towards the tree of immortality. Grim Demon. So Grim Demon is Zhou Wen's guardian. Shin Yuchi's heart started racing when he saw Grim Demon. Grim Demon became famous from a single battle. He had trounced his challenger, and humanity was guessing who he belonged to. He never expected Grim Demon to be Zhou Wen's guardian. It's actually his. In that case, those mythical companion beasts are also Zhou Wen's. They don't belong to any family. Many thoughts flashed through Shin Yuchi's mind as he looked at the distant Zhou Wen with a complicated expression. He gritted his teeth and quickly fled. Moon Goddess was also somewhat surprised, but her surprise was completely different from Shin Yuchi's. It wasn't rare to have a guardian. 
It was normal for a human like Zhou Wen to be fancied by a guardian. However, the guardian didn't come from Zhou Wen. Instead, it came from Zhou Wen's companion beast sword. Moon Goddess had never heard of a guardian being attached to a companion beast. Furthermore, this was a terror grade guardian. This was even more shocking. Grim Demon rushed over and engaged in a crazy battle with the logger. It was the toad that played the supporting role. Unlike the toad, Grim Demon didn't consider stopping the logger at all. He only wanted to kill his opponent. He attacked, unleashing crazy attacks. Zhou Wen could clearly tell that the logger no longer had the energy to chop the tree. After receiving Zhou Wen's order, the Seven Seas Dragon King also moved. However, it didn't participate in the battle. Instead, it charged at the Tree of Immortality and spewed the glue like liquid at its damaged spots. As the power of the logger was special, it seemed to have a restraining effect on the Tree of Immortality, making it difficult for the wound to automatically heal. Zhou Wen didn't have powerful companion beasts that could heal the Tree of Immortality's damage in a short period of time. Therefore, he got the Seven Seas Dragon King to use glue to cover the damaged spots. Even if the logger extricated himself from Grim Demon and the Toad and wanted to chop the tree again, he had to either destroy the glue or chop from another angle. Either choice could buy a lot of time for the Tree of Immortality. Of course, Zhou Wen didn't believe that the glue could really ward off the logger. This was because the Seven Seas Dragon King's ability was actually restrained by ice and fire elemental powers. This was also the reason Zhou Wen didn't get the Seven Seas Dragon King to participate in the battle. It was restrained by the logger, so it had little effect. Grim Demon had already become the main force in the battle against the logger, and Chang Ye's role was gradually diminishing. Jade Rabbit also wanted to help, but its body was too big. With one strike, it nearly sent Grim Demon flying. With it attacking the logger together with Grim Demon, not only did it fail to gain the upper hand, but it nearly injured Grim Demon a few times. Zhou Wen had no choice but to summon it back. Jade Rabbit crouched by the side with an aggrieved look, as though it knew that it had done something wrong. Zhou Wen didn't have the ability to participate in the battle, so he picked up some fallen petals and put them away. They might be useful in the future. Bam! With a loud bang, the toad was sent flying. It slammed into the trunk of the Tree of Immortality and spat out large amounts of blood. The axe wounds on its body crisscrossed and it was powerless to enter its terror firm. It didn't look like it had the ability to continue fighting. On the other hand, Grim Demon was surprisingly resilient. He wasn't at a disadvantage even when fighting the logger alone. What Grim Demon said in the past might not have been bragging. His combat strength is indeed off the charts, Zhou Wen thought to himself. If he's really as powerful as he says, but is so humble in front of Neonate, what's Neonate's background? Demonic Neonate had too many secrets. Before she had been absorbed by the dead man tree, Zhou Wen couldn't even tell if she was a dimensional creature or a human. She was a unique existence. Just as Zhou Wen was pondering over it, he saw a change in the situation. Without Chang Ye's participation in the battle, the logger switched his stats to fire. Terrifying flames spewed out, turning into a sea of flames which enveloped a large area near the Tree of Immortality. Its leaves and petals, as well as its trunk, immediately burned upon contact with the flames. Grim Demon had powerful combat strength, but he wasn't good at protecting others. He only wanted to kill the logger before the Tree of Immortality was burned down. However, the logger's strength was equally unfathomable. Grim Demon failed to gain the upper hand. Just as the Tree of Immortality was on the brink of incineration, the moon's tremors intensified. Zhou Wen was momentarily at a loss as to how he could resolve his present predicament. Just as Zhou Wen was hesitating about whether he should use the Ice Dragon King's tooth to see if he could extinguish the flames on the Tree of Immortality, he suddenly felt a strange force and thought coming from his body. Banana Fairy's evolution is complete. Zhou Wen was immediately overjoyed when he sensed her will. Chapter 1073 A Cool Breeze Zhou Wen was near the Moon Goddess Temple. With the Moon Goddess around, the logger didn't dare enter the area. However, the Tree of Immortality was being consumed by the flames. If he didn't save it, it would probably be charred in a few hours. Huge cracks constantly appeared on the moon's surface. This was clearly a sign that the companion beast inside was about to appear. Zhou Wen didn't have the time to see the changes in Banana Fairy's stats. He summoned her immediately. With a flash of light, a young woman wearing a white veil was sitting on a banana leaf that resembled a boat. Her snow-white feet were swaying playfully. Her face was beautifully delicate, but her figure was petite. As the banana leaf floated in the air, she looked like a fairy. Little fairy, can you help me extinguish the flames on that tree? Zhou Wen pointed at the flames on the Tree of Immortality. Banana fairy blinked and looked in the direction of the Tree of Immortality. Then, she opened her red lips and spat out a cool breeze. Zhou Wen was filled with anticipation. Banana fairy's supreme wind 
was known as the Three Realms' best wind. Furthermore, it was in elemental. It should have an extremely powerful restraining effect on flames. With the help of the supreme in wind, he might have a chance of defeating the logger. A cool breeze silently blew into the darkness. The wind that blew out of Banana Fairy's mouth was just too weak. Little Fairy, use more strength! Jowen was somewhat anxious. After all, the other party was a top existence at the Terra Grade. He didn't know if Banana Fairy's casual blow would be effective. However, in the next second, Jowen's mouth gaped open. The cool wind that looked like a breeze immediately extinguished the flames and demonic aura when it came into contact with them. As for the demonic aura, it dissipated. In an instant, the demonic aura that had filled the area vanished without a trace. The terrifying fire was also extinguished. Not even a wisp of smoke remained, as though the fire had never existed. Bam! Bam! Grim demon and the logger slammed into the trunk of the tree of immortality, but they didn't fall. Their limbs stuck to the trunk, unable to move in the wind. The muscles on their faces were distorted by the wind, and frost formed on their brows and hair. If not for the tree of immortality, they would have been blown into space. Shouan was at a loss for words. After a long while, he exclaimed, Holy sh asterisk t! Isn't this a little too strong? Only when this gust of wind passed did Grim Demon and the logger fall from the tree trunk. They failed to get up immediately. Supremeen wind! Moon Goddess's voice was somewhat odd. She was Lady Supremeen, so she was naturally no stranger to the Supremeen wind. She immediately recognized it. However, she found it unbelievable that a companion beast could use the Supremeen wind, and this companion beast was Zhou Wind's. The logger changed his stats again, turning from fire to ice. He condensed an ice axe and threw it at Banana Fairy. The ice axe vanished in midair. All that could be seen was ice swirling over. Banana Fairy sat on the banana leaf without dodging. She pouted her red lips and blew out another mouthful of fragrance. However, the wind this time wasn't as cool as before. Instead, it was scorching. When the fragrant wind encountered the power of the ice axe, blazing white flames appeared out of thin air. Instantly, the ice axe completely melted. From ice to water, then from water to steam, it finally turned into nothingness in the blink of an eye. The strong wind swept over with flames and devoured the logger's body. It instantly melted the ice aura, and his body immediately burned. Ah! We're on the same side! We're on the same side! Another tragic cry sounded. It was Grim Demon, who had just gotten up and was standing not far from the logger. He was implicated as his demonic aura caught fire, turning him into a flaming man. Banana Fairy's wind was good at everything, but its area was just too wide. It didn't distinguish between friend and foe, causing Grim Demon to be implicated. Supreme Yang wind? Moon Goddess was even more bewildered. Supreme Yin and Supreme Yang were two conflicting attributes, and they were two extremes. A companion beast actually had the ability to control Supreme Yin wind and Supreme Yang wind at the same time. This was just too terrifying. If she can advance to the Calamity grade, Moon Goddess didn't dare imagine such a scene. Just with one gust of the wind, even Earth would probably suffer an apocalyptic end, much less the moon. Ahem. Little fairy. That's one of us. Joe would hurriedly help Grim Demon resolve the situation. It was unknown what kind of fire banana fairy's flames were, but Grim Demon failed to extinguish the flames on his body. He cried out from the heat. Banana fairy blew out another gust of wind. This time, it was the supreme wind. As the breeze brushed past, the flames on Grim Demon's body immediately extinguished. Just as the logger turned into the fire attribute and wanted to absorb the flames on his body, the flames on his body were extinguished by the supreme in wind. Then, she saw Grim Demon and the logger fly out together. Bam! Bam! They slammed into the tree of immortality again and had their limbs plastered to the tree trunk. After the supreme in wind blew, they fell again. Grim Demon didn't dare continue staying there. He could tell that this unknown companion beast was a destroyer who didn't distinguish between friend and foe. She was even more unscrupulous than himself. If he stayed, due to her whims, it might be the end of him. The logger struggled to get up after falling from the tree, but he suddenly held his chest. His chest seemed to have been pierced by an invisible sword. Blood flowed down the invisible sword hilt and dripped onto the ground. The logger wanted to pull out the demonic sword, but he felt his strength rapidly disappearing. He knew that he had no chance of fighting again. I've waited for countless years. I never expected such an outcome. The logger sat under the tree of immortality and looked up at the osmanthus petals dancing in the sky. However, there wasn't much anger or hatred on his face. He extended his hand and caught a petal. He held it in his palm and stared at it, but his gaze wasn't focused on the petal. It was as though his emotions had flown elsewhere. Back then, 
I was focused on cultivating and attempted to escape my mortal coils. Instead, I neglected the most important person. This can be considered my retribution. Sorry for making you wait so long. I'll be accompanying you soon. As the logger spoke, he slowly looked up and his gaze landed on the distant Zhou Wen. Don't tell me he wants to self-destruct and drag me down with him. Zhou Wen subconsciously took a few steps back. To his surprise, the logger said, Do you have anyone you want to protect? If not, I wouldn't have stopped you. Zhou Wen said, That's good. Be careful of those fellows in the dimension. Don't believe their so-called rules. The logger nodded before closing his eyes. Unfortunately, I won't be able to see the day you cut down the tree of immortality. Chapter 1074 Birth from Extreme Death What do you mean? Jowen was just about to ask when he saw that the logger had stopped moving. There were no longer any signs of life. He was probably dead. Why don't you make yourself clear before you die? Jowen was somewhat depressed. However, from the looks of it, the logger didn't seem to have any intention of saying anything else. Otherwise, he would have said it before he died. However, it was difficult to guess what the logger had meant. There were many interpretations for this sentence. Perhaps it was because Joe Wen couldn't resist the temptation and wanted to obtain the companion beast on the moon, so he had come to chop down the tree of immortality. It could also be that there was some secret beneath the tree of immortality. In the future, Joe Wen would have to chop down the tree of immortality to find out the secret. There were too many possibilities. It was also possible that the logger had said it casually to deliberately arouse Joe Wen's curiosity. Joe Wen wasn't in the mood to continue guessing. At the very least, from the looks of it, the moon's continued existence was better than it being destroyed. As he walked towards the logger, Zhou Wen planned on bringing his corpse back. After all, this body belonged to Wei Gu. At the very least, he could return his body to his family in one piece. When he arrived in front of the corpse, Zhou Wen extended his hands and placed them under the corpse's armpits. Just as he was about to lift the corpse up, he suddenly saw the eyes widen. Zhou Wen's reaction was extremely fast as he instantly made a decision. If he retreated, he would have fallen for the logger's scheme. Therefore, Zhou Wen did the opposite. Instead of retreating, he advanced and pressed his body against the logger's body. His hands passed through his armpits before grabbing his neck. He wanted to use force to snap his neck. It's... It's me! Don't! Cough, cough! The logger said a few words before his neck was pressed down by a powerful force, preventing him from saying a word. Zhou Wen couldn't help but slow down when he heard those words. He didn't continue. This was because the pitch and tone of the words didn't sound like the loggers. Instead, they sounded like Wei Ji's. President Wei? Zhou Wen released his hand and retreated as he looked at Wei Gu in disbelief. If it was the logger, he would have killed him, but it also seemed impossible for it to be Wei Gu. Be it Wei Ji's consciousness controlling the body, or the logger's consciousness controlling the body, the injuries this body suffered were fatal. It was useless no matter whose consciousness it was. If the body died, the consciousness could only perish. The wound on Wei Ji's chest was still there. His heart had been pierced through. The logger was dead, so how could Wei Gu still be alive? It's me! Wei Gu looked down at the wound on his chest and said with a grimace, I don't have much time left. Quickly think of a way to save me. Think of a way to stabilize my injuries first. Just don't let me die. Are you really President Wei? Zhou Wen looked at Wei Gu suspiciously. He was somewhat suspicious that the logger wasn't dead and was trying to trick Zhou Wen into treating him. Do you still remember when I went to look for you after graduation? We even chatted a little. Do you remember the sentence about barely defeat the heavens? Wei Gu said. The logger has occupied the body, so he might have absorbed your memories. Zhou Wen looked at Wei Gu warily. Wei Gu didn't know whether to laugh or cry. My dear junior, I'm really Wei Gu. Previously, I recognized that the bone pottery artifact was a sacrificial offering to invite a deity's descent. I knew that I might be possessed by some kind of spiritual body. Furthermore, I also knew that Shinyuchi would most likely make me a sacrifice. Therefore, it was better to take the initiative to touch the bone pottery artifact. My life providence is birth from extreme death. It's too troublesome to explain. To put it simply, after my body dies, I can still exist in a living dead state for a period of time. If I heal my body during this period of time, I can still live. I can't hold on much longer. If you don't treat my injuries, I'll really die, Wegu said gloomily. Zhou Wen saw that his tone and demeanor were indeed different from the loggers. He believed him a little. This was because Zhou Wen had previously determined that Wei Gu might know the origins of the bone pottery artifact, so he had taken the initiative to take it. He definitely had some means. Previously, Zhou Wen had believed that Wei Ji's judgment was wrong, so his means had failed to take effect, and he had ended up dying tragically. Without much hesitation, Zhou Wen switched to the primordial human sovereign life soul 
and threw a punch at Wei Ji's wound. The fist blasted into Wei Ji's heart, but when it pulled out, the wound on his heart healed significantly. Berserk punches came one after another. Under the strange force, the fatal blow to Wei Ji's heart miraculously healed completely. There was no longer any wound on his chest. However, due to the excessive blood loss, Wei Ji's body was still on the brink of failure. Zhou Wen summoned a few more pill essences, like the rejuvenation pill, and got Wei Gu to swallow them. Only then did his body recover its vitality. As for the glow in Wei Ji's eyes, it grew stronger and stronger. Soon, he was back to being a healthy person. Zhou Wen, I'll have to thank you for your help. Otherwise, I would have really died here. Wei Gu said as he stood up. If the logger hadn't died, would you have been able to retrieve your body? Zhou Wen asked Wei Gu. No. Wei Gu shook his head. If I hadn't treated your injuries, would you have lived? Zhou Wen asked again. No. Wei Gu shook his head again. Then why did you make such a bet? Zhou Wen felt that the conditions for survival were too harsh. If he wasn't here, Wei Gu would definitely be dead. As there are benefits that are hundreds or even thousands of times greater, it was worth taking the risk. The logger used my body and died in my body. The wealth he left behind for this body is unimaginable. It was worth betting my life. Wei Gu smiled and continued. Of course, there's another important reason why I was willing to take the bet. What was it? Zhou Wen asked. Because you are here? Wei Gu said solemnly. You think too highly of me. Zhou Wen shook his head and smiled bitterly. When Zhou Wen and company were on the moon, the ranking battle on Earth continued. Ye constantly faced challenges from different guardians and had yet to be defeated. However, Ye's various abilities were constantly probed by the guardians. Furthermore, the opponents that appeared were getting stronger. His victories became increasingly hard won, but he still hadn't lost. In Forbidden City, that was enveloped by fog, a distorted figure descended from the void. The figure was very similar to the figure that had changed the cube's battle rules twice. Or rather, it was the same creature. The figure floated in front of the Hall of Supreme Harmony. The door to the Hall of Supreme Harmony seemed to be opened automatically by some invisible force. In the hall, there was a log lying flat. Polestar, why haven't you chosen a contractor yet? An ethereal voice sounded from the figure made of light and shadows. That's my business. What has it got to do with you? A cold woman's voice sounded from the log. Chapter 1075 True Terror Grade As a guardian, you should know your mission. The figure said, as it looked down at the log in the Hall of Supreme Harmony. My mission has long ended. Don't you already have a new guardian? Why are you still looking for me? The woman in the log snorted coldly. It hasn't been long since the new guardian came into existence. It hasn't grown to a sufficiently strong stage. It's not enough to buy for first place, said the figure. What has that got to do with me? The woman's voice was cold and heartless. If you defeat ya, you can return to the dimension and obtain a good status, the figure said. The woman suddenly laughed, her laughter filled with mockery. Aren't you all known to be omnipotent high-level lifeforms? Can't you even deal with a fellow who's half-human and half-guardian? After you return to the dimension, you can dominate a region. There was no change in the figure's voice. Not interested, the woman said without hesitation. A divine fruit, the figure continued. Keep it for yourself, the woman mocked. Ten! The figure remained emotionless. Are you that afraid of you getting first place? The woman didn't reject his offer immediately this time. He's not a guardian. There's already one Wang Mingyuan. There's no need for a second or third one. The Lord of Earth has to be a guardian the figure said. The king of earth can't even have half a human's bloodline? How ironic. Humans are the original owners of earth. What can make you take action? Asked the figure. I haven't found a suitable contractor. I don't plan on taking action. The woman actually rejected the figure again. You aren't the only guardian who survived that era. If they were to obtain ten divine fruits, you should know what that will imply. There was finally some emotion in the figure's voice. One could clearly sense that his tone had turned cold. So what if I know? The woman said indifferently. As long as you defeat an ordinary mythical creature, you can obtain ten divine fruits. It's impossible for such a good thing to happen a second time. Don't regret it. The figure regained its calm. Nothing can make me, Empress Polestar, regret it. The woman said. The figure didn't say anything else as it gradually vanished into the void. Finally, it completely vanished. After Empress Polestar sensed that the light figure had vanished, she muttered to herself. An ordinary mythical? I'm afraid it's not that simple. Otherwise, why would you come looking for me? On the moon, Zhou Wen was sitting in front of a huge cube. After saving Wei Gu, Zhou Wen had originally planned on punishing Shen Yuqi, but Wei Gu convinced him otherwise. In fact, Wei Gu didn't say much. All he did was tell Zhou Wen. Leave him alive. With me around, 
The Bureau will be your eyes and ears in the future. With Wei Ji's words, Zhou Wen didn't seek trouble with Shinyuchi again. He got the great might to draw bull to take Wei Gu back to the spacecraft while he remained on the moon. Zhou Wen had originally planned on using Glimmer to teleport back. He didn't need to take the spacecraft back, so he got Wei Gu to return with him. As for how Wei Gu would subdue Shinyuchi and the Bureau, Zhou Wen didn't wish to know. Even if Wei Gu didn't succeed, Zhou Wen already had the strength necessary to destroy the Bureau at any time. However, before returning to Earth, Zhou Wen still wanted to obtain more petals of the Tree of Immortality. However, the Moon Goddess had told him that the Tree of Immortality was severely injured. It was best not to pluck its petals and wait for it to recover. Zhou Wen had no choice but to pick up the petals that had fallen nearby. He didn't touch the petals on the tree again. He knew the principle of economizing to ensure long-term benefits. After touring the moon, he realized that there was a cube here. Zhou Wen watched several battles here, all between Ya and the Guardian. A battle at this level can't even withstand a single breath from my little fairy. Every time Zhou Wen made a comparison, he felt that Banana Fairy was much stronger. Typical mythical and terror-grade creatures couldn't compare. Banana Fairy, Terror, Evolvable. Life Providence, Yin Yang Spirit Root. Life Soul, Fairy in the Wind. Wheel of Destiny, Three Realms Best Wind. Terror Form, a Pyron Perfected Immortal, S Grade. Strength, 82. Speed, 82. Constitution, 82. Essence Energy, 82. Talent Skill, Supreme Wind, Supreme Yang Wind, Immeasurable Wind. Companion Form, Fan. Banana Fairy's evolution was very strange. This was because ordinary creatures wouldn't change their life providences or life souls. However, with Banana Fairy's evolution, even her life soul and life providences had changed. This was a phenomenon Joe Wen had never seen before. Furthermore, she was different from Demonic Neonate. Demonic Neonate was still at the mythical stage, but she had the ability to transform into a terror form. Joe Wen originally believed that the terror grade was only a state of the mythical stage. However, from the looks of it, above the mythical stage was the terror grade, not just a state. Banana Fairy was a true terror grade. Demonic Neonate hadn't truly reached the terror grade, but for some reason, she had the ability to transform into a terror form. Joe Wen guessed that it had something to do with her Wheel of Destiny, but he couldn't be sure. Then, there was Banana Fairy's stats. Although she had broken through the limits of the mythical stage of 81 points, she didn't directly reach a certain value like before. All her stats had only increased by a little. Zhou Wen suspected that after achieving the Terra Grade, Banana Fairy might need to slowly raise her stats like humans. As for the limit of the Terra Grade, Zhou Wen wasn't sure. According to the previous standards, the limit should be double the previous stage, but this was only speculation. As for how powerful Banana Fairy's Terra Transformation ability was, Zhou Wen had no idea. This was because once Banana Fairy completely transformed into her Terra form, even Zhou Wen, as her master, couldn't see her. The only thing he was certain of was that Banana Fairy was very strong. As he was pondering over it, he saw the cube light up again. Another guardian had challenged Ya. However, the name that challenged Ya this time made Zhou Wen's pupils involuntarily contract. Ninth Arch. He has finally joined the battle. Zhou Wen was somewhat worried. Zhong Zia might not know that Ninth Arch was at the terror grade. If Zhong Zia ended up trapped in Ninth the Arca's Evernight domain without being aware of it, he might end up being killed without even having the chance to surrender. After all, only the Terra Grade could defeat the Terra Grade. Zhong Zia and Primordial Sword Immortal had yet to reach the Terra Grade. Zhong Zia quickly accepted the challenge, making Zhou Wen even more worried. From the looks of it, Zhong Zia likely didn't know of Night the Arca's existence. Night Arch entered the cube's arena and stood in midair as he stared at Zhong Zia and said, I don't want to kill you, so you should admit defeat yourself. Zhong Zia looked up at Night Arch. No one could see his expression behind the mask, but Zhong Zia's words made Zhou when secretly heave a sigh of relief. I'm more interested to know how strong the terror grade is. Zhong Zia slowly pulled out Primordial Immortal Sword. Chapter 1076 Never Cares About Consequences To me, you are a work of art. Don't give me the chance to personally destroy you, Ninth Arch said. Compared to being a work of art, I want to be a tool without any beauty, Zhong Zia said. Since you insist on fighting, then attack, Ninth Arch said calmly. I had the same thought, Zhong Zia said, as he fused with his sword and transformed into a stream of light that streaked towards Ninth Arch. Zhong Zia's sword techniques and movement techniques were already at the mythical stage and weren't inferior to Zhou Wen's. In fact, due to the augmentation of his mythical attributes, he was even stronger than Zhou Wen. However, no matter how terrifying the primordial immortal sword in his hand was, it couldn't touch Ninth Arch's clothes. Ninth Arch was like a ghost, his figure unpredictable. 
Zhong Zia's sword was always three inches away from him, so he couldn't hit him. It's really perfect. You're better than I imagined. Ninth Arch praised as he dodged Zhong Zia's sword. Others might think that Ninth Arch was mocking Zhong Zia, but Zhou Wen knew that Ninth Arch didn't have any intention of mocking him. Those words were most likely heartfelt. Ninth Arch was just too odd. He could kill 10 million people without any guilt. It could be said that he was a true devil. However, he especially indulged those humans with excellent talent. Even though Zhou Wen was his enemy and had nearly killed him, Ninth Arch didn't take any revenge. Zhou Wen couldn't completely understand his mentality. He felt that he was a strange person that couldn't be fathomed. Your sword is very determined. This is very good, but it's still not good enough. Ninth Arch continued. How is it not good enough? Zhong Zia's sword streaked across Ninth the Arch's face, almost touching him, but he ultimately failed to touch Ninth Arch. It's not focused enough. Ninth Arch flashed past Zhong Zia like a ghost. My sword has no distracting thoughts. Zhong Zia turned the primordial immortal sword in his hand and stabbed in a direction that had nothing but thin air. Ninth Arch was not there. In the next second, the space around the area changed. The two of them seemed to have been swapped. Zhong Zia seemingly missed strike stab right in front of Ninth Arch. Just because there aren't any distracting thoughts doesn't mean that one is sufficiently focused. Knight the Arca's body was similar to the dawn, like darkness, as he silently retreated. That strange strike kept advancing in front of his nose, but it was like the light of dawn which couldn't touch the night sky. It was forever a distance away from Knight Arch. As he fought, Knight Arch said, Your sword is too sentimental. It can't be devoted. If you want to use a sword, you have to be devoted to the sword. If you want to kill someone, you have to devote all your attention to the process of killing. You have too many emotions in your heart, so it's inevitable that you will be distracted. That's why you can't focus. I don't believe that there's anyone in this world who can be absolutely focused. Zhong Zia constantly attacked, his sword techniques and skills changing. One after another, his illusory clones charged at Ninth Arch from all directions, but Ninth Arch dodged them again and again. Indeed not, but I've seen one who came extremely close. He's more heartless than you, and closer to a focused state than you. However, you aren't bad either. If you can turn emotions into extreme emotions, you might surpass him. Ninth Arch said. I think I know who you're talking about. He's indeed very strong. Zhong Zia suddenly threw out the sword in his hand. Primordial Immortal Sword split into millions of identical ones in the air and rained down on Ninth Arch. However, Ninth Arch stood there without moving. He allowed the millions of ancient swords to pass through his body, but none of the swords could injure him. He didn't take on his terror form. The swords didn't injure him. Not because of the power of the terror transformation. Instead, it was because the swords were only illusions that didn't really exist. He also has his flaws. Compared to you, he's too conservative and can't accept new powers. This is a fatal flaw. Therefore, in comparison, I think more highly of you. You have a chance to improve further. Ninth Arch suddenly made a move. His two fingers grabbed the real primordial immortal sword amidst the millions of illusory primordial immortal swords. The primordial immortal sword trembled and hung between his fingers, but it couldn't move at all. Leave. Your time hasn't come yet. I'm looking forward to the arrival of that era. Ninth Arch casually waved his hand, and primordial immortal sword flew back and entered the scabbard in Zhong Zia's other hand. This battle dazzled everyone. Everyone was shocked by Ninth the Arca's strength. Ya, who had been undefeated and almost invincible, seemed to have been easily suppressed in front of Ninth Arch. Time waits for no man. Zhong Zia had no intention of retreating. I didn't want to kill you before, much less now. However, you have to leave this place, Ninth Arch said with a frown. Before I get first place, I definitely won't die, nor will I leave, Zhong Zia said firmly. Is there something more important than death? Ninth Arch asked. Yes, Zhong Zia answered with certainty. Then let me see if you have the qualifications to stay. As Ninth Arch spoke, he took a step forward. In that instant, the entire arena turned into an eternal night. The cube's big screen turned pitch black, and nothing could be seen. Only the sound of armor tearing could be heard. In the blink of an eye, the arena lit up again. Ninth Arch had already returned to his original spot, and Yu was still there. However, many wounds had opened up on his cloak and armor. Blood was constantly flowing out, dyeing his armor red. Go back, Ninth Arch said. Thank you, Zhong Zia suddenly said. Before Ninth Arch could figure out what Zhong Zia meant by thank you, he saw that the wound on Zhong Zia's body was no longer bleeding, but effusing light. The light was corroding his body, gradually turning his flesh and blood into light. Terror form. Ninth Arch looked at Zhong Zia in surprise. Clearly, Zhong Zia was transforming into his terror form. Kill him! A voice entered Ninth the Arca's mind. 
Ninth Arch looked at the terraform Zhong Zia and knew that this was a critical moment for his advancement. This was the best opportunity to kill him. Once he completed the terror transformation, it wouldn't be so easy to kill him. However, Ninth Arch only stood there and watched without any intention of attacking. I said kill him! Didn't you hear me? The voice entered Ninth the Arca's mind again. Ninth Arch remained unmoved as though he hadn't heard anything. Do you know the consequences of violating our agreement? The voice was already somewhat angry. I, Ninth Arch, never care about consequences, Ninth Arch said indifferently. In the dimension, a distorted figure of light and shadow roared angrily. Terror grade force crushed everything nearby into powder, but it was still unable to vent the anger in his heart. Chapter 1077 Origins of the Dimensional Wheel Before long, Ya's body completely transformed into light. On the cube's screen, only a humanoid figure could be seen. If he moved slightly, the dazzling light would change, preventing anyone from seeing his appearance. Instead, because Primordial Immortal Sword had yet to reach the Terror Grade, it remained in Ya's hand. The guardian you fused with was already at the Terror Grade? Ninth Arch asked as he admired Zhong Zia, who had transformed into the Terror Form. Yes, Zhong Zia answered. With your strength, it should be impossible for you to absorb such a guardian. How did you do it? Ninth Arch continued asking. A betting contract. Zhong Zia answered. Others might not understand what a betting contract was, but Ninth Arch knew very well. When he heard that, he asked with a heavy expression. What did you bet with him? First on the rankings. Zhong Zia answered. Ninth Arch laughed. Do you know how difficult this path is? It's impossible for the alien races in all the worlds to let even half a human become the final victor. Only with difficulty will there be fun. Zhong Zia's hand that held the sword glowed brightly. The primordial immortal sword and scabbard in his hand slowly lit up before finally turning into a body of light. Interesting. Then let me see if you have the qualifications to walk to the end. Ninth Arch took a step forward and Evernight descended on the arena again, turning everything into darkness. All the humans in the world felt extremely uncomfortable. It was like watching a boring crappy movie in a movie theater. After enduring it for an hour, and finally seeing a beautiful woman about to take a bath, the screen suddenly turned black. Only the sound of water splashing could be heard. It was so uncomfortable that it made one want to go crazy. Jowen didn't feel good either, because he couldn't see what was happening inside. However, this state didn't last long. Soon, a point of light appeared on the dark screen. The point of light became brighter and brighter before it lit up the dark area like a volcanic eruption. In the end, the light was just too powerful. It made it impossible to look straight at it. It was so blinding that one couldn't even open their eyes. When the light faded, the cube's screen finally returned to normal. Ya and Knight the Arca's figures appeared. The two of them looked at each other from afar as though nothing had happened. Who won? I don't know. I didn't see anything at all. It's too terrifying. We can't even see a battle at that level. If such experts want to slaughter humans, we won't even have the chance to resist. Everyone discussed spiritedly as Zhou Wen wore a puzzled look. He didn't know who had won or lost. I hope you can walk to the end. After Ninth Arch said that, he turned around and vanished into the night. I will. Zhong Zia answered. The cube screen went black before returning to the rankings. You remained in first place? Ninth Arch didn't appear on the rankings, so it was obvious that you had one again. After you won this time, the Guardians didn't swarm over to challenge him like before. There wasn't even one challenger. This was because the Guardians knew very well that only a Terror Grade could defeat a Terror Grade. If they were to challenge him again, it wouldn't be a challenge, but suicide. There are less than 40 hours left on the countdown. If this continues, you should have a chance of getting first, right? Joe Wynn muttered to himself. It's impossible for him to obtain first place. A palm-sized humanoid puppet walked over, but the sound emitted by the puppet belonged to Moon Goddess. Why not? He's already at the Terror Grade. Even if he encounters other Terror Grades, he should have a good chance of winning, right? Joe Wynn didn't know why Moon Goddess was so certain that Zhong Zia wouldn't come in first. Just as Ninth Arch said, it's impossible for the Dimension to let even half a human obtain first place. Moon Goddess answered. Zhou Wen pondered for a moment and said, If humans obtain first place, it means that no dimensional race can obtain control of Earth for a year. I can understand that. However, you can only be considered half-human. If he wins, doesn't it mean that the race of the Guardian that fused with you won? Why can't they accept that? If he is not of our kin, he is sure to have a different mind. It's the same for dimensional creatures. If you finds the strongest companion beast in this year, do you think he will hand it over to the dimensional creatures? Moon Goddess paused before continuing. Most importantly, that dimensional wheel can't be handed over to a creature with human blood. Otherwise, even if those dimensional experts personally descend, it's impossible for them to defeat a human 
with a dimensional wheel in this world. The dimensional wheel is created by dimensional creatures. Could it be that they can't deal with it? Joe would ask suspiciously. Who told you that the dimensional wheel was created by dimensional creatures? Moon Goddess asked. Isn't that so? Joe Wen was slightly taken aback. Of course not. The so-called dimensional wheel is actually a companion beast, said Moon Goddess. Companion beast? What level is it? Zhou Wen was somewhat puzzled. It's hard to say what level it is, but the owner of that companion beast was the person who had the strongest guardian in that horrific era. In that era, they fought countless powerful opponents in the world and ultimately obtained first place. That dimensional wheel played a role of inestimable proportions. Moon Goddess paused for a moment before continuing. After all, guardians in that era weren't as weak as they are now. This is because the battle of guardians took a long time. All the guardians had enough time to become stronger. Furthermore, in that era, the various races of the dimension had just reached an agreement. The regulations weren't too strict. Many terrifying dimensional creatures descended and secretly controlled the battle of guardians. The expert who could defeat all his opponents in that era and stand at the peak of the world was an unimaginably powerful existence. Which era is the horrific era you speak of? Who's the guardian who obtained first place? Who's his contractor? Zhou Wen was puzzled. That human's name is Xian Yuan. The guardian's name is Mystic Arch. Moon Goddess answered. Xian Yuan. Could it be Yellow Emperor? Then, is Chiu among his opponents? Zhou Wen was alarmed as he hurriedly asked. There was indeed such a person. He was also in existence that was very likely to win first place at that time. His guardian was the Weapon Lord. I still remember that if Xian Yuan hadn't taken the dimensional wheel back then, the human who clinched final victory in that horrifying era might have been Chi Yu. Moon Goddess said. What do you mean? Didn't you say that the dimensional wheel is Yellow Emperor's companion beast? Zhou Wen was even more puzzled when he heard that. That's right. Yellow Emperor picked up the dimensional wheel companion egg, so the dimensional wheel naturally became his companion beast. However, Chi Yu originally had a chance of obtaining the dimensional wheel companion egg. No, it should be said that the dimensional wheel originally belonged to Chi Yu and Weapon Lord. Moon Goddess said after some thought. Chapter 1078 Betting Contract Moon Goddess had been born on the moon, so she didn't know much about Earth. All she could see were some of the major things that had happened on Earth. It had to be a sufficiently large commotion for her to see a thing or two. Just like how the ship had flown out of thin air back then, Moon Goddess could see such a huge matter clearly from the moon. Originally, the battle between Chi Yu and Yellow Emperor wasn't enough for the Moon Goddess to observe. However, a huge meteorite had slammed into Earth. If Earth had been hit, most of the creatures would have been wiped out. Moon Goddess didn't know what the experts on Earth had done. However, Chi Yu had worn the Weapon Lord armor and destroyed the meteorite. The Dimensional Wheel Companion Egg had flown out from the shattered meteorite. However, Chi Yu and the Weapon Lord were exhausted of their strength after destroying the meteorite. It was picked up by another human and guardian. They were naturally Yellow Emperor and Mystic Arch. There's actually such a thing. Zhou Wen was taken aback when he heard that. He didn't know if Moon Goddess was telling the truth. However, Moon Goddess' knowledge was very limited. She didn't say it clearly because there was no such thing as the Black Cubes in that era. The experts directly fought on Earth. Only when the combat energy exceeded a certain threshold could Moon Goddess observe it. Moon Goddess had observed the Dimensional Wheel's energy explosion many times. It was likely the key to Yellow Emperor's victory. That's not right. Since the Dimensional Wheel is Yellow Emperor's companion beast, it should have died with him. Why did it end up in the hands of the Dimensional Creatures? Zhou Wen thought of a terrifying question. That's not something I can know. The puppet controlled by Moon Goddess shook its head. As the two of them spoke, the black cube lit up again. Another person issued a challenge, and the person being challenged was Stilya. To dare challenge at this time, the challenger must be extraordinary. They must be at the terror grade, right? Zhou Wen looked at the challenger's name. However, the name was very unfamiliar. It was a guardian named Cave Era. Not long after, Zhong Zia accepted the challenge and appeared in the cube's arena again. Zhou Wen carefully sized up Cave Era that had entered the arena. He saw a human wearing gray armor. The armor covered her entire body, so he could only tell that it was a woman's figure. However, he didn't know what kind of human she was or what she looked like. He didn't know if she was young or old. Is this a former guardian? Zhou Wen asked the moon goddess puppet. In recent years, very few guardians had advanced to the terror grade. As long as they were at the terror grade, there was a high chance that they were former guardians who had survived. I don't know. Moon Goddess's answer left Zhou when somewhat depressed. Zhong Zia didn't care who his opponent was. He immediately entered his terror form and transformed into a beam of light that slashed a cave era. 
Cave Ira's figure vanished in front of everyone as though she was invisible. She's indeed a terror grade. Zhou Wen wasn't too surprised. It would be strange if the person who dared to challenge you wasn't at the terror grade. After Cave Era vanished, the only thing that could be seen in the arena was Ya, who was like a dazzling light. One could see the light constantly flashing. Ya was probably constantly attacking. He was likely capable of seeing Cave Era. Ya is in danger, the moon goddess said. What's going on? Zhou Wen asked with a frown. He couldn't see the battle clearly. See for yourself. Moon goddess didn't answer directly. Would I be asking you if I could see it? Zhou Wen said gloomily. You'll be able to see it very soon. Moon goddess said with a hint at what she felt deep down. Indeed, before long, Zhou Wen realized that the shadow that represented Ye was gradually slowing down. Not only that, but even his terror form was becoming somewhat unstable. After a while, Ye couldn't maintain his terror form and revealed himself. Furthermore, his body looked a little odd. The body under the robe looked much thinner and more hunched. Although his appearance couldn't be seen, his body didn't give off the feeling of a young and strong youth. Instead, he looked like an old man on the brink of death. Temporal power. Zhou Wen immediately knew what had happened. The power of Cave Era was time. Zhong Zia had been affected by powers, like time acceleration. Guardians wouldn't die and weren't afraid of the passage of time. However, Zhong Zia wasn't a pure guardian. Half of him had a human bloodline, and he had a limit to his lifespan. He would still age. There's still a chance of survival if he admits defeat now. Otherwise, he will die of old age in the arena. Unfortunately, he has a betting contract. Admitting defeat will also lead to death, said Moon Goddess with a sigh. What kind of contract is a betting contract? Zhou Wen could roughly guess the rules of the bet, but he still wanted to know the details. A typical guardian contract is an equal contract. Both parties can terminate the contract at any time without paying any price. However, a betting contract is different, especially in a situation like Ya's. His strength isn't enough to absorb such a powerful guardian, so he can only agree to sign a betting contract with the guardian. If he can win the betting contract, he can always have this body. However, if he loses, I'm afraid this body will only benefit others in the end. Moon Goddess said. Just now, he said that he's betting on whether he can obtain first place. In other words, he has no way out now. He has to win? Zhou Wen frowned slightly. His body has already aged. I'm afraid there's no chance of him winning, said Moon Goddess. It shouldn't be that simple, Zhou Wen said as he stared at Ya. He can't withstand the passage of time nor can he touch Cave Era, who possesses the ability of time acceleration. I can't think of a way for him to turn the tides of defeat. The moon goddess puppet looked at Zhou Wen and said, Do you know what other abilities he has to help him turn the tables? I don't know what abilities he has, but a person like him shouldn't be so helpless. Zhou Wen said after some thought. However, the scene Zhou Wen was hoping for didn't happen. As time passed, Ye's body died, and he collapsed to the ground. As time passed too quickly, Ye's body turned to dust. Cave Ira's figure appeared again. She glanced at the scattered dust on the ground, but her expression suddenly changed. She immediately entered her terror form. As for the dust that scattered on the ground, it gathered together again and returned to Ya's appearance. Furthermore, there was no sign of age on his body. Do you only realize it now? It's too late, Ya said as he extended his palm. A strange light rune shimmered in his palm. At the spot where Cave Era had vanished, the same light rune shimmered. It immediately pulled Cave Ira's body over, and she charged uncontrollably into Ya's palm. Despite using several powers in a row, she was unable to escape Ya's power. Even though time slowed down, Cave Ira still flew towards Ya's palm. Chapter 1079 Perfection Zhou Wen stood up as he watched Cave Ira admit defeat and leave the cube's arena. Are you leaving? The moon goddess puppet asked Zhou Wen. I have to return eventually. Zhou Wen was somewhat nervous. It was almost certain that Glimmer would advance to a perfect body. But Zhou Wen didn't know if Glimmer's advancement to a perfect body could advance him to the mythical stage. Aren't you going to hatch the companion beast I gave you? The moon goddess puppet asked. In the future, I don't feel like doing it now. Zhou Wen tidied up his things and confirmed that he hadn't missed anything. He temporarily stored Jade Rabbit and Ice Maiden in the Chaos Bead before waving goodbye to moon goddess. Taking a deep breath, Zhou Wen switched to the sky stealing sun swapping art and used the Glimmer Life Soul to choose Earth as a teleportation target in the pocket universe. His body instantly tore through the void. In the blink of an eye, Zhou Wen realized that he had returned to Earth and was standing in a desert. Almost at the same time, the Glimmer Life Soul erupted with immense energy and rapidly transformed. The pocket universe in his body seemed to be activated as it automatically circulated. In the originally empty desert, there was a baffling amount of energy. 
The energy was like countless meteors shooting from the sky to the ground. This gave Joe one a fright. This was because the meteors looked terrifying. Even if there were hundreds of Earths, they would probably be instantly destroyed. However, that didn't happen. When the meteors hit Earth, they passed through it without hitting it. It was unbelievable. The meteor that struck Joe when fused into his body and into his pocket universe, making it stronger and stronger. Finally, the Glimmer Life Soul completed its final evolution and became a perfect body. However, Zhou Wen didn't have the time to observe what the Glimmer Life Soul had evolved into. The lost immortal sutra in his body automatically circulated. Zhou Wen was somewhat alarmed. Although the lost immortal sutra automatically circulated, this was the first time it had automatically switched back while he was simulating other essence energy arts. Could it be that? I'm really about to advance to the mythical stage? Zhou Wen felt expectant and uneasy. His slaughterer life soul automatically activated as it hugged Zhou Wen's body as though it had fused with him. Endless essence energy surged crazily. Zhou Wen, who was looking forward to advancing to the mythical stage, suddenly realized that another essence energy arc was circulating in his body. Ancient Sovereign Sutra How can this be? The lost immortal sutra is still circulating without switching. Why is the ancient sovereign sutra circulating at the same time? Won't there be a conflict? Zhou Wen was alarmed, but he realized that he couldn't stop the essence energy in his body from circulating. He didn't know what was happening, nor did he know if it was a blessing or a curse. In theory, it was very dangerous for two different essence energy arts to circulate in one body. Now that the lost immortal sutra and the ancient sovereign sutra were circulating at the same time, Zhou Wen's body definitely couldn't withstand the clash of essence energy. The chances of him exploding to his death were as high as 99.99%. As Zhou Wen was feeling uneasy, the small perfection of Wisdom Sutra began circulating. It wasn't just small perfection of wisdom. All the essence energy arts that Zhou Wen had cultivated began circulating. Unlike the usual switching of essence energy arts, the essence energy arts were circulating at the same time. The ancient Sovereign Sutra, small perfection of wisdom, Tao Sutra, Sky Stealing Sun Swapping, First Order of Chaos, Qi Refinement Art, Godfiend Era, and Demon God Bloodline Catalog were all circulating in Zhou Wen's body. Zhou Wen was alarmed and afraid. Others who cultivated two essence energy arts at the same time would most likely die. With the nine essence energy arts coming together, it was equivalent to having his name registered with the King of Hell. Zhou Wen found it unbelievable that he wouldn't die. However, the nine essence energy arts circulated in Zhou Wen's body without any conflict. This feeling was magical. The circulation path of the nine essence energy arts had many conflicts, but for some reason, other than the lost immortal sutra, the eight essence energy arts felt like they were circulating in the void. The eight essence energy arts seemed to circulate in Zhou Wen's body, but they also didn't seem to be in his body. They were closely connected to his body, but they weren't completely attached to his body. This magical experience had the eight essence energy arts circulate under the support of Zhou Wen's essence energy. If not for the lost immortal sutra providing unlimited essence energy, it would be impossible for him to circulate all eight essence energy arts at the same time. As the eight essence energy arts circulated, all sorts of life providences and life souls automatically activated. What was even stranger was that the life providences and life souls had separated from Zhou Wen's body, forming independent entities. Eight life souls that had fused with the life providences appeared in eight different directions around Zhou Wen. Primordial human sovereign was the shadow of a sovereign. The heaven opening scripture of the highest elder was a book. The supreme hell king was Zhou Wen himself. The new era was a ring with a clown symbol. The chaos egg was an egg. The sword pill was still in the form of a pill. It hadn't changed into a sword. The demon god bloodline catalog was a blood shadow. The blood shadow's outline looked like Zhou Wen. Finally, there was a constantly changing point. It looked like a point, but inside, there seemed to be countless stars circulating as they constantly changed. Zhou Wen knew that it was likely the perfect body life soul evolved by Glimmer. He didn't even have the time to look at its name. These life souls were originally condensed by Zhou Wen. Although he had used a simulation method, they still had a blood connection with him when he used them. But now, the eight life souls were unfamiliar and terrifying. Zhou Wen couldn't sense the connection that he should have with them. It was as though they weren't the life souls and life providences that Zhou Wen had condensed himself. They clearly enjoyed Zhou Wen's essence energy, but they didn't belong to him. This feeling left him so depressed that he nearly vomited blood. The only life soul that was connected to Zhou Wen's bloodline was Slaughterer. At the same time, Slaughterer emitted a terrifying killing intent that affected Zhou Wen's mind. If not for Zhou Wen's extraordinary willpower, he would have long been controlled by the killing intent and turned into a lunatic who only knew how to kill. Hum! At that moment, the eight life souls erupted with terrifying power. Zhou Wen was extremely familiar with the powers. 
he had used most of them countless times. However, this time, the powers didn't help Zhou Wen, but became his enemy. The sword hum was like a song as the 3,000 sword intents fused into one pill. The sword pill carried the supreme will of the sword Dao as it slashed at Zhou Wen. Chapter 1080 Annihilation Zhou Wen didn't think that the sword intent was terrifying when he had used sword pill in the past, but now that sword pill had become an enemy, he realized how terrifying the sword intent was from personal experience. Under the suppression of the terrifying sword intent, Slaughterer's killing intent erupted. Zhou Wen didn't plan on taking action, but his body was driven by Slaughterer's power. It was as though he was being hugged by someone behind him, as he guided his attack step by step. Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed. Wasn't he hitting himself? It wasn't easy for him to condense the sword pill life soul and its corresponding life providence. It would be a pity if it was crippled. Boom! The sword beam clashed head on with Slaughterer's strength. Sword pill tore through the essence energy and stabbed Zhou Wen's palm at high speeds like a hot knife through butter. However, the closer sword pill got to Zhou Wen's palm, the slower it became. The essence energy resistance it encountered increased. When it was a few centimeters away from Zhou Wen's palm, its forward speed was nearly reduced to zero. Hum! At that moment, sword pill suddenly changed. Its body transformed into a sword that broke through Slaughterer's essence energy barrier. The blade pierced through Zhou Wen's palm. Damn it! I'll be the first person in history to be injured by my life soul, right? Zhou Wen knew that he couldn't hesitate any longer. He wanted to cooperate with Slaughterer and fight seriously. It didn't matter if it was condensed by him. If he wanted to live, he had to destroy it first. Just as he was about to pull out the sword pill that had penetrated his palm, the blood shadow condensed by the demon god body attacked Zhou Wen from the other side. With a flash, it appeared behind him. Zhou Wen turned around and brandished his fist. Just as he was about to strike the demon god body, the blood shadow that looked like Zhou Wen transformed into a blood snake that wrapped around Zhou Wen's arm and bit at his neck. Screw you. Zhou Wen made a prompt decision and head by the blood snake's head. However, the blood snake changed again. It flapped its wings and transformed into a blood bird, dodging Zhou Wen's head strike. Its claws left several bloody marks on Zhou Wen's scalp, injuring his skull. The primordial human sovereign and supreme hell king also attacked from both sides. One fist carried a brilliant divine light, while the other carried invisible karmics and flames. Zhou Wen used his left hand to pull out the sword pill that had penetrated his right hand. He quickly moved, hoping to dodge the attacks of the primordial human sovereign and the supreme hell king. At the same time, he wanted to summon his companion beasts. However, the companion beasts didn't react at all. Even demonic neonate didn't answer his calls. Two streams of light flashed and appeared in front of Zhou when out of thin air. He had just dodged the attacks of primordial human sovereign and supreme hell king, so it was already difficult for him to afford any new strength. Furthermore, the two streams of light appeared out of thin air as though they were teleporting. Zhou Wen could only do his best to contort his body. With his excellent reaction speed and calm mind, he dodged the two streams of light that appeared out of nowhere in front of his chest and the back of his head. He wasn't hit by the fatal attack. At that instant, the two streams of light vanished again, but Zhou Wen could clearly see that one of the streams of light was the new era ring life soul. The other was the perfect life soul that Glimmer had just evolved. Zhou Wen's figure moved at high speeds, as he took the opportunity to deliver a punch at Supreme Hell King. He wanted to kill one first, but he was surrounded by eight life souls and couldn't use companion beasts. This left him overwhelmed. However, when Zhou Wen's fist struck Supreme Hell King, it didn't hit its corporeal body. The palm seemed to pass through space and enter purgatory. The palm inside Supreme Hell King's body was instantly enveloped by flames. In the flames, the flesh on the palm quickly disintegrated. Zhou Wen hurriedly retracted his hand, but the injury couldn't be healed. Do you really think I'm easily defeated? Zhou Wen was infuriated. He used Transcendent Flying Immortal and the Heart Defying Sword. As his figure moved like an illusion, sword beams crisscrossed. A huge ball rolled over. It was none other than the Chaos Egg. When Zhou Wen's sword beam slashed at the Chaos Egg, it was instantly absorbed like water that had encountered a sponge. In the past, when Zhou Wen had used these life souls to restrain others, he had felt extremely comfortable, but now, he realized how uncomfortable it was to be besieged by these life souls. The easiest thing for humans to ignore was what they already had. Only when he became enemies with his life souls, did Zhou Wen seem to realize his life souls for what they were worth. It wasn't that Zhou Wen didn't understand them in the past, but that he couldn't see it from this angle. In the past, Zhou Wen could use their characteristics, but he never knew how it felt to be attacked by the power of these life souls. Apart from the heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder remaining motionless, the other seven life souls surrounded Zhou Wen as though they wanted to kill him. 
Although Zhou Wen had pushed his technique and strength to their peak, he was still at a disadvantage in a one-on-seven situation. He was constantly injured by his live souls, making the situation rather terrible. The injuries on his body made Zhou Wen increasingly calm. Slaughterer's strength gradually fused with Zhou Wen. With the augmentation of infinite essence energy, Zhou Wen's strength grew stronger. If I can condense you, I'll naturally be able to destroy you. Zhou Wen's eyes were calm. Slaughterer seemed to have fused with his body as a whole, no longer hugging his soul life soul. Seeing sword pill fly over again, Zhou Wen used his finger as a sword and stabbed at it. At that moment, Zhou Wen's essence energy already had the power of immortal slaying. Pitting sword against sword, Zhou Wen's sword aura and sword intent were stronger than sword pill. When the sword beams collided, sword pill's sword aura instantly shattered. Even the sword body shattered. The demon beast transformed from the demon god body had already pounced behind Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen didn't turn his head or dodge. Instead, he rapidly retreated and slammed into the demon beast. Terrifying essence energy directly shattered the demon beast formed by the demon god body, turning it into specks of splattering blood. He suddenly extended his left hand and grabbed at his ear. The new era ring that he had teleported out of was caught between his fingers before it was crushed. Zhou Wen's every move contained the terrifying power of immortal slaying. Together with his strength and the augmentation of slaughterer, he slaughtered his former life souls. One life soul after another that once belonged to him was shattered by him. Sword Pill, New Era, Demon God Body, Supreme Hell King, Primordial Human Sovereign, Singularity, and even the Chaos Egg with the strongest defense were cleaved into two by Zhou Wen. Apart from the immense power of immortal slaying, there was another important reason. Zhou Wen knew them too well. No life soul could withstand a single strike from him. Once upon a time, he would have been enervated once he used the power of immortal slaying, but now, he could use it freely without weakening himself. Only the final heaven opening scripture of the highest elder remained floating there. The other life souls that Zhou Wen had painstakingly condensed shattered into dust. Zhou Wen looked at the heaven opening scripture of the highest elder with a calm expression. He raised his palm and slashed down like a blade. Chapter 1081 No More Friends 1. After Cave Era was defeated, no guardian challenged you again. Time ticked by until there was only one second left before another guardian challenged you. Indeed, they won't let you, a half-human, obtain first place so easily. Zhang Chunqiu looked at the cube inside. Even the cave era with the power of time was defeated. Are there any guardians with power stronger than time? Zhang Yuji asked in puzzlement. Zhang Chunqiu smiled and said, Time is indeed a very powerful attribute. In theory, time and space should be considered top-notch strength among all the various attributes. However, at that realm, the suppression between attributes isn't the most important. The strength of a skill is also no longer an important criterion to determine one's combat strength. Then how do we determine who's stronger and who's weaker? Zhang Yuji asked. It depends on whose willpower is stronger, whose intelligence is deeper, and whose in combat improvisation is better. At that stage, there are only weak people, and no such thing as weak abilities. Any ability, even if it looks weak, can become the key to victory as long as it's used properly. Zhang Chunqiu paused before adding. Of course, this is when the difference in strength isn't too disparate. If the difference in strength is too great, it will be a different matter. However, Ya's strength and ability should be considered top-notch on Earth. It's unlikely that there's a force on Earth that has absolute suppressive might on him. Why can't it appear? Didn't you say that there's the stronger calamity grade above the terror grade? Zhang Yuji still wore a puzzled expression. The calamity grade can naturally crush the terror grade, but in a place like Earth, there are only two possibilities for a calamity grade creature to appear. The first is the descent of a calamity grade powerhouse from the dimension. However, the dimension's calamity grade powerhouse will be restricted by the rules of Earth after its descent. It's impossible for them to unleash the strength of the calamity grade. If they forcefully use their calamity grade strength, they might even be reduced to the mythical stage by the rules. Zhang Chuinqiu thought before continuing. There's another possibility. After a guardian contracts a human, they can use the bodies of humans to advance to the calamity grade. Too little time has been given to the guardians born in this era. Let alone advancing to the calamity grade, there aren't even many at the terror grade. Therefore, if a calamity grade creature appears on Earth, the only possibility is that it is from the calamity grade guardians that survived the previous war. Like the one in our fiend tomb? Zhang Yuji asked. Zhang Chunqiu didn't answer and continued. However, although the guardians who survived the battle are extremely powerful, the humans who contracted them can't live that long. After leaving the humans, their strength will once again be suppressed by the rules of Earth. Even if they have the strength of the Calamity Grade, it's impossible for them to use it on Earth unless they contract humans again. There are so many humans on Earth. 
It shouldn't be difficult to find a contractor, right? Zhang Yuji said after some thought. It's not that easy. There is some kind of restriction. Do you think the one in our family doesn't want to come out? Zhang Chunqiu smiled and said. In short, it looks like you still has a chance. As long as he can survive the next challenge from the dimension, he might very well become the final victor. Brother, do you wish for Ye to win or for him to lose? Zhang Yuji blinked and asked. From my standpoint, I hope he wins, but his chances aren't high. Zhang Chunqiu answered. The person challenging you was a guardian named Jiu Yue. It was a very unfamiliar name. He had never appeared on the rankings before, so no one knew what abilities he had. After the battle began, people immediately knew what ability he had because the characteristics of his ability were too obvious. Teleportation, constant teleportation. Yu's continuous attacks failed to touch any part of Jiu clothes. However, Jiu Yue had no intention of counterattacking. If Yu attacked, he would teleport and dodge. If Yu didn't attack, he wouldn't move either. Instead of calling it a battle, it looked more like he was stalling for time. Yu didn't launch any meaningless attacks as he took on his terror form. His body transformed into a beam of light, but Jiu Yue could also enter the terror form. After doing so, he vanished even more thoroughly than Yu. However, the terror form Jiu Yue still had no intention of counterattacking. He continued dodging. Now, anyone could tell that Jiu Yue was stalling for time. They just didn't understand why he was stalling. What does Jiu Yue want? If he wants to expend Yu's essence energy, that shouldn't be right. The essence energy he expends when teleporting is much more than Yu. Xia Xian Yu said and thought as she looked at the cube screen. Xia Lu Chuan looked at the screen and frowned. I have an ominous feeling. I'm afraid this battle for first place won't end so easily. Why do you say that? Xia Xian Yu asked in puzzlement. I don't know. It's just a hunch. Xia Lu Chuan shook his head slightly, but his expression was solemn. Just as Xia Xian Yu had said, Jiu Yue was constantly teleporting in his terror form, and the expenditure was much greater than Yu's. If he continued fighting, Yu would definitely win. However, Yu didn't continue attacking. He stopped and left his terror form. He sat down in the arena and placed Primordial Immortal Sword on his lap. Why aren't you fighting? Jiu Yue had also left his terror form as he looked at Yu and asked in puzzlement. Don't you need time to prepare to deal with me? I'll give you time. Yu said indifferently. Jiu Yue looked at Yu with a complicated expression. You know that I need time to deal with you. Why don't you defeat me as soon as possible? If you are fast enough, you might be able to avoid a lot of trouble. What will be, will be. Besides, I'm not afraid of trouble. Ya said. No regrets? Jiu Yu asked Ya. Life isn't about regret, but about doing what you want to do. Ya answered. Jiu Yu looked at Ya and sighed. If I had met you earlier, we might have become friends. We won't become friends. I stopped making friends long ago. Ya said. Why? Jiu Yu asked Ya in a daze. Because I only have one life. I can't give it all to them when there are too many friends. Ya answered. Jiu Yu didn't say a word when he heard that. He only looked at Ya silently. After a moment, Jiu Yu said, If you attack now, you still have a chance if you can defeat me in 15 minutes. Ya had no intention of moving. He continued sitting there with his eyes closed. Jiu Yu looked at him and asked, Do you think I'm lying to you? No, I believe you are telling the truth. Ya said with certainty. Then why aren't you fighting? Jiu Yu asked curiously. Because I don't want to be your friend, I won't take anything that belongs to you. Ya said. Jiu Yu looked at Ya with a strange look in his eyes. After a while, he wanted to say something, but his expression suddenly changed. He looked into the void and sighed. It's too late now. In the void, a beam descended, illuminating the entire cube's arena. Chapter 1082 The Symbol on the Wheel of Destiny At the instant, he shattered the heaven-opening scripture, Zhou Wen felt his body undergo a strange change. The mysterious sigh of the life providence king automatically circulated. Slaughterer that had fused with Zhou, Wen's body still emitted terrifying killing intent and essence energy. It was even more terrifying than when he fought the eight life souls. As for Zhou Wen's essence, vitality, and spirit, they erupted like a volcano. The energy produced by the three forces was unimaginable. Zhou Wen had seen countless mythical creatures. Apart from demonic neonate, who had the ability to undergo terror transformation at the mythical stage, all sorts of powerful mythical creatures, such as Torch Dragon and Tyrant Behemoth, could produce powers that weren't as terrifying as the ones Zhou Wen had unleashed. Under the direction of such a terrifying force, Zhou Wen felt his body constantly transform. This transformation was different from any other in the past. The previous transformations were within Zhou Wen's limits, but this time, the energy produced by the evolution was no longer something his body could withstand. At the beginning of the evolution, Zhou Wen was very worried that his body would explode because he couldn't withstand the power. 
In fact, it was indeed the case. In an instant, countless cracks appeared on Zhou Wen's body like an eggshell that was about to shatter. At this moment of life and death, the terrifying force surged towards a spot. It was a point, a point that seemed to be in a superposition of existence and non-existence. It was like the beginning of the universe, but also the end of the world. That point seemed to be a real existence, but it also seemed to only exist in his consciousness. Between reality and illusion, it was difficult to even determine its existence. However, when the terrifying power injected into the point, it gradually became clearer. It constantly spun and changed, and it became more and more corporeal. However, this corporealization was very abstract. It didn't really exist in reality, as though it was just Zhou Wen's imagination. Gradually, the point grew bigger and brighter, turning from a point into a wheel. Furthermore, there were many strange, changing patterns on the wheel. The patterns were abstract. Sometimes, Zhou Wen felt that the patterns resembled him, and sometimes, they resembled Slaughterer. Sometimes, they resembled the life souls that had been destroyed by Zhou Wen. There were moments when the patterns resembled Primordial Human Sovereign, New Era, and Supreme Hell King. However, upon careful inspection, it didn't seem like it. It was difficult to describe the patterns accurately. Even Zhou Wen couldn't tell what shape the wheel was. Although it could be described as a disc, it only had one face. It had a spherical arc. If it was described as a sphere, from a certain angle it looked sunken. It was like a coin that was constantly spinning and changing. Is this the wheel of destiny? Zhou Wen could sense that the wheel of destiny was inextricably linked to him. It was like a part of his body, as important as organs like his brain and heart. However, it was different from the organs that grew on its body. It existed independently. What will my wheel of destiny be? Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength isn't bad. Dragon Eclipse's bright torch vision world is the strongest, but those don't seem to have anything to do with me. Zhou Wen didn't know what his wheel of destiny would be. This was because he didn't have any reference. Perhaps, he was the first human to rely on his own strength to advance to the mythical stage. The three forces constantly surged into the wheel of destiny that was taking shape, but even the wheel of destiny couldn't seem to withstand such a powerful force. In particular, the energy that gushed out from the sigh of the king was endless, like a galaxy, or the universe itself. The energy that seeped out of the wheel of destiny seeped into Zhou Wen's flesh and blood. Under the impact of the energy, his transformed flesh and blood seemed to undergo an inexplicable change. Zhou Wen and the wheel of destiny were constantly transforming, especially the patterns on the wheel of destiny. The changes seemed to slow down as some of the lines stopped moving. Zhou Wen inexplicably knew that his wheel of destiny was about to condense. This was the most critical moment. What kind of power is it? If I can choose, I hope that the power of the Wheel of Destiny is related to space-time. Zhou Wen felt that the power of space-time was easier to understand the world's origins. To figure out the relationship between the dimension and Earth, perhaps spatial-temporal power was a good entry point. However, he didn't see any patterns related to space-time on the Wheel of Destiny. On the Wheel of Destiny that had condensed, many of the lines had already solidified. The lines looked a little messy, but he still couldn't figure it out. Zhou Wen tried to figure out some patterns from it, but in reality, there was no pattern to the lines. They were everywhere, as though they were random scribbles. Most of them were curves with almost no straight lines. Ah! When most of the lines took form, Zhou Wen finally saw what symbol it was. At the same time, he was alarmed. It was a painting. It was a portrait of a woman, but it only showed her side profile. He couldn't see her entire face. The portrait was complete and just the incomplete side profile was already breathtakingly beautiful. However, this wasn't the reason for Zhou Wen's horror. What truly alarmed him was that he was too f asterisk king familiar with this woman's avatar. This was the woman's portrait on the anchor. He couldn't be wrong. Zhou Wen had seen it too many times and had thought about it too many times. Apart from the lack of an anchor, this was the woman's portrait. As more and more lines were fixed, it proved Zhou Wen's guess. It was indeed identical to the portrait of the anchor woman he had seen. Apart from not having an anchor, it was identical. Why? Why would that woman symbol appear on my wheel of destiny? Countless thoughts flashed through Zhou Wen's mind. Just as the woman's portrait was about to be completed with only a few strokes left, Zhou Wen suddenly felt extremely uncomfortable. That's my wheel of destiny. Why is there a woman on it? Zhou Wen felt an inexplicable emotion. This emotion seemed to infect the wheel of destiny. When the woman's portrait was just short of the last stroke, the wheel of destiny suddenly lit up. The rapidly spinning wheel of destiny suddenly stopped. In the next moment, the wheel of destiny moved again. However, it was different from before. It was actually spinning in reverse. Following the reversal of the wheel of destiny, the portrait of the woman engraved on the wheel of destiny was disappearing bit by bit. For some reason, even though he didn't know what the outcome would be, 
Zhou Wen felt an inexplicable sense of satisfaction. Chapter 1083 No Engravings The patterns on the Wheel of Destiny decreased bit by bit, and at that moment, the sigh of the king's power suddenly surged out even more crazily. Unlike how it was helping the Wheel of Destiny's rotation previously, the sigh of the king's power was now trying to prevent the Wheel of Destiny from spinning in reverse. The sigh of the king was unimaginably powerful. The Wheel of Destiny, which was rapidly spinning in reverse, immediately slowed down as though the emergency brake had been hit. The Wheel of Destiny didn't completely stop reversing. It was still spinning slowly like a clock second hand. Every tick produced a click. This sound wasn't the tick of the second hand, but the cracking sounds of the Wheel of Destiny as it continued spinning in defiance of the sigh of the king's terrifying power. Crack. Crack. The Wheel of Destiny spun forcefully. After a few rotations, several cracks appeared on its body. If this continued, the entire Wheel of Destiny would probably shatter. Zhou Wen felt his lifeblood boil as though his body was about to be torn apart. He knew very well that if the Wheel of Destiny shattered now, not only would his advancement to the mythical stage fail, but he would also be reduced to the epic stage. It was even possible that his body would be severely injured. It was difficult to say if he would be able to reach the mythical stage again. However, Zhou Wen didn't stop the Wheel of Destiny from circulating. He had long known that his life providence was different from the average person's life providence. The sigh of the king far exceeded the power an ordinary life providence should have. Mythical creatures could be killed with a single thought. The various deities in the temple didn't dare to receive his bow. After all, the creatures in the temples were very likely existences at the terror grade. Just as Moon Goddess had said, his life providence shouldn't have been like this. It was because of some external influence that it had formed such a life providence. Without a doubt, the external force that affected him was the metal plate that recorded the lost immortal sutra. The existence that whispered in Zhou Wen's ear like a female ghost had only appeared after he obtained the metal plate. From then on, it had left a huge impact on Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen originally believed that he had completely resolved this problem after he advanced to the epic stage. However, from the looks of it, this problem hadn't been resolved. It was still affecting him. Otherwise, how could that woman's portrait appear on his Wheel of Destiny? Could the woman drawn on the anchor be the same person as the owner of the Lost Immortal Sutra? Zhou Wen guessed. The Wheel of Destiny was still spinning in reverse, but the sigh of the king was just too powerful. If the Wheel of Destiny continued spinning in reverse, there would only be one outcome. The Wheel of Destiny would definitely shatter. Despite knowing this outcome, Zhou Wen had no intention of stopping it. Perhaps it had something to do with how Zhou Wen had lived alone from an early age. From the moment he could register memories, he had basically lived alone. He had decided what he should and shouldn't do. Even Zhou Lingfeng hadn't forced him to do anything. Now that the sigh of the king's power had forcefully interfered with the formation of his Wheel of Destiny, coupled with Zhou Wen's understanding of the sigh of the king, Zhou Wen firmly supported the Wheel of Destiny's reversal. This was because his personal feelings wouldn't lie. When the Wheel of Destiny reversed, the comfortable feeling made him make a decision. Even if the Wheel of Destiny shattered, wasting the past two years, and even if he had to start over again, he would definitely not compromise. He would not let the sigh of the king control his Wheel of Destiny, and decide how he was to proceed in the future. My path can only be decided by myself. Zhou Wen watched the Wheel of Destiny constantly crack. It wasn't done on impulse, nor would he feel any regret. He was extremely calm. He was still young. As long as he was still alive, he still had the capital to start all over again. If he didn't stay true to himself, was he going to regret it when he was old? Crack. Crack. As though sensing Zhou Wen's beliefs, the Wheel of Destiny spun even more intensely. However, every spin was at the cost of its own destruction. Seeing that the Wheel of Destiny was about to shatter into pieces, the sigh of the king's forceful control of the power on the Wheel of Destiny began to recede. The Wheel of Destiny finally regained its freedom as it spun faster. The woman's portrait was also erased bit by bit. The damaged Wheel of Destiny continued absorbing energy and repairing the damaged wheel. When the last line of the woman's portrait was erased, the Wheel of Destiny had long returned to normal. At that moment, it stopped moving. Zhou Wen originally imagined that the Wheel of Destiny would spin again before condensing a mark that truly belonged to him. However, it didn't happen. After the Wheel of Destiny stopped circulating, the power that erupted caused Zhou Wen's body to undergo a mutation. Zhou Wen clearly felt his stats increase. It was no longer limited by 41 points. I've advanced to the mythical stage? But why isn't there anything on my Wheel of Destiny? Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed as he hurriedly checked his phone. He wanted to take a careful look at his stats to see what abilities the unmarked Wheel of Destiny had. Zhou Wen was connected to the Wheel of Destiny by blood, so he could sense that it had power. However, the power was strange, preventing him from completely comprehending its profundity. He switched on his phone and dripped a drop of blood on it. 
A few notifications immediately popped up on the phone's home screen. Advance to the mythical stage. Bloodline function activated. Advance to the mythical stage. Samsara function activated. Advance to the mythical stage. Birth function activated. Joe was dumbstruck when he saw this. The first two were fine. Although he didn't know what they were for, he would eventually find out in the future. But what the hell is this birth function? Could it be that he couldn't have children before advancing to the mythical stage? Did he need a phone to decide whether he could have children? However, Joe wasn't in the mood to study the new functions of the phone. All he wanted to know was what his wheel of destiny was. Opening the blood-colored avatar stats, the blood-colored avatar's latest information entered Zhou Wen's eyes. Zhou Wen, mythical. Life providence, sigh of the king. Life soul, slaughterer. Wheel of destiny, no engravings, one spin. Strength, 42. Speed, 42. Constitution, 42. Essence energy, 42. Zhou Wen carefully looked at his various stats a few times. It was within his expectations to break through his limits. He still needed to absorb the various stat crystals to raise his strength to the level of a true mythical creature. Slaughterer didn't have the mark of a perfect body, not because it had weakened, but because with Zhou Wen's advancement, his life soul already had the strength of a mythical. The sigh of the king remained the same. It didn't change at all. After preventing the Wheel of Destiny to no avail, there was nothing from it. There were no changes to the various rare stats. The rare stats required him to absorb the stat crystals himself. They wouldn't automatically increase just because he had advanced to the mythical stage. Finally, it was Zhou Wen's Wheel of Destiny. Ignoring what kind of ability no engravings was, just one spin annotation left Zhou Wen alarmed. Zhou Wen had only seen the words, one spin on Demonic Neonate's Wheel of Destiny before, but Demonic Neonate's Wheel of Destiny was called one spin. And on his Wheel of Destiny, one spin seemed to be a unit. Chapter 1084 A Mountain No engravings. Destiny when unengraved has not come to an end. Zhou Wen looked at the annotation of his Wheel of Destiny and was still confused. He still didn't know what his Wheel of Destiny's ability was. Without even looking at where he was, Zhou Wen entered the game, hoping to see what use the Wheel of Destiny had in actual combat. At the same time, he could farm some mythical dimensional crystals and raise his stats. Otherwise, he would be at a disadvantage facing a mythical creature. He entered Deer Terrace Pavilion, where there were the most mythical creatures on the third floor. Although they weren't strong, it was a good place to farm mythical dimensional crystals. He first tried using the chi he had encountered on the way, but it left Zhou Wen puzzled. After the Wheel of Destiny was activated, it immediately began circulating. However, nothing happened. There was no augmentation of attributes, no powerful offensive strength, or any special changes. What's going on? Zhou Wen was extremely depressed. He now suspected that something had happened to his Wheel of Destiny because of the reversal. He hadn't obtained an ability that the Wheel of Destiny should have. He rushed all the way to the underground sea, but the nine demon blood true dragons hadn't respawned. Joan was about to rush past the area when his gaze swept across the sapphire like sky, he couldn't help but be stunned. Approaching the sapphire sky spelled death. After observing it several times, Joan failed to discover the secret within. However, when he looked at the sapphire sky, he realized that there was a massive creature inside. The creature was so huge that it was comparable to a dragon. It could be seen in every corner of the underground sea, but Zhou Wen had never seen such a huge creature before. Have I always been blind in the past? Zhou Wen immediately rejected this thought and became ecstatic. He wasn't blind in the past, so there were only two possibilities why he hadn't seen the massive creature in the sapphire sky. One possibility was that the creature was capable of invisibility. Another possibility was that the creature was at the terror grade, so Zhou Wen couldn't see it. The first possibility wasn't high. If it was invisible, there should have been other methods to sense its existence. However, Zhou Wen had used many methods in the past, but he had failed to discover it. Now, things were clearly abnormal that he could suddenly see it. I can see creatures in their terror form? Zhou Wen's first reaction was to summon demonic neonate and let her enter her terror state. Indeed, I can see it. Zhou Wen looked at demonic neonate and nearly jumped up in joy. In the past, when demonic neonate transformed into her terror form, Zhou Wen had seen nothing but air. Now, Zhou Wen could see her clearly. He realized that demonic neonate's body had indeed changed significantly. However, he hadn't seen her in the past, so he didn't know what demonic neonate looked like after her terror transformation. After demonic neonate transformed into her terror form, the demonic aura on her body was variable. She was like a devil, transforming into all sorts of terrifying shadows, as though she could devour anyone at any moment. On the other hand, demonic neonate didn't change much herself. She was still wearing an ink purple armor. She held the demonic sword in her arms, and a bell hung at her waist. 
she stood there coldly. Joe and stopped circulating the Wheel of Destiny. Demonic Neonate immediately vanished from his eyes, as though she had turned invisible. Could it be that the power of my Wheel of Destiny allows me to see creatures that have turned into their terror form? This seems a little weak. But it can't really be considered weak either. Jowen felt that this ability wasn't bad. There were two key reasons why the Terror Grade was powerful. One was that only the power of the Terror Grade could injure a Terror Grade. Therefore, no matter how strong a Mythical Grade was, it was almost impossible to defeat the Terror Grade. Even if the stats between both parties weren't too different, the Terror Grade was invincible among Mythical creatures. This wasn't something that couldn't be resolved. Jowen had the Ice Dragon King's Terror item. By using it as a weapon, he could injure Terror Grade creatures. This had been confirmed when used on Ninth Arch. The other terrifying thing about the Terror Grade was that most people couldn't see them. The unknown would deepen one's fear, making it impossible for ordinary creatures to fight a Terror Grade creature. They could only be tortured to death. However, it wasn't absolute. For example, the Terror Transformation of the Jade Rabbit didn't make it invisible to others. Instead, it just gigantified. However, this type of Terror Grade creature was relatively rare. Most terror grade creatures had terror forms that couldn't be seen. Now Zhou Wen could see terror grade creatures and had something that could injure terror grade creatures. These two points had greatly increased his strength. In the future, when he faced terror grade creatures again, he wouldn't be at such a disadvantage. Now that I think about it, my wheel of destiny seems rather useful. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and realized that it was indeed very useful. However, he still felt that it didn't have all the abilities of knowing gravings. Zhou Wen did some more experiments but he didn't discover any other abilities. Knowing that such matters couldn't be rushed, Jowen decided to cross the underground sea and let demonic neonate enter Deer Terrace Pavilion. He killed the fake fairies and immortals and cleared the three-story building. Finally, a 59-valued strength crystal and 62-valued essence energy crystal dropped. He directly refined and absorbed them, and the two stats instantly increased. Jowen didn't continue farming because he didn't know where he was. The teleportation ability of Glimmer was a long-distance interstellar teleportation. It could only teleport to a designated planet, but its precision was insufficient. Now that he was in a desert, Jowen had no idea where he was. In the past, with Glimmer and New Era, it wasn't difficult to get his bearings. However, Jowen had shattered all his life providences and life souls, so he naturally didn't have his prior abilities. He tried switching essence energy arts and realized that there was no reaction. It was as though he had never cultivated them before. Are all the essence energy arts I took so long to cultivate crippled just like that? Joe Wynn shook his head slightly. Forget it. I need to figure out where I am first. Joe Wynn tried his best to expand Truth Listener's range to figure out where he was, but all Truth Listener could hear was a desert. Only in the distance in front of Joe, one was a mountain. The mountain was somewhat strange. In the endless desert, there wasn't a single cactus or water source, but the mountain was filled with greenery and vitality. Joe Wynn sized it up for a while and didn't walk towards the mountain. Instead, he summoned the Earth Elemental Beast, and got it to tunnel in the opposite direction. There was definitely something amiss. Although Zhou Wen was powerful, he didn't dare barge into mysterious places without the protection of the heaven-opening scripture of the Highest Elder. However, when the Earth Elemental Beast tunneled hundreds of kilometers away, Zhou Wen was alarmed to discover that he had already arrived at the foot of the mountain. Chapter 1085 Paradise Mountain Zhou Wen looked up, and saw a monument standing in front of the mountain. On it were the words, Paradise Mountain. Zhou Wen immediately knew where he was. Back when he followed Lu Yun to the Taklamakan Desert, Lu Yun had once told him that there were four extremely terrifying dimensional zones in the desert, Death Valley, Netherworld City, the Endless Sea of Stars, and Paradise Mountain. Zhou Wen had already been to Netherworld City and the Endless Sea of Stars. He had heard of Paradise Mountain, but he never expected to see it when he teleported back. Since he couldn't leave, Zhou Wen decided not to. He released Ice Maiden and Jade Rabbit and carried Demonic Neonate as he carefully sized up the Paradise Mountain Stone Monument. Beneath the stone monument was a tiny palm symbol. It's a free dungeon. It's a waste not to take it. Joe Wen took out his phone and snapped a picture of the tiny palm symbol. He immediately entered the download screen. According to Lu Yun, no one who enters Paradise Mountain can come out alive. I wonder what's so special about this mountain. Now that there's no heaven opening scripture of the highest elder, it's not easy to barge in. It's best I wait until the game is downloaded before exploring in-game. Just as Zhou Wen was thinking, he heard a sweet voice coming from Paradise Mountain. Looking up, he saw a group of bikini beauties laughing and playing. Their beautiful legs made him dizzy. Zhou Wen sat outside the mountain and watched the beauties play. His body seemed to have an uncontrollable urge to go over. Thankfully, his will was firm. 
With a thought, he made the urge disappear. He circulated the Wheel of Destiny and looked at the beauties. His pupils immediately constricted. They weren't beauties at all. They were just huge, ugly, and evil gray rats. What was even stranger was that the gray rats stood like humans. They wore gray cloaks and their eyes swirled with an evil light. Upon seeing this scene, Zhou Wen summoned the bronze sparrow sword. The flaming blade tore out of its scabbard and flew into Paradise Mountain, instantly killing a few evil gray robed rats. This stirred up the rat's nest. A large number of gray robed rats crawled out of the mountain forest of Paradise Mountain. Their eyes lit up as they formed a massive psyche force field. The more gray robed rats there were, the stronger the psyche force field. Zhou Wen immediately understood why no one returned from Paradise Mountain alive. These gray robed rats were good at psyche attacks. Furthermore, they could gather their psyche powers together. It was similar to the combined attack of the musical note sprites. However, these gray robed rats were even more terrifying. Psyche attacks were difficult to defend against, and these were all at the epic stage. Furthermore, there were many of them. Even mythical creatures would easily be lost in their minds if they suffered their psyche attacks. In the beginning, the bronze sparrow sword wasn't affected. It continued slaughtering the gray robed rats, igniting flames everywhere on Paradise Mountain. However, when 13 red clothed rats appeared on Paradise Mountain, the bronze sparrow sword was also affected. Not only did it stop killing, but it also turned to attack Zhou Wen. Holy SH asterisk T, 13 mythical rats. This Paradise Mountain is a force to be reckoned with. Don't tell me there are still terror grade existences. Zhou Wen felt a huge mental pressure as he thought to himself. However, his willpower was extremely tenacious to begin with. Now that he had the Wheel of Destiny, he could see the true bodies of the rats. No matter what, he wouldn't be fooled. He extended his hand and grabbed the bronze sparrow sword that was in a state of betrayal. However, the rat's psyche strength was quite powerful. Countless epic gray robed rats and the 13 red robed rats exerted their strength together. Even the terror gray jade rabbit was affected. Jade rabbit's eyes were replaced with red hearts as it slowly walked towards Paradise Mountain. Wake it up! Zhou Wen felt embarrassed for Jade Rabbit. It was at the Terra Grade after all, but it had been bewitched by a mischief of rats. Ice Maiden summoned a huge block of ice and smashed it onto Jade Rabbit's head. The ice shattered into pieces before Jade Rabbit woke up. Although the Jade Rabbit is a pure strength type companion beast, and its mental strength isn't its specialty, it's still at the Terra Grade. To be able to affect it, these rat psyche skills are no trifling matter. Zhou Wen saw that Ice Maiden seemed to have the ability to restrain such psyche skills, so he got her to ascend Paradise Mountain and kill the rats first. Ice Maiden wasn't in the mood to play with these rats. After her terror transformation, an ice explosion blasted most of the gray-robed rats into ice shards. About eight of the thirteen red-robed rats died. A few were also injured. When Zhou Wen saw the dimensional crystals and companion eggs on the ground, he hurriedly summoned a group of musical note sprites and got them to pick up the dimensional crystals and companion eggs. Seeing that the remaining red robed rats were about to escape, Ice Maiden waved her hand. Cold air surged out and froze them into ice sculptures. When Ice Maiden saw that the rats were dead and was about to return, she suddenly heard an ear-piercing shriek coming from the top of Paradise Mountain. Squeak! The voice was extremely sharp. Ice Maiden's expression changed slightly when she heard the voice. Icy light erupted from her body as if she was resisting some terrifying power. The musical note sprites that Zhou Wen had sent into Paradise Mountain seemed to have lost their souls as they floated towards the mountaintop. Zhou Wen stood outside Paradise Mountain and felt his mind go adrift. He almost walked into Paradise Mountain. Thankfully, his willpower was too strong. He was only slightly dazed before he immediately recovered. The Jade Rabbit fell into a trance again as Zhou Wen stored it into the Chaos Bead. Zhou Wen originally imagined that he couldn't use the Chaos Bead without the First Order of Chaos but he realized that his essence energy could still activate the chaos bead without any problems. This made Zhou Wen suspect that it wasn't that the essence energy arts were unusable. They were, for some reason, temporarily unusable. Ice Maiden's eyes narrowed as she charged toward the top of Paradise Mountain. Soon, a terrifying collision sounded. Seeing that there weren't many rats left on Paradise Mountain, Zhou Wen decided to walk in himself. He planned on picking up the dimensional crystals and companion eggs. He especially wanted the dimensional crystals. Zhou Wen happened to need to build up his stats. The 13 red road rats had dropped 5 stack crystals and a companion egg. It was perfect. Even a mythical creature couldn't withstand the psyche influence from the mountaintop, but Zhou Wen could still maintain self-control. After walking into Paradise Mountain, he picked up the stack crystals and absorbed them without any hesitation, allowing his stats to rapidly increase. Just as Zhou Wen picked up the companion egg, he saw a stream of light slash down from the mountaintop. 
It was an ancient sword. If Zhou Wen hadn't been able to see the power of the Terra Grade, he probably would have died. He would have been slain by the ancient sword. Chapter 1086 Inscription Clang. The demonic sword automatically unsheathed itself and blocked the ancient sword. To Zhou Wen's surprise, the demonic sword failed to gain the upper hand in the clash with the ancient sword. It looked like they were evenly matched. One had to know that not only was the demonic Neonate terrifying, but it also had Grim Demon's power inside. Grim Demon was already extremely powerful at the Terra Grade. With such an augmentation, it only managed to fight the ancient sword to a draw. The ancient sword's strength was shocking. Out of Death Alley, Netherworld City, the Endless Sea of Stars, and Paradise Mountain, I've already entered Netherworld City and the Endless Sea of Stars. Netherworld City has some extreme horror in it. It's impossible to see the real Netherworld City unless all the punishments are experienced. The Endless Sea of Stars also has terrifying existences like the Planet Devourer. Now, there's actually such a powerful creature in Paradise Mountain. As it fights Ice Maiden, it can also use an ancient sword to fight the demonic sword. The four mysterious dimensional zones in the desert really aren't simple. Jowen stood there watching the battle in his galaxy shell dragon armor. The shockwave from the battle between the two swords hit Zhou Wen, causing him to retreat uncontrollably. His feet left two deep grooves in the ground. Amidst this impact, Zhou Wen discovered a strange phenomenon. Under the impact of the terrifying sword beam, Zhou Wen realized that marks had appeared on his Wheel of Destiny. Zhou Wen originally thought that the Wheel of Destiny had been injured by a terror great power, or that the injuries from reversing the Wheel of Destiny hadn't completely healed. He believed that these cracks were a result of the powerful collision. However, he soon realized that this wasn't the case. This was because Zhou Wen could sense sword intent amidst the cracks that gradually appeared. It was a familiar yet unfamiliar sword intent. 3,000 sword intents. Zhou Wen was pleasantly surprised. The sword intent was clearly the 3,000 sword intents, but it was different from his 3,000 sword intents. It was even more powerful and terrifying. It was a true mythical sword intent. The power of the sword pill is still around. Then, are the other life providences and life soul powers also around? Zhou Wen looked at the cracks on the Wheel of Destiny and realized that the cracks were swords. All the swords pointed out and condensed into the shape of the sword pill. When the sword pill had completely formed on the Wheel of Destiny, Zhou Wen immediately felt an uncontrollable terrifying sword intent erupt from the Wheel of Destiny. The sword intent was like an emperor ruling over the world. At the same time, a powerful sword aura erupted from the life wheel. The ancient sword seemed to be affected by Zhou Wen's sword intent as it abandoned the demonic sword. With a resplendent and terrifying sword aura, it streaked across the sky and instantly arrived in front of Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen felt the sword aura in his body fill up, nearly causing his body to explode. He couldn't help but extend his hand and use his index and middle fingers as swords to stab out. Boom! A sword beam tore out of his finger and condensed into the sword pill that collided straight on with the ancient sword. The sword pill was shattered by the ancient sword, but the ancient sword was also deflected by the sword pill's force. It deviated from its original trajectory and flew past Zhou Wen's cheek. Zhou Wen was pleasantly surprised. The sword pill and the Qi refinement cultivator's abilities still existed. However, the way they existed was different from before. They were even stronger. If they were a simulation in the past, they had now fused into Zhou Wen's body and become an instinct, not a simulated skill. Before Zhou Wen could rejoice, he suddenly realized that the sword pill inscriptions on the Wheel of Destiny were rapidly disappearing. Soon, they vanished preventing Zhou Wen from using its power. Without the lure of the sword intent, the ancient sword was no longer interested in Zhou Wen. After being caught up by the demonic sword, it continued fighting. What's going on? The Wheel of Destiny had clearly engraved the sword pill and obtained the unique skill of the Wheel of Destiny. Why is it gone again? Zhou Wen focused and calmed his mind as he recalled his insights from cultivating the Qi refinement art and his understanding of sword pill. He engraved his Wheel of Destiny with his mind. Indeed, as his thoughts and large amounts of essence energy surged in, patterns appeared on the Wheel of Destiny again. Finally, the engravings transformed into the shape of the sword pill. However, this sword pill's appearance was somewhat different from before. This was a sword pill that Zhou Wen had drawn according to his understanding, making it somewhat different from before. Drawing the sword pill consumed a large amount of Zhou Wen's essence energy, but with Slaughterer's help, the essence energy expenditure wasn't a problem. Once the sword pill was formed, the supercilia sword intent appeared and attracted the ancient sword's attention again. Seeing the ancient sword slash at him again, Zhou Wen stabbed out with the sword pill once more. Boom! This time, Zhou Wen was in an even worse state. He was sent flying as he rolled down Paradise Mountain like a ball. However, sword pill still managed to withstand the ancient sword strike. 
Despite it shattering, Zhou Wen wasn't injured. Just as Zhou Wen had expected, the moment the sword pill shattered, the marks on the Wheel of Destiny vanished. My Wheel of Destiny is called No Engravings. It's very difficult to leave a mark on it. Even if it's engraved, it's only temporary and can't exist for long. In other words, even with the Wheel of Destiny's ability, it's only temporary. Every time I use one, I have to engrave it myself. However, in that case, since I can engrave Sword Pill, can I also engrave other life souls? Zhou Wen felt mixed emotions. Although he had finally discovered a way to use the Wheel of Destiny, this method was a little strange. Every time he used it, he had to engrave it himself. If it was a sudden battle, how would he have the time? However, Zhou Wen soon thought of something that made him so excited that he immediately wanted to verify it. In the past, he couldn't circulate two essence energy arts at the same time, so he couldn't use two life providences and two life souls at the same time. But now, it was different. If the abilities of those essence energy arts had already become his instinct, could he carve out two life will patterns at the same time and use two or more abilities? Without any hesitation, Zhou Wen immediately used his mind to draw on the Wheel of Destiny again. This time, he wasn't drawing the sword pill, but primordial human sovereign. He wanted to see if he could draw another life wheel symbol, or if he could only draw a sword pill. The outcome delighted Zhou Wen greatly. As he inscribed his understanding and insights of the ancient sovereign sutra, he indeed drew a pattern that resembled the primordial human sovereign on the wheel of destiny. The reason it was only a resemblance was because the life wheel symbol wasn't the primordial human sovereign from before, but an upgraded version. It was a true mythical power. As the ancient sovereign symbols appeared on the wheel of destiny, a shadow appeared in front of Zhou Wen. Without a doubt, it was the upgraded primordial human sovereign. Chapter 1087 Can't Last Long Enough Zhou Wen suppressed the excitement in his heart and continued carving on the blank spot on the Wheel of Destiny. This time, he was carving the sword pill. The sword pill was also engraved on the Wheel of Destiny bit by bit. As for the ancient sovereign symbol on the other side, it didn't disappear. When the sword pill symbol was completed, the sword pill tore out of his fingers again. Zhou Wen nearly moaned in bliss. Looking at the coexisting sword pill and ancient sovereign, Zhou Wen felt that Lady Luck hadn't abandoned him. Thank you, Holy Mother, Jade Emperor, God of Fortune. Just as Zhou Wen was feeling excited, the ancient sovereign shadow suddenly vanished. It turned out that the ancient sovereign symbol on the Wheel of Destiny was disappearing. It was no longer complete. Only then did Zhou Wen gloomily realize that even if he didn't fight, the marks on the Wheel of Destiny would quickly vanish. The name no engraving sure is apartment. I really can't engrave anything on it. Zhou Wen was somewhat helpless. Although he gained the possibility of using multiple abilities at the same time, the Wheel of Destiny's characteristics were too odd, making things a little troublesome. Is there any way to permanently preserve the engravings? Zhou Wen felt that he should spend some time studying it in the future. Even if it only lasted a little longer, it would be a huge improvement for him. Grim Demon fought the Ancient Sword and Ice Maiden fought the unknown creature on the mountaintop, but Zhou Wen was having fun drawing at the foot of the mountain. After various tests, Zhou Wen confirmed that he could draw the eight life souls. Furthermore, as long as his insights were different, what he drew would be different every time. The deeper Zhou Wen's insights were, the stronger the Wheel of Destiny patterns he drew, and the longer they could stay on. They would be stronger as well. The only thing Zhou Wen couldn't draw was the marks that the Lost Immortal Sutra should have. This was because he knew the least about it. The Lost Immortal Sutra didn't need him to comprehend it or cultivate it. It would automatically circulate. As long as his stats reached a certain level, he could directly advance. It was clearly the foundation of Zhou Wen's essence energy art, but the one he knew the least about. If I can carve the lost immortal sutra on the Wheel of Destiny one day, will those marks disappear again? A thought flashed through Zhou Wen's mind. There was no answer, but Zhou Wen had found a direction to make himself stronger. The deeper his understanding of essence energy arts, the longer the marks left on the Wheel of Destiny would last. Perhaps one day, when he was strong enough, the marks would exist forever. After figuring out the situation, Zhou Wen placed his attention on the battle on Paradise Mountain. The demonic sword and ancient sword were still engaged in battle, with no victor determined. On the mountaintop, Ice Maiden seemed to be gradually falling into a disadvantage. Zhou Wen circulated the Wheel of Destiny and carved out the heaven-opening scripture before flying to a spot closer to the mountaintop. Soon, Zhou Wen saw the creature that was fighting Ice Maiden. It was also a rat man, but the rat man looked more like a human than the gray-robed and red-robed rats. It was dressed in a white suit with golden frame glasses on its face, and a white top hat decorated with black lines on its head. It looked very strange. What the hell is this? Zhou Wen was alarmed. This was the first time he had seen such a dimensional creature. What was even stranger was that not only did the Ratman possess powerful psyche skills, 
but its movement technique was also extremely strange. It was as fleeting as smoke. In its hand was a gun. It was in the shape of a revolver. It looked a little like a Smith and Wesson 500, but it was bigger and had a thicker barrel. Most of the gun was silver white metal in color, and a small portion had gray patterns. It had an indescribable beauty. Ice Maiden could withstand the Ratman's psyche attacks, but the revolver caused her a lot of trouble. She seemed to be afraid of the bullets in the gun and didn't dare to be hit by them. She would dodge every time, putting her at a disadvantage. It looked like it was going to be very difficult for her to persist. Joe couldn't tell what kind of power was in the bullet. Although he could tell that it was at the terror grade, the bullet was too fast. His vision couldn't keep up. Ice Maiden, come back! As Joe spoke, he summoned Banana Fairy. At the same time, he quickly retreated and left the Paradise Mountain area. Firstly, the heaven-opening scripture of the Highest Elder had already vanished from his life wheel. Secondly, Banana Fairy's attacks didn't differentiate between friend and foe. It would be a hindrance if he stayed there. Ice Maiden knew how powerful Banana Fairy was. Even Grim Demon was left in a tragic state from her winds. She wouldn't fare better. The strange rat man didn't know how powerful Banana Fairy was. When it saw a beautiful fairy floating over with a banana leaf, it raised the revolver and shot Banana Fairy three times. Banana Fairy pouted and blew out a gust of supreme in wind. Just like the bullets in the Matrix, the three bullets suddenly slowed down. Joe finally saw them clearly. The bullet head looked like it was made of crystal, but its appearance was somewhat strange. It was like a miniature ghost, looking extremely sinister. Not only did the three bullets slow down, but frost even formed on them. In the blink of an eye, they were thrown back in the wind. The strange-looking rat man was also blown away. As there were no obstructions nearby, the rat man and bullets were sent flying. They flew into the distance with the yellow sand and quickly vanished. I wonder if the rat man is dead. Zhou Wen watched as it was blown away. He didn't even know where to pick up the dimensional crystal if there was one. Even if it really was dead, the dimensional crystal might have already been taken away by other creatures by the time he rushed over. Clang! The ancient sword that was fighting the demonic sword suddenly lost control and fell from the sky, landing on the ground. Furthermore, it was no longer in its terror form. Eh, this sword isn't a dimensional creature? Zhou would immediately realize that there was something wrong with the ancient sword. If the ancient sword was a dimensional creature, being able to fight the demonic sword for so long was a little shocking, but it was still acceptable. However, if it was only a weapon that was controlled by the Ratman, it would be abnormal for it to fight the demonic sword for so long. After all, the Ratman didn't seem to be that strong. Joe and walked closer and looked at the ancient sword that had fallen to the ground. He hadn't looked at it carefully before, but now that he was carefully sizing it up, he realized that it was indeed somewhat odd. It looked like it wasn't made of gold, jade, iron, or steel. Furthermore, it didn't seem to have a sharp edge. It looked like it was sheathed in a scabbard, but there was no opening to the scabbard. It looked like it was one. The ancient sword remained motionless on the ground. He was certain that the Ratman had been controlling it previously. Now, he didn't know if the Ratman was too far away from it or if it was already dead. In any case, the sword was no longer under its control. Zhou Wen carefully sized up the ancient sword and saw that there were words engraved on the hilt. When he looked at it, his eyes widened as his pupils constricted like needles. Chapter 1088 Substitute Fighter On the hilt of the sword, the words, Immortal Culling, were engraved. Is this thing for real? Zhou Wen widened his eyes as he looked at the ancient sword. He found it unbelievable that it was the real Immortal Culling sword. If one were to look at the two words, Immortal Culling, alone, they weren't anything impressive. They were even a little tacky. However, if one added the word, sword, behind the two words, it would be a little terrifying. If there were three swords beside this sword, Immortal Vanquishing, Immortal Entrapment, and Immortal Peril, it would be even more terrifying. The legendary four swords of Immortal Vanquishing were a terrifying existence that had truly killed all immortals and fiends. They were the most powerful Dharma treasure of the legendary sect master. It was difficult to describe how powerful the four swords were. In comparison, an existence like the nine-tailed fox in Chess Mountain was no different from a chicken waiting to be slaughtered in front of the real immortal culling sword. Any one of the powerful existences that the four swords had killed could defeat the nine-tailed fox. Ignoring the four swords, just any one of them would probably make Joe when invincible on Earth if he could completely master them. Of course, the premise was that this sword was really the immortal culling sword. This ancient sword might only share the same name as the legendary one. Joe Wen didn't dare take the risk. He summoned Tyrant Behemoth and got it to pick up the sword. Immortal Culling Sword didn't react at all. Tyrant Behemoth brandished it twice, but it didn't discover any special energy fluctuations. It didn't have the same might as before. 
How did that Ratman control it? With a thought, Zhou Wen summoned the Earth Elemental Beast and chased after the Ratman with Immortal Culling Sword. Regardless of whether this sword was the real Immortal Culling Sword or not, it possessed rather powerful strength. If he could figure out how to control it, it would be of great help. Banana Fairy's fin had blown the Ratman far away. Zhou Wen followed the huge trail left by the wind and ran for hundreds of kilometers before he finally lost track of the trail. However, he didn't see the strange Ratman either. It's not dead? Zhou Wen used Truth Listener to search the vicinity, but he didn't find any traces of the Ratman. He wanted to return to Paradise Mountain. However, after walking for a long time, he couldn't even see Paradise Mountain. It was as if it had vanished into thin air. Zhou Wen knew that it would probably be very difficult to find Paradise Mountain again. All he could do was switch on his phone. He had successfully downloaded the Paradise Mountain dungeon and entered it in-game. There were many gray-robed rats in-game, so Zhou Wen had a great time killing them. Soon, 13 red-robed rats appeared. Zhou Wen wasn't in the mood to waste time with them. He got demonic neonate to release the demonic sword and killed them. A few dimensional crystals dropped. After Zhou Wen absorbed the dimensional crystals, his strength reached 67, his speed reached 71, his constitution reached 54, and his essence energy reached 70. However, Zhou Wen's mind was still on the strange rat man. Without carefully looking at his stats, he led demonic neonate up the mountain. What puzzled Zhou Wen was that he didn't see the strange rat man atop Paradise Mountain. There was a hole at the top of the mountain. It was the size of a bowl, but when he looked inside, it was bottomless, as though there was no end. Zhou Wen summoned the Earth Elemental Beast to go down, but after crawling for a long time, it failed to reach the bottom. It was as though there was no bottom. How strange. What's going on? Zhou Wen knew that there was definitely something wrong with the hole. Otherwise, with the Earth Elemental Beast's speed, it would have probably crawled to the other side of Earth in half a day. He thought of all sorts of solutions, and even got Banana Fairy to inject wind in. However, the terrifying supreme in wind vanished without a trace. He had no idea how deep the hole was. Zhou Wen had no choice but to take the Immortal Culling Sword with him. He planned on returning to Luoyang first. Along the way, Zhou Wen grinded all sorts of mythical creatures in game. He planned on raising his stats. After all, having a powerful body was the foundation. He would have an advantage in battle. On the cube's arena, a white beam descended from the sky. In the white beam was a faint shadow. After the light descended, it landed on Zhou Yu's body and vanished in a flash. What was that? I didn't see it clearly. Is it a companion beast summoned by Zhou Yue? Some kind of skill? Everyone discussed spiritedly. They were momentarily unsure what it was. Zhong Zia looked at Zhou Yue and frowned. Zhou Yue's pupils turned white. Although nothing else had changed, his aura was clearly different. Who are you? Zhong Zia asked Zhou Yue. You aren't worthy of knowing my name. Zhou Yue replied indifferently as he looked at Zhong Zia. With that said, most people understood what was going on. Holy SH asterisk T, that works. Aren't those fellows from the dimension too shameless? They aren't satisfied with a tag team battle and are now using substitutes? How F asterisk King disgusting. Although I don't like people like ya, I hate shameless people even more. Yeah, kill him. The Federation was in a frenzy. Even the devils overseas didn't look happy. They really don't treat us humans as people. Yusuji now muttered to herself with a cold expression. If she could enter the arena now, she would help him regardless of which faction you belong to. Many people had the same thoughts as Yusuji now, but humans weren't dimensional creatures. No one could break the rules of the cube. However, Zhong Zia didn't show any emotions. He just said calmly, All right. Anyway, I don't have the habit of remembering the names of losers. Ignorance is also a form of bliss. Cherish your last moments of happiness. Jiu Yue wasn't angry as he slowly raised his palm. There was no shocking glow on his palm. With a casual grab, Zhong Zia, who was thousands of meters away, somehow appeared in front of him and was grabbed by the neck. It felt as if the space between them had vanished. Crack. Yuz's neck snapped as his head fell. However, Yuz's decapitated body exploded into a white fog, turning into a beheaded puppet that fell to the ground. The spectators broke out into a cold sweat before feeling relieved. Now, most humans hoped that Ya could win. Jiu Yue seemed to have expected this. He grabbed again and Ya, who had just reappeared, appeared in front of him again. The space between the two of them vanished just like that. Clang. This time, it was Ya's true body. He raised Primordial Immortal Sword and blocked Jiu Yue's palm, but Jiu Yue's palm grabbed the sword along with his neck, lifting them up together. Chapter 1089 The Fool Who Has Lived a Little Longer 1. Zhong Zia's body suddenly turned into white mist and escaped from Jiu Yue's hand. Following that, the two of them entered their terror forms. 
The average human couldn't see their figures, so they didn't know how the battle was proceeding. However, from the short battle just now, Yu was clearly at a disadvantage. Jiyou's spatial powers left a deep impression in the minds of people. Furthermore, the dimensional creature attached to Jiyou had a powerful aura. It made people feel that Zhong Zia wasn't as powerful as before. It was like a child fighting an adult. Zhou Wen had already walked out of the desert and arrived in a city that had been abandoned by humans. When he passed by the cube, he happened to see the scene and stopped to watch the battle. Others couldn't see the Terra Great battle, but when Zhou Wen's Wheel of Destiny moved, he immediately saw it clearly. Zhou Wen was somewhat worried. Zhong Zia's situation wasn't good. As their power attributes weren't completely the same, there was no way to directly compare the power between the two. However, from the levels, Zhou Yue didn't surpass the Terra Grade. It was still at the Terra Grade. However, his usage of spatial powers and his understanding of them had reached a terrifying level. It was far from what the original Zhou Yue could compare with. Zhong Zia was far inferior. Those fellows from the dimension are really shameless. They actually let a calamity great creature control Zhou Yue's body and power. Although their power levels are the same, his usage and realm are on a much higher level. The guardian that Zhong Zia fused with clearly has some spatial powers. His opponent is also a spatial type, but his opponent's understanding is deeper than his. His opponent knows Zhong Zia's various abilities and knows how to deal with him, but Zhong Zia knows very little about Zhou Yue's abilities. The difference in information will result in a huge disadvantage. Zhou Wen could tell how Long Zia was in danger. Furthermore, Zhong Zia's previous battles had exposed too many of his abilities, allowing his opponent to understand him better. Zhong Zia's every move seemed to be within Zhou Yue's expectations. The battle was extremely difficult, and the injuries on his body increased. If not for his various escape techniques and clone abilities, he would have been killed by Zhou Yue long before now. However, the escape technique had its limits. It was impossible for him to have an inexhaustible supply of clones. Zhou Wen could tell that Zhong Zia's situation was very bad. Just as Zhong Zia escaped, he suffered another heavy blow. The terrifying spatial power tore through his body. Boom! Zhong Zia's body slammed into the arena and was no longer in his terror form. His white robe was already dyed red with blood. The wound on his chest almost extended across his entire chest. He held the hilt of the sword with his blood-stained hand and supported his body. He could barely stand as his body swayed. His wounds were still bleeding. He looked like he was in a bad situation. This is unfair! A young girl clenched her fists and shouted angrily. There were many people who had the same thoughts as her, but there was nothing they could do. Even if they knew that it was unfair, they were powerless to change anything. There was no fairness in this world. Zhou Yue also dispelled his terror form. He looked at Zhong Zia, who was covered in blood, and said, You were lucky not to die from this strike. You actually didn't take the opportunity to quit. You really have a death wish. With that said, Zhou Yue prepared to attack and kill Zhong Zia. You're at the Calamity Grade? Zhong Zia asked as he held the hilt of his sword with both hands to support his body so that he wouldn't collapse. At least you aren't ignorant. Zhou Yue answered. The Calamity Grade is indeed very strong. Zhong Zia continued. That's an unimaginable level for you humans. It's also a power that you can't understand. In my eyes, you are no different from an ant. Therefore, don't try to make an enemy of us. That will only bring about a calamity for you humans. Zhou Yue said matter-of-factly. What a pity. Zhong Zia suddenly sighed. What's the pity? Zhou Yue asked with a frown. Unfortunately, you made a mistake. Zhong Zia said. Oh, what mistake? Zhou Yue looked at Zhong Zia with interest. To him, Zhong Zia was like a joke. You shouldn't have come here. Zhong Zia said seriously. Why shouldn't I be here? Zhou Yue continued asking. Killing you at this level is nothing. I want to kill you at the Calamity Grade. Therefore, you shouldn't have come here. Zhong Zia was still very serious showing no intention of joking. However, Zhou Yue laughed as though he had heard an extremely funny joke. Do you think that you have a chance of killing me just because we are both at the Terra Grade? How ignorant are you to have such thoughts? Even if our powers are about the same, our levels and understandings are different. Our actual combat ability is worlds apart. I only need to move my fingers to kill you. It's useless even if you want to self-destruct. You can't injure me. Zhou Yue's words had a defeating effect, but no one could refute him. Yu was considered almost the best among humans, but in front of the dimensional creature that possessed Zhou Yue, he was suppressed to the point of being unable to resist. Everyone fell silent. They had nowhere to vent their anger. Yu was the one being humiliated on stage, but Zhou Yue's words were also a form of contempt for the entire human race. However, Zhong Zia didn't reveal any special emotions. He looked at Zhou Yue and said, That's right. Your realm is very high, and your understanding of power 
and the laws is far above mine. Unfortunately, you don't understand humans. Why should I understand humans? Jiu Yue was no longer in the mood to continue talking to Zhong Zia. He raised his hand and grabbed him. The space between the two vanished without a trace. Zhong Zia appeared in front of him, as though he had offered his neck into his hand. Zhong Zia, who had his neck clasped by Jiu Yue, gradually had a burning look in his eyes. His eyes turned red as he continued. If you understand humans, you should know that humans are a species that constantly make mistakes and learn. People like you who have a lifespan of 10,000 years, and can even live forever wouldn't understand how good humans are at learning given their lifespans only last decades. With that said, Zhong Zia's aura suddenly turned domineering. Terrifying essence energy erupted like a volcano, blasting away Jiu Yue's hand. Unlike you, I wasn't born 10,000 years ago. 10,000 years later, you stand before me like a giant. Zhong Zia's aura became more and more terrifying. He had already entered his terror form and vanished from everyone's sight. However, his crazy voice still echoed. Everything that has been given to you over the past 10,000 years is just a moment of grandeur. The real you is just a fool who has lived a little longer. Chapter 1090 Indeed a Fool These words were extremely arrogant, but the humans watching felt zeal and ardor pump through their veins. Well said. Nice tirade. Xiao Luchuan couldn't help but praise. He's just a fool who has lived a little longer. Ha ha, what an interesting fellow. Zhang Chunqiu laughed until his tears were about to fall. I suddenly feel that it's not bad to have such a friend. Dugugu, who had always abided by the mantra silence is golden, suddenly said. What a pity. He said that he no longer makes friends. Zhang Chunqiu said. I'll treat him as a friend. What does his willingness to make friends have to do with me? Dugugu said expressionlessly. That's true. Zhang Chunqiu realized that he couldn't refute Dugugu. That's totally right. I also want to shamelessly acknowledge such an interesting person as a friend. Xiao Luchuan said with a smile. As for Zhou Yue, he was extremely furious. Instantly, he entered his terror form and wanted Zhong Zia dead once and for all. Zhou Wen was feeling extremely uneasy. Zhong Zia was severely injured, and those injuries were as genuine as can be. It would be too dangerous if he continued fighting. However, Zhong Zia had no intention of giving up on the battle. He continued battling Zhou Yue. Yet, although Zhou Yue still had the advantage, he wasn't able to completely suppress Zhong Zia like before. Zhong Zia's combat strength was constantly improving. No, it shouldn't be said that it was his combat strength. His power hadn't become stronger, but his understanding and realm of power had become stronger. He was growing at an unbelievable speed. No! Impossible! Zhou Yue almost couldn't believe that such a thing would happen. In such a short period of time, Zhong Zia seemed to have completely understood and absorbed the various abilities and realms he had previously displayed. The methods he had used previously were no longer effective against Zhong Zia. Zhou Yue had to use new abilities, or have a higher understanding of nomological power to continue suppressing Zhong Zia. However, once he used it, it was useless to use the same method again against Zhong Zia. This was because Zhong Zia already understood the power and realm. They were both spatial type, and at the terror grade. The advantage that Zhou Yue had was his realm and superior understanding. Now, this advantage was rapidly being eroded. Zhou Yue's expression finally changed. Now, he just wanted to kill Zhong Zia quickly. He did his best and pushed Zhong Zia's strength to the limits, leaving wounds on his body. However, those wounds weren't fatal. Furthermore, the chances of him injuring Zhong Zia decreased. Zhong Zia's pupils had already turned into a strange red color. They were blood red, evil and crazy. It made Zhou Yue panic. You shouldn't have come. Zhong Zia was grabbed in front of Zhou Yue, but at that moment, Zhou Yue didn't feel any joy from succeeding. Instead, he felt that something was amiss. Crack. Zhong Zia's neck was snapped by Zhou Yue again, but his beheaded body turned into a puppet. Zhou Yue's pupils constricted. He had actually failed to tell that it was Zhong Zia's clone. Realizing that something was amiss, he wanted to use space to teleport away, but he realized that Zhong Zia was already behind him. The blood-stained lips were almost touching his ear. I'll chop off your head. Bam. Zhou Yue felt a huge force behind him as his body involuntarily flew forward. Zhou Yue wanted to extend the distance, but he suddenly realized that his body seemed to be locked in place. He couldn't extend the space any further. Furthermore, his body had been kicked out from his terror state. He felt that he had something on his back, but he couldn't see it. It was a strange blood color curse pattern that was imprinted on his back. It emitted an evil aura. Zhou Yue didn't have the luxury of time to look at what it was because Zhong Zia had appeared behind him. He held Primordial Immortal Sword with both hands and slashed at his neck at an unbelievable speed. As Jiu Yue had been kicked out of his terror form, all the spectators could see the scene. 
Boom! A beam of light flew out of Julia's body. Although there was still a chance for him to fight to the death, the dimensional creature didn't wish to risk its life. Just as Zhong Zia had said, his true strength wasn't limited to what had been showcased. His true strength could easily crush Zhong Zia to death. He didn't want to risk his life because of Bong Zia. When the figure of light ascended, it turned around and took a glance. This glance nearly made him vomit blood. The primordial immortal sword in Zhong Zia's hand hung around Zhou Yu's neck. The blade had already reached his skin, but it didn't slash down. This bastard! The figure immediately understood. There was only one possibility for him to hold back his sword and not slash down under such circumstances. Zhong Zia had never planned on slashing down. Otherwise, with his strength and speed, it would be impossible for him to temporarily hold back his sword. Everything he had done previously was just to scare him. Under such circumstances, Zhong Zia actually dared to do such a thing. If he had known that this strike was a feint, the figure would have had a chance of killing Zhong Zia. However, not only did Zhong Zia do it, but the figure had also been frightened. It couldn't tell the truth behind the strike. You're indeed an idiot! Zhong Zia muttered as he looked at the figure that flew into the void. He returned his sword to its scabbard. The figure suddenly shook in the void before instantly disappearing. Ha ha, this person is really interesting. Xiao Luchuan laughed until he couldn't straighten his back. This isn't interesting. He's risking his life. If that dimensional creature saw that his strike was a feint, he would probably be dead by now. Dugugu said solemnly. To dare slash out such a strike under such circumstances, this person is either a lunatic or an idiot. Zhang Chunqiu said with a strange expression, as he looked at Zhang Zia on stage. He doesn't look like a lunatic, Dugugu said. That's why he's an idiot, Xiao Luchuan said. Idiot? That's good, Zhang Chunqiu said thoughtfully. In the arena, Zhou Yue regained control of his body. He looked at Zhang Zia with a complicated expression and didn't say a word. He only cupped his fists and bowed slightly before admitting defeat and leaving the arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that moment, many of the humans who were watching the battle shouted Ya's name, forgetting the fact that Ya only had half a human bloodline. Ya stood in the arena. Although his body was covered in blood, he left people in awe. None of the guardians dared to challenge him again. There were very few terror grade guardians to begin with. There were even fewer who had Ya's realm and comprehension. Among the guardians who were willing to fight, no one had the confidence to defeat him. Suddenly, Ya was ejected from the cube's arena. At the same time, his name vanished from the cube's rankings. Everyone was taken aback before they suddenly understood what had happened. Instantly, the entire Federation and overseas were in an uproar. Chapter 1091 Human Holy SH asterisk T, he was kicked out of the rankings just because they can't win. Can they be any more shameless? Don't play if you are a sword loser. Why the F asterisk CK are we fighting in the arena? Can't you just decide on who's first place? Yeah, so pitiful. Screw whatever king of earth. Yeah is the real king of earth. Instantly, the entire federation and overseas were enraged. But what was the point? Yu was still kicked out of the rankings. It was impossible for him to return to the rankings. Zhou Wen's expression was nasty. He wasn't thinking about victory or defeat. Whether Zhong Zia could get first, or if he had suffered grievances wasn't important to Zhou Wen. However, Zhong Zia had signed a betting contract. If he didn't get first place, he would have lost the bet. His body would suffer a backlash from the Guardian, and he would completely lose himself. Now, Zhou Wen wished he could immediately find Zhong Zia and see how he was doing, but he had no idea where Zhong Zia was. Grim Demon, what will happen if you lose after signing a betting contract? Zhou Wen called Grim Demon out and asked with a cold expression. Grim Demon replied with some schadenfreude. A betting contract has a powerful binding effect on both parties. Even a calamity great expert would find it difficult to violate it. I reckon that the kid's body should already belong to the guardian of the bet. Upon hearing Grim Demon's words, Zhou Wen knew that there was no hope. Even a calamity expert couldn't escape the conditions of a betting contract. Zhong Zia was most likely doomed. No matter what, they won't let humans get first place, right? Zhou Wen looked at the ranking with cold eyes. The anger in his heart was indescribable as he walked towards the cube. If Zhong Zia were to be defeated, it would be because he was inferior. However, forcefully kicking him out and taking his life was unacceptable to Zhou Wen. He had nowhere to vent his anger. When Grim Demon saw Zhou Wen walk towards the cube, he hurriedly chased after him and asked, What are you doing? To participate in the cube ranking battle. Zhou Wen answered. Grim Demon hurriedly said, Actually, you don't have to go. We are one. If I take first place, it's equivalent to you taking first place. Now that I'm first, I can guarantee that I can definitely secure first place and retrieve the dimensional wheel. 
Zhou Wen naturally knew that Grim Demon winning meant that he had won. However, Zhou Wen didn't wish to win in such a manner, nor would he let Grim Demon win. Although Grim Demon belonged to him, Grim Demon also represented a race in the dimension. Grim Demon's win also meant that the race had won. This wasn't what Zhou Wen wanted. You are to stay here and wait for my challenge. You decide what to do. Zhou Wen unsummoned his companion beasts, leaving Grim Demon standing there before going up the cube. As Zhou had been kicked out, Grim Demon, who was originally second on the rankings, was first. After Zhou Wen got onto the cube, he injected his essence energy into it. The cube immediately reacted. Among pure humans, only Zhou Wen could activate it. As guardians and dimensional creatures had natural names, but humans didn't, his name was blank when the cube did a verification scan. Zhou Wen had to fill it in himself. Human. Zhou Wen only filled in one word. As there were no other guardians or companion beasts challenging Grim Demon, all the cubes in the world displayed his challenge request and name. Human. All the humans were stunned when they saw this name. This was because dimensional creatures and guardians had natural names. Even if humans participated in the battle after contracting guardians, the cube would only show the guardian's name and not the human's. And human clearly wasn't a guardian's name. It should be a human like ya, right? People guessed. Even if he's a human like ya and as powerful as ya, I'm afraid it's useless. He will ultimately be kicked out. Those be asterisk stars in the dimension won't let humans get first place. Not even half a human can. Just defeating Grim Demon to vent our anger would be nice though. How can it be that simple to defeat Grim Demon? That Grim Demon is definitely at the terror grade. There might be a chance but only if this person is as powerful as ya. Everyone discussed spiritedly. They basically believed that the challenger was a monster that was half human and half guardian. In fact, most humans didn't acknowledge people like Wang Mingyuan and Ya. The reason they had supported Ya previously was partly because Ya was so outstanding and partly because they had no other choice. Pure humans couldn't even leave their names on the rankings. They had no chance of supporting them. As people discussed, Grim Demon accepted the challenge. The scene on the cube's screen changed to the cube's arena. Two figures appeared in the cube's arena. One of them was naturally Grim Demon. However, most people wanted to know what the fellow who claimed to be human looked like. Although they knew that it was impossible for him to be a pure human, most of them had a sense of affinity towards him for daring to use the name human. However, when they saw the figure, they were stunned. The figure wore human clothes and looked like a human from head to toe. Apart from a white jade mask on his face, he looked like a human. He really looks like a human. It's impossible for him to be a pure human. He must be half human like you. But there's no sign of mutation on him at all. Don't you see him wearing a mask? The mutation part is definitely on his face. Everyone was in a flurry of discussion, but Joe Wen stood there motionless as he looked at Grim Demon with a complicated expression. The mask on his face was called Moonlit Mask Armor. It was transformed from a companion beast, Moonlit Rabbit. The Moonlit Rabbit companion beast was formed from the pearl he had obtained from Moon Goddess. Although it had a mythical foundation, it was still at the mortal stage. Moonlit Rabbit, Mortal, Evolvable. Strength, 11. Speed, 11. Constitution, 11. Essence Energy, 11. Talent Skill, Moonlight Transformation. Companion Form, Facial Armor. The reason he was using the Moonlight Mask was because of the Moonlight Transformation skill. Although it was only a facial armor, the existence of this skill prevented others from seeing his true identity. Joe Wen didn't wish to become famous. He only wanted to vent his anger and prevent any guardian from becoming the King of Earth. When people saw Grim Demon finally move, they stopped their discussion and focused their gazes on Grim Demon. Everyone knew very well how terrifying Grim Demon was. Many people even believed that he wasn't weaker than Ya. He had only admitted defeat because of his relationship with Ya. They also wanted to know how powerful Grim Demon would be if he really unleashed his combat strength. Grim Demon walked in front of Joe when step by step. Everyone believed that Grim Demon was about to attack, but Grim Demon's next move petrified everyone. Chapter 1092 Grim Demon Stand Grim Demon knew that it was time for him to choose a side, but he didn't feel too conflicted. He chose to stand on Joe Wen's side. Guardians weren't pure dimensional creatures. They were just tools created by dimensional creatures. He had no feelings for them. Of course, this wasn't the reason he chose Shou Wen. It was mainly because Demonic Neonate was Joe Wen's companion beast. Demonic Neonate was definitely on Joe Wen's side, so Grim Demon had no choice. He would choose whichever side Demonic Neonate stood. It wasn't difficult to choose a side. The difficult part was how to make the stand. Grim Demon knew that Zhou Wen didn't trust him, and Demonic Neonate listened to Zhou Wen. Therefore, Grim Demon felt that this was a very good opportunity. If he did well and obtained Zhou Wen's trust, he might be able to escape the awkward position of being. 
Reserve rations. Grim Demon gritted his teeth and made up his mind. He looked at Joe when and walked over. Everyone looked forward to the beginning of the battle as their gazes focused on Grim Demon. Now, they only hoped that Grim Demon and Human wouldn't just disappear again. Grim Demon didn't vanish. Instead, he slowly walked in front of Zhou Wen. Then, under everyone's incredulous gazes, he genuflected like a knight and pressed his right hand to his heart. He said to Zhou Wen, I swear upon my name as Grim Demon that I'm willing to sign a master-slave contract with you and pledge eternal loyalty to you until death. The entire world fell dead silent. People couldn't believe their eyes and ears. Guardians were guardians. How honorable and powerful were they? Without exception, the humans who had guardians had to work extremely hard to obtain the guardians' recognition before they had a chance to sign a contract with them. There were even many people who were willing to pay the price of their lives to contract a guardian. It could be said that although the guardian contract was an equal contract, humans were actually the weaker party in the contract. They were the ones being chosen. As for the guardians, their strength paled in comparison to grim demons. They were much weaker. Such a powerful grim demon had actually taken the initiative to request a contract with the person in front of him. Furthermore, he had requested to sign a master-slave contract. This was completely unheard of. Guardians can also sign a master-slave contract? Wait, Grim Demon wants to sign a contract with that person. In other words, that person definitely hasn't contracted a guardian. A human who is fused with a guardian can still contract with another guardian? If it's not possible, could this person be a pure human? That's impossible. Pure humans are unable to advance to the mythical stage, so it's impossible for them to activate the cube to enter the ranking battle. Who is this person? He's only wearing a mask. Does anyone recognize him? It wasn't just the average person. Even the veteran experts of the six families were shocked. They had never seen such a thing before. Old Xiao, can you tell who this person is? Xiao Luchuan asked. I can't tell. There's some kind of power that has changed his build. This build isn't his original build. Zhang Chuanqiu answered. Messages kept being exchanged overseas. They hoped to find out humans' true identity. Zhou Wen looked at Grim Demon with an odd expression. He could roughly guess Grim Demon's thoughts. Seeing that Zhou Wen wasn't saying a word, Grim Demon had no choice but to maintain the stance of a knight taking an oath. He kept consoling himself inwardly. I'll put on a show. For her lady demonic neonate, I'll tolerate it. Zhou Wen waved his hand, gesturing for Grim Demon to leave. He wasn't in the mood to put on an act. All he wanted to do now was kill guardians, but he took note of Grim Demon's intentions. Grim Demon hurriedly got up, and admitted defeat before leaving the cube's arena. Holy sh asterisk t, he doesn't want a guardian who came knocking on his door? That's Grim Demon, a top guardian. He rejected him just like that? Boss, if you don't want him, give him to me. I want him. This world must be crazy. Such a powerful guardian took the initiative to request a master-slave contract, but he actually rejected it. Is Grim Demon that dim? He didn't even attack despite the embarrassment he suffered from human. He even obediently admitted defeat. Isn't this too ridiculous? I think Grim Demon knows how powerful human is, so he took the initiative to request a master-slave contract. Furthermore, he didn't dare turn hostile. Never compare with others. They only serve to infuriate. It wasn't just Earth. The dimensional creatures watching this battle were also dumbfounded. Grim Demon was a guardian. Many dimensional creatures, who had experienced the war on Earth in ancient times knew of him. He was also one of the top guardians back then. Grim Demon's actions were just too strange to them. It even made them suspect if Grim Demon was fake. Soon, the various dimensional races ordered their guardians on Earth to test human and figure out what kind of existence human was. Due to the restrictions of the rules on Earth, no matter how powerful the dimensional races were, they would be punished by the rules if they personally descended. At most, they would maintain their standards at the terror grade. They might even drop to the mythical stage. They couldn't personally test Zhou Wen either, so they could only observe him through the cube. The information they could obtain was very limited. Before Zhou Wen went on stage, he had already thought it through. He had already drawn the heaven opening scripture of the highest heaven opening on his wheel of destiny. Furthermore, he constantly engraved it. Even if the engravings vanished, the subsequent engravings would be replenished, allowing him to maintain an active state of heaven opening scripture. To others, this would expend a large amount of mental strength and essence energy, but to Zhou Wen, this expenditure was nothing. Now, he only wanted to know if the heaven opening scripture which could break through the various dimensional zones taboo laws, could withstand the cube's laws. If he couldn't withstand it, and the dimensional creatures could kick him out like they had kicked you away, there would be zero chance. As long as they couldn't kick him out, he definitely wouldn't let any guardian get first place. However, Zhou Wen knew that dimensional creatures wouldn't use the cube's rules to kick him out immediately. 
from the various actions of the dimensional creatures and the information he had obtained from Ice Maiden, he could tell that there were many races in the dimension. They restrained each other and often launched racial wars. The cube wasn't something a single race could control. After all, the victor of the cube would allow a race to obtain control of Earth. It was impossible for the rest of the dimension to allow a race to completely control the cube. It wasn't an easy task to obtain the approval of all the figures in power and use the rules to kick him out. Even if all the big shots could reach a consensus, it would definitely take some time. Otherwise, the fellows from the dimension wouldn't have gone through all the various troublesome methods to deal with you. Chapter 1093 Tiger General's Might The reason Joe would maintain the state of the heaven opening scripture was to prevent any accidents. If the bigwigs that had just kicked you out were still having a meeting, it would be too unjust for them to reach a conclusion and kick him out too. Thankfully, what Joe Wynn was worried about didn't happen. No special power descended on him. Instead, the Guardian's challenges constantly appeared in front of him. Joe Wynn took a look and realized that many Guardians, who hadn't advanced to the terror grade, had issued a challenge to him. His heart stirred as he chose to accept the challenge from one of the mythical Guardians. The Guardian's name was Flaming Battle God. Joe Wynn really didn't know which family his contractor was from. However, just from the name, he knew that it was definitely a Fire Elemental Guardian. Furthermore, its ranking wasn't high. It hadn't even entered the top 10. The possibility of it being at the Terra grade was almost zero. Everyone couldn't help but feel disappointed when they saw that he had chosen Flaming Battle God and not the powerful Cave Era. After all, Flaming Battle God was much weaker than Grim Demon. Even Grim Demon had automatically admitted defeat, so it was impossible for Flaming Battle God to be his match. However, there were people who didn't think so. Now, many human experts knew that when Guardians contracted humans, they value potential, not absolute strength. Grim Demon chose human because of his talent, not because of his strength. The human wearing the armor of Flaming Battle God entered the arena. He was originally a little nervous, afraid that the strange person in front of him was really as powerful as Grim Demon. Then, he would be in danger the moment he appeared. However, when he saw that the other party had summoned a companion beast and had it rush over, it was clear that his opponent planned on letting a companion beast fight him. He immediately felt relieved and he became emboldened. Why is it a companion beast? A companion beast is definitely not a guardian's match. Don't tell me he wants to use a companion beast to win. From the looks of it, that companion beast seems to have some fire elemental abilities. Does anyone know what companion beast that is? Why do I feel like I've never seen it before? The companion beast Joe, when it summoned, was none other than the mythical fiend armored tiger soul general. It could be said to be the nemesis of fire elemental powers. It was perfect for dealing with flaming battle god. The reason Joe Wynn did so was because he didn't want to scare away the Guardian, nor did he want the big shots to use the cube's rules to kick him out. If the heaven opening scripture couldn't withstand the cube's rules, he could at least kill a few Guardians before being kicked out. Using fire in front of me? Seeing the strange flames burning in the fiend armored tiger soul general's body rush over, the human wearing the armor of flaming battle god sneered. The flames on his body lit up as he condensed a huge flaming saber and slashed at the fiend armored tiger soul general. The tiger soul general raised its spear to block. After the flaming saber collided with the spear, it immediately transformed into a sea of fire that drowned the tiger soul general in flames. Amidst the flames, the tiger soul general's armor turned red like iron and charcoal. It seemed as if it would melt into liquid metal at any moment. What's going on? Isn't using a companion beast to fight a guardian a waste of time? Not only is it a waste of time, but it's also a waste of companion beasts. A perfectly fine companion beast will probably be killed soon. That's a mythical companion beast. It's such a waste. Quickly fight like ya. Unleash your strength and kill the guardian. People clearly didn't wish to see a companion beast fight. Although Zhou Wen had previously showcased many of his companion beasts, it had only been for show and not a real battle. To most people, it was impossible to use a companion beast to defeat a guardian. Under Zhou Wen's control, the fiend armored tiger soul general seemed to charge at flaming battle god without any regard for its own safety. However, its armor had already been burned red. The situation didn't look good. Flaming Battle God slashed out again with his flaming saber, hoping to defeat the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General. The flaming saber struck the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General's body, causing sparks to fly. It was as though the iron liquid on his body had splattered. Furthermore, the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General was forced to retreat. Its body was enveloped by more flames, and the Tiger Soul General could no longer be seen. All one could see was a figure wrapped in flames retreating in the sea of flames. He's actually not dead yet. Flaming Battle God frowned slightly. He planned on finishing this companion beast quickly. After all, wasting too much time on a companion beast 
was a disgrace to him. He gathered his strength and slashed out the flaming saber repeatedly. The flaming saber slashed crazily at the fiend armored tiger soul general in the sea of fire, forcing him to constantly retreat. More and more molten metal splattered out from his body, but after he retreated again and again, the tiger soul general that looked like it was about to collapse remained alive. Flaming battle god realized that something was amiss. He immediately stopped and used the wheel of destiny's power to repel the tiger soul general. Terrifying flames turned from red to golden as they rose from flaming battle god's body. They condensed into a golden flaming chariot that charged at the tiger soul general with roaring battle intent. Everything melted in the wake of the golden flaming chariot. Even the red flames that originated from flaming battle god were melted by the golden flames. Boom! The golden flaming chariot slammed into the tiger soul general's body. The flaming wheels spun crazily, as though it wanted to crush and melt everything. The tiger soul general's body was constantly pushed back by the golden flaming chariot. Soon, it was pushed out of the sea of flames. At that moment, people realized that the tiger soul general's body was burning with purple red flames. It looked extremely strange. Even its armor had turned crystalline like an amethyst from the purple red flames. He wasn't injured at all. None of the previous attacks had harmed him. The tiger soul general raised the spear with both hands and blocked the golden flaming chariot. Not only did the flames of the golden flaming chariot not injure him, but it also made the flames in his body burn brighter. Flaming battle god could tell that there was something wrong with the fiend armored tiger soul general, but it was too late. With a boom, the spear in the tiger soul general's hand slammed down and shattered the golden flaming chariot, turning it into golden flames that scattered. In the next moment, the strange-looking ferocious tiger under the fiend armored tiger soul general let out a roar and charged at flaming battle god. When flaming battle god saw that the situation had gone south, he summoned a dragon and a war hammer. They were mythical companion beasts. He rode the dragon and sent the war hammer towards the fiend armored tiger soul general. Despite fighting three alone, the fiend armored tiger soul general's ferocious might did not decrease. The tiger beneath it leaped up and stepped on the dragon. Wherever the tiger claw passed, it left several wounds that burned with purple flames on the dragon's back, causing it to fall with a tragic cry. The ferocious tiger used the momentum to pounce at flaming battle god. The spear in the tiger's soul general's hand met the war hammer. The powerful impact sent the war hammer in flaming battle god's hand flying. He retreated as blood seeped out of his mouth. His expression changed drastically. Chapter 1094 True Body Descends the people who had been clamoring for human to attack quickly fell silent. They watched the battle in a daze, as their expressions gradually changed. With the help of the two mythical companion beasts, the dragon and war hammer, and the strength of a guardian, everyone originally believed that this would be a battle without any suspense. And indeed, there was no suspense. However, it was different from what they had imagined. The one being suppressed and ravaged was flaming battle god. Looking at the fiend armored tiger soul general that was charging across the arena like a demonic god, a question mark surfaced in many people's minds. What companion beast is this? It's freaking ferocious. Why haven't I heard of such a ferocious companion beast before? He vomited blood again. Flaming battle god's armor is about to crack. Furthermore, he was beaten to such a state despite having the help of two mythical companion beasts. This companion beast is really powerful. This isn't right. Isn't it said that guardians will definitely defeat companion beasts? Why is he being thrashed? Flaming Battle God likely hasn't unleashed his other ultimate moves, right? What ultimate move? The Golden Flaming Chariot was his ultimate move. The spear in the Tiger Soul General's hand danced wildly as it smashed into Flaming Battle God's chest, shattering his breastplate. He was set flying like a sandbag. With the shattered armor pieces, Flaming Battle God tumbled a great distance in the arena before stopping. The Tiger Soul General didn't stop. Demonic flame spewed out from its body, as it arrived in front of Flaming Battle God like a demon. There was no chance of Flaming Battle God winning the battle against the Tiger Soul General. The Tiger Soul General had absorbed too many flames early in the battle. Furthermore, the more he fought, the stronger he became. It would be too easy to defeat Flaming Battle God now. The Flaming Battle God saw that the situation was going south and wanted to admit defeat to leave the arena. Unfortunately, he was still a step too late. Zhou Wen had arrived not far behind him at some point in time. He held something that looked like a grenade in his hand and threw it at Flaming Battle God before quickly retreating. Boom! Boom! The energy produced by the explosion of the ancient splitting tadpoles, grenade shattered the already cracked and shattered Flaming Battle God armor into pieces. Furthermore, the explosions were continuous. After the large ancient splitting tadpole exploded, it split into smaller grenades that continued exploding. 
The continuous explosions almost instantly blasted the flaming battle god to pieces. He was deader than dead. He died just like that? Some people couldn't believe that a guardian had been blasted to death. So guardians aren't as strong as I imagined. With powerful companion beasts, we can still kill them. That requires a companion beast to be strong enough. That person's companion beast is extremely strong. The grenade companion beast that killed the flaming battle god looks like the ancient splitting tadpole from the previous companion beast showcase. Now that you mention it, it does seem like it. Could this person be the owner of those companion beasts? Holy sh asterisk t, that's really possible. Soon, this news spread. All the major media outlets began reporting it. After all, people had a deep impression of the previous companion beast showcase. However, this battle didn't stop the other guardians from issuing challenges. Although there were fewer guardians who issued a challenge, there were still quite a number of them. Many of them were at the mythical stage. From their point of view, although Zhou Wen's companion beast was powerful, it wouldn't be impossible to take it down. Zhou Wen had mythical companion beasts, but so did they. As long as they used them well, it wouldn't be difficult to defeat the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General. Furthermore, many people could tell the problem with the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General. They knew that the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General could absorb fire elemental powers and was extremely effective against Flaming Battle God. This was why Flaming Battle God had suffered such a tragic defeat. Joan glanced at the challenge list, and realized that Darkness Emissary, who had been frightened away by Grim Demon was among the list. He was also the guardian Zhou Ming had contracted. This fellow actually dares to challenge me? Is he crazy? Zhou Wen knew Zhou Ming quite well. He didn't deliberately find out more about Zhou Ming. However, with Grim Demon's name shaking the world, many media outlets had reported about Zhou Ming. Grim Demon loved reading those reports and had deliberately read them out loud for them to hear. This was why Zhou Wen knew a little. Zhou Wen felt that there was only one possibility for such a selfish and cowardly fellow to take the risk to challenge him. Something had given him the courage. What could it be? Could it be that a dimensional terror creature will descend on him like Zhou Yue? Zhou Wen felt that it was impossible. No matter how spineless a calamity grade dimensional creature was, it wouldn't choose the body of such a low-level human for its descent, right? Even if it wanted to choose, it would choose someone like Cave Era or Zhou Yue. Zhou Wen thought for a moment, and chose Darkness Emissary, as his next opponent. Soon Zhou Ming, who was wearing the Darkness Emissary armor, appeared in the arena. The moment he appeared, he began condensing the Door of Darkness. Unexpectedly, Zhou Ming condensed the Door of Darkness very quickly. Zhou Wen immediately saw the problem. Zhou Ming held a black crystal in his hand. Most of the power that condensed the Door of Darkness came from the black crystal. Zhou Wen wasn't a madman like Ya, nor was he interested in knowing what the Black Crystal was or how the Door of Darkness was different from before. Therefore, he immediately drew his Knight Immaculate Sword. The sword that resembled smoke tore through the air and stabbed at Zhou Ming. He wanted to kill him along with Darkness Emissary before Zhou Ming could condense the Door of Darkness. Although Knight Immaculate wasn't absolutely invincible, Zhou Ming was currently condensing the Door of Darkness. He couldn't move at all. Once he moved, the channeling of the Door of Darkness would be interrupted. All his previous efforts would be in vain. Zhou Ming watched as Night Immaculate flew over like a rainbow. He had no intention of dodging. The moment Night Immaculate stabbed into the Darkness Emissary armor, a golden light bloomed from his chest. It was a golden rune that transformed into a golden barrier that protected Zhou Ming. The Night Immaculate sword crisscrossed and struck the golden barrier again and again, but it failed to slice through it. Zhou Wen looked at the golden barrier and felt the power on it. No matter how stupid he was, he understood that be it the golden runes or the black crystal, it was definitely the work of the dimension. Those with keen eyes could guess what had happened. They were very worried for human, afraid that Ya's encounter would repeat itself. Zhou Wen stared at the door of darkness. He knew that dimension's techniques weren't that simple. The truly terrifying thing would definitely be inside the door of darkness. Could it be that a dimensional creature wants to use the door of darkness to descend personally? Zhou Wen thought to himself. The door of darkness condensed at an extremely fast speed. It took only a moment for it to take shape. With a boom, the door of darkness opened. A roar that sounded like it came from the depths of an abyss came from deep within the door of darkness. Is a dimensional creature descending personally? Zhou Wen stared intently at the door of darkness. Chapter 1095 Darkness Domain Devil Boom! Boom! Terrifying footsteps sounded from the door of darkness. Every step seemed to shake the void. Seeing a black figure walk out of the door, Zhou Wen retracted his Knight Immaculate Sword and didn't continue attacking Zhou Ming because it was too late. Through the cube, people gradually saw the creature that came out of the door. It was a monster that seemed to be enveloped by darkness. Its indistinct figure in the darkness was like a huge minotaur. With its huge bull's horn, arrow-shaped tail, 
and legs with reverse joints it walked out of the door of darkness, step by step, and landed in the arena. The entire arena seemed to be enveloped by the terrifying dark aura. Unlike Night the Arca's ever-night powers, the dark aura didn't block out the light. One could still see the monster's faintly discernible figure, but this feeling made one feel even more terrified. In an ancient temple on a plateau, an old man played with a demon fall pestle as he looked at the cube screen beside him. When he saw the dark minotaur appear, he couldn't help but frown slightly. Using darkness emissary's door of darkness, he summoned the top terror grade creature, Dark Domain Devil, into the arena. He bypassed the suppression of Earth's rules and allowed the Dark Domain Devil to maintain its full strength after its descent. Those fellows from the dimension will really think of any method to prevent humans from obtaining first place. However, will Dark Domain Devil really fulfill their wish? Jing Daoxian looked at Zhou Wen, who was on the other side of the arena. His eyes shimmered with a strange glint as he fiddled with the Demon Fall Pestle and muttered to himself. Let me see how far you have come. How shameless. Such a creature isn't something a fellow like Zhou Ming can summon. It must be those fellows from the dimension. Li Xian said angrily. Wang Lu hugged her and said. The cube is the home ground of dimensional creatures to begin with. If you want to win in such an environment, you have to be prepared to fight in adversarial situations. Feng Qiuyan also said. What I'm most worried about isn't this terror creature. I'm afraid that coach will be like ya and be kicked out by them using the cube's rules. He won't even have a chance to fight. Those shameless fellows will definitely do such a thing. Li Xian agreed with Feng Qiuyan's point of view. Others might not recognize Zhou Wen, but they knew him too well. They had already recognized him from his companion beasts, so they were somewhat worried. Don't worry. Zhou Wen won't be kicked out so easily. Wei Gu said with narrowed eyes. He had come to the Wang family residence to pass on Zhou Wen's message to Li Xian and company. When he saw Zhou Wen enter the arena, he stayed behind to watch the battle. Old Zhou has many strange abilities, but this is their home ground after all. The rules were set by them. It's not easy. Li Xian felt his balls ache just thinking about it. It was clearly a battle that decided the king of earth, but the rules weren't set by the creatures on earth. Darkness domain devil, kill him. Zhou Ming pointed at Zhou Wen excitedly. Although he hadn't summoned darkness domain devil with his own strength and had the help of the dimensional creatures, this was a chance that brought him closest to being the king of earth. With the power of darkness domain devil, as long as he defeated this strange person in front of him, he had a high chance of obtaining the dimensional wheel and becoming the king of earth. Darkness domain devil ignored him and stared at Zhou Wen. Its blood-red eyes in the darkness were like a pair of huge red lanterns. Although Darkness Domain Devil had been summoned by Zhou Ming, it wasn't a summoned beast. It was a very famous creature in the Darkness Domain, one of the strongest terror-grade creatures in the dimension. If not for some reason, Darkness Domain Devil would have long advanced to the Calamity Grade. The dimensional bigwigs had secretly planned this operation. They had gotten Darkness Domain Devil to descend with the Door of Darkness door because they hoped to settle this once and for all. They didn't want any additional problems. Previously, they had paid a huge price to forcefully kick you out of the game. Only then did the various bigwigs agree to use the cube's nomological forces. If it happened again, ignoring the bigwigs who knew that their race had no hope of obtaining first place, just inviting those bigwigs over wouldn't be an easy task. Weak creatures like humans are always capable of causing a lot of trouble. In the past, those fellows were already troublesome. I never expected these fellows to be even more troublesome now. A mysterious shadow felt a headache coming on. They were clearly creatures that were so weak that they couldn't advance to the mythical stage, but they could take advantage of every opportunity and do something that gave them a headache. Any last wishes? If it's not too difficult, I can try my best to satisfy you. Darkness Domain Devil said to Zhou Wen. It naturally didn't have good intentions. This was also one of its abilities. If its opponent's will was shaken, it would make its strength even stronger. Although its opponent was only an earthling, Darkness Domain Devil wasn't careless at all. It treated Zhou Wen as an opponent of the same level. It only wanted to use the safest method to kill its opponent in exchange for the benefits promised by the dimensional bigwigs. In a battle of the same level, strength was, needless to say, important. But apart from that, the strength of a creature's will was extremely important in battle. I do have a wish. It's not too difficult. I hope you can satisfy me, Zhou Wen said after some serious thought. Darkness Domain Devil was slightly delighted. It thought that Zhou Wen's will had wavered, so it asked. Tell me, what's your wish? Zhou Wen sized up Darkness Domain Devil and said in all seriousness, Can you let me see your true body? Darkness Domain Devil was slightly taken aback. It never expected Zhou Wen to make such a request. It immediately knew that Zhou Wen's will hadn't wavered. Perhaps he was just stalling for time. At that moment, Darkness Domain Devil didn't waste any more time. 
the dark aura on its body surged like a tidal wave over the arena. Soon, it enveloped the entire cube, preventing outsiders from seeing anything. However, the dark aura didn't injure anyone. Instead, the blood-red eyes of darkness domain devil eyes intensified, but under the envelopment of the darkness domain, no one could see it. Come, let me bring your soul into the dark abyss. Enjoy the joy of depravity. Darkness domain devil approached Sho, one with a tide of dark aura. At the same time, the sanguine light in its eyes intensified as though it had some soul-stealing power. Sho Wen's wheel of destiny kept circulating as he watched every move of darkness domain devil. When he saw the pair of eyes, he immediately felt attracted to them, as though his soul was about to be sucked in. Thankfully, his willpower and mental strength were stronger than ordinary people. He temporarily stabilized his mind, but he pretended to be attracted by it. As though he was in a daze, he walked towards darkness domain devil step by step. Chapter 1096 What's Going On? In the darkness domain, Zhou Wen walked towards darkness domain devil. Soon, he arrived in front of it. Come, follow me into the depraved abyss of happiness. Darkness domain devil lowered its head and extended its palms as though it wanted to lift Zhou Wen up. At the same time, its face approached Zhou Wen. Just as its palms were about to touch him, Zhou Wen suddenly vanished. When he appeared again, he was already in front of dark domain devil's eyes. He held an ice crystal-like dragon tooth in his hand and stabbed at its eyes. The tip of the dragon tooth was about to touch the eyeball of darkness domain devil, when a palm suddenly extended out of the darkness and grabbed the dragon tooth. You are still too young to play dirty in front of me. Darkness domain devil grinned hideously. It grabbed the dragon tooth with one hand and grabbed Sho Wen's body with the other. At the same time, it said, It's no wonder you dare be so arrogant. You actually have a terror item. This isn't something that any terror creature can condense. Ah. Before darkness domain devil could finish its sentence, blood bloomed in its eyes. Demonic neonate had stabbed it in the eye with demonic sword. Darkness domain devil's reaction was also extremely fast. It reached out to crush Sho Wen, but when its other I saw demonic neonate, its hand froze as its eyes were filled with disbelief. Its palm unknowingly released Sho Wen as he fell to the ground, turning into a substitute talisman in midair. Sho Wen's true body appeared elsewhere. Demonic neonate immediately retreated after a successful strike and landed in Zhou Wen's arms. No! Impossible! Darkness Domain Devil stared at Demonic Neonate as its injured eyes rapidly healed. However, it had no intention of attacking Zhou Wen. It only stared intently at Demonic Neonate with a look of horror as though it had seen a ghost. Zhou Wen realized that something was amiss and had a bad feeling. He immediately unsummoned Demonic Neonate. Darkness Domain Devil clearly knew Demonic Neonate, or rather, it had seen an existence similar to Demonic Neonate. In the past, the fact that Grim Demon knew Demonic Neonate had made Zhou Wen feel that something was amiss. Grim Demon was ultimately a guardian born on Earth. However, Darkness Domain Devil was different. It was a creature from the dimension. It actually recognized Demonic Neonate, and from its alarmed look, this was a huge problem. If Demonic Neonate was really related to the dimension, who knew what would happen if the big shots of the dimension saw him using Demonic Neonate in the arena? From Ya's previous encounter, it could be seen that the fellows in the dimension were different from humans. They didn't care about their reputation at all. They were very dangerous considering how unscrupulous they were to achieve their goals. Now, Zhou Wen was somewhat glad that he had summoned Demonic Neonate in the darkness. Otherwise, Demonic Neonate would have been completely exposed. Zhou Wen already had the intention to kill. He was just about to summon Banana Fairy and kill Darkness Domain Devil with all his might. However, before Zhou Wen could take action, he saw Darkness Domain Devil suddenly retract its Darkness Domain. Even the darkness aura on its body completely converged, revealing its true body. The spectators stared at the black screen. They couldn't see anything, but clearly, the creature Zhou Ming had summoned was definitely a terror-grade existence. Many people were worried for Zhou Wen, hoping to know the outcome as soon as possible. However, they were also worried that they would see Zhou Wen's tragic death when the darkness vanished. Even Zhou Ming himself couldn't see anything in the darkness. Suddenly, the darkness in the arena vanished. Not only did the darkness disappear, but even the black gas surrounding the darkness domain devil vanished. Only then did everyone see that the true body of the darkness domain devil wasn't as huge as they had imagined. It was only about 10 meters tall, but it was already very majestic compared to humans. It had a bull's head and hooves, but its body and hands looked human. Furthermore, it was wearing a black robe. It looked very strange. Seeing that darkness domain devil was unharmed, everyone was alarmed. They hurriedly searched the other corners of the arena, worried that Joe would have been killed. Seeing Zhou when standing there perfectly fine without any injuries, they couldn't help but heave a sigh of relief. What are you standing there for? 
quickly finish him off. Zhou Ming was immediately disappointed when he saw that Zhou Wen wasn't dead. He immediately urged Darkness Domain Devil to quickly kill Zhou Wen. This was because the dimensional creatures he had come into contact with had told him that Darkness Domain Devil was invincible among terror-grade existences. As long as he summoned it over, there was no way for him to lose. The next second, Darkness Domain Devil finally moved, but its target wasn't Zhou Wen. It turned around and looked at Zhou Ming, who was wearing the Darkness Emissary armor. Its eyes shimmered with a sanguine glow like the eyes of the devil. In an instant, Zhou Ming and the Darkness Emissary armor on his body exploded. Blood spewed everywhere, instantly leaving nothing behind. This turn of events stunned everyone. They looked at the arena in a daze, unsure what had happened. It wasn't just humans. Many creatures in the dimension were also stunned. The eyes of the big shot, who had arranged for Darkness Domain Devil to descend into the arena twitched, as he had a strong ominous feeling. Zhou Wen was slightly taken aback as well, but he quickly thought of something. Could it be that this fellow is the same as Grim Demon? Is it related to demonic Nianae or her lineage? Zhou Wen was momentarily hesitant. Should he continue summoning the Nana Fairy to silence it? Darkness Domain Devil was very powerful, so it didn't seem easy to silence it. Furthermore, without the cover of the Darkness Domain, if he wanted to kill it without using demonic neonate, he would probably have to expose most of his abilities. After all, this was a combat arena where one could admit defeat. Zhou Wen wasn't confident that he could kill Darkness Domain Devil before it admitted defeat. Just as Zhou Wen was hesitating and everyone was puzzled, Darkness Domain Devil suddenly took a step forward and genuflected. Just like Grim Demon from before, it placed its right hand on its chest and lowered its head. What's going on? What happened? Wasn't this thing summoned by Zhou Ming? Isn't it a terror creature from the dimension? Probably. Instantly, the Federation was in an uproar. It made sense if Grim Demon had something to do with human, but Darkness Domain Devil was a dimensional creature summoned by Zhou Ming. Why did it kneel after the screen turned black and lit up? Only Zhou Wen knew that Darkness Domain Devil was kneeling to demonic neonate, not him. Little Yin Yin, pinch me. See if I'm still dreaming? Li Xian said to Feng Chiu Yin, with a strange expression. Chapter 1097 Little Fairy Appears Ah! Li Xian let out a tragic cry as he held his swollen face. His fingers trembled as he pointed at Feng Chiu Yin and jumped. Why did you use so much strength? How can you be sure if you aren't dreaming if I don't use more strength? Feng Chiu Yin muttered to himself. Seeing how much pain you are in, you should be able to confirm that you aren't dreaming. But you don't have to use so much strength, right? Do you want to pinch me to death? If it wasn't for my extraordinary physique, my face would have been flattened by you. Li Xian said unrelentingly. Others will die when facing such strength, but you won't. Feng Chiu Yin said calmly. Li Xian opened his mouth and realized that he had no means to refute him. He swallowed his words. However, Li Xian was certain that this wasn't a dream. Darkness Domain Devil continued kneeling there with its head bowed at Zhou Wen. Due to the deaths of Zhou Ming and Darkness Emissary, the door of darkness dissipated at the same time. Darkness Domain Devil lost the protection of this layer of connection and was immediately repelled by Earth's laws. The darkness aura on its body was rapidly dissipating. As Darkness Domain Devil fought the terrifying nomological force, it bowed three times respectfully in Zhou Wen's direction. Without a word, it turned around and admitted defeat before leaving the arena and returning to the dimension. Although Darkness Domain Devil didn't say a word, anyone could tell that he had simply treated Zhou Wen as a god. Previously, Grim Demon had only genuflected. Now, the powerful dimensional creature, Darkness Domain Devil, had bowed so respectfully. It was truly unbelievable. What's going on? Is human actually a powerful creature from the dimension in disguise? He can't be human, right? I don't think so. People began to wonder if human was human, but only humans could use companion beasts. This also meant that human was human, or at least half human. However, how could a human have such glory? He had actually made darkness domain devil bow to him. It was a terrifying existence that could instantly kill a guardian at a glance, but in front of Zhou Wen, it was like a slave and had treated Zhou Wen like a god. It was unbelievable that he was really a human. As a result, many guardians who originally wanted to issue a challenge hesitated. Darkness Domain Devil was clearly at the terror grade and sent by the dimension. It had extremely terrifying strength. Yet, such an existence was so subservient in front of this fellow who claimed to be human. They were really afraid. Ignoring the human contractor, even the guardian itself was afraid. Even though the dimensional bigwigs kept urging guardians to enter the arena, None of them dared to do so. Time ticked by. If no one challenged him in an hour, human would obtain first place on the rankings. After a few minutes of silence, someone finally issued a challenge. The challenger was Cave Era. Cave Era was a terror-grade guardian with the power of time. 
After entering the arena, she immediately turned into her terror form and vanished from everyone's eyes. Others couldn't see her, but Zhou Wen could see her very clearly. Her terror form couldn't escape his eyes, but after Cave Era entered her terror form, her body obtained the augmentation of time power. Under the acceleration of time, her movement technique was unbelievably fast. Zhou Wen didn't hesitate to summon Banana Fairy. The fairy-like Banana Fairy appeared in front of Zhou Wen. Her elegant and beautiful appearance immediately attracted everyone's attention. Banana Fairy pouted her red lips and blew out a breath. A cold wind instantly rose over the arena and swept towards the terror form of Cave Era. Cave Era summoned a triangular blade transformed from a companion beast and charged at the cold wind with a cold beam. The cold beam pierced through the cold wind, but it only moved half a foot forward. As for Cave Era's body, it was sent flying by the cold wind. She was kicked out of her terror state in midair and instantly flew for an unknown distance. She vanished from the screen, her whereabouts unknown. Is... is that a companion beast? Heavens, that companion beast is too terrifying. She blew away the terror-grade cave era with a single breath. It's no wonder Grim Demon and Darkness Domain Devil are so fearful of human. Such a powerful companion beast is practically invincible. Isn't this too fake? The terror-grade cave era was blown away just like that. What's the use of being strong? Looks are what matters. Just look at how beautiful that companion beast is, and you'll know that she's definitely invincible. If she were to wheedle at me, I would definitely die of joy. A beautiful humanoid companion beast that's so terrifyingly powerful. How much did that brother suffer in his previous life to exchange for such a companion beast in this life? Everyone was alarmed by Banana Fairy's strength and beauty. They explained away the respect Grim Demon and Darkness Domain Devil showed by her existence. It wasn't their fault for thinking that way. The battle Banana Fairy had displayed was just too shocking. A small gust of wind blew the Terror Great Powerhouse away. She looked way overpowered. However, they didn't know that Banana Fairy only had a few moves. Apart from blowing wind, she didn't do anything else. Zhou Wen watched as Cave Era was blown away by the Supreme Yin Wind. Her body was almost frozen into ice in midair. He felt that she was doomed. However, in the next second, a figure flashed. Cave Era strangely returned to the arena and appeared where she had been standing as though she had never moved. Zhou Wen sized up Cave Era in surprise and asked, Time reversal? I don't have such powerful strength to reverse time. Not to mention reversing time, I can't even stop time. Otherwise, you and you would have died long ago. Cave Era answered coldly. It's just a time mark. By marking a time point, my body can return to that time point. The mark can only last a maximum of three seconds. You didn't use this move when you fought Yao, right? Zhou Wen asked. I can only use it once. So even if I had used it, I would still have lost. There was no point in using it, said Cave Era. In that case, you believe that you can't beat ya, but you can beat me? Zhou Wen asked. At the very least, there's a chance, Cave Era said as she transformed into her terror form again and charged at Zhou Wen. Banana Fairy blew out the Supreme Yin Wind again. However, the speed of the Supreme Yin Wind couldn't catch up to Cave Era after she accelerated time. Cave Era circled around the Supreme Yin Wind and continued charging at Zhou Wen. Banana Fairy was a wind elemental divine pet. In terms of speed, she wasn't slower than Cave Era. With Cave Era accelerating time, Banana Fairy still caught up to her. With a grab, the banana leaf under her became a fan that appeared in her hand. She fanned it at Cave Era, and her figure vanished as she entered her terror form. It was as though she had transformed into an invisible wind. This was a battle of speed. Banana Fairy and Cave Era were unbelievably fast. Ordinary people couldn't see their figures. All they could see was the wind constantly flowing across the arena. After Banana Fairy was lured away, Cave Era suddenly summoned four mythical companion beasts and sent them charging at Zhou Wen. Chapter 1098 C of Mythical Pets Ordinary people couldn't see Banana Fairy and Cave Era, but the four mythical companion beasts could see them clearly. Ghidorah, World Wolf, Dark Troll and Pharaoh Many people immediately recognized the mythical companion beasts. It wasn't that they were knowledgeable, but that the four companion beasts were so famous. Ghidorah was known as the strongest strength type companion beast in the North District. The World Wolf was known as the fastest companion beast in the North District. Dark Troll was a famous mythical companion beast in the West District. Its body was extremely powerful, and it also had the ability to use darkness magic. It was an excellent companion beast that practiced both magic and martial arts. It was said, that no one had been able to defeat and kill it in the darkness abyss. No one expected Cave Era to possess the Dark Troll companion beast. There was no need to mention Pharaoh. He was a divine companion beast with mythical magic powers.
These four famous mythical companion beasts had appeared together with Cave Era. It made Joe and break out into a cold sweat. This was because most people believed that Banana Fairy was what human relied on the most. Now that Banana Fairy had been lured away by Cave Era, it was still unknown if human could deal with these four powerful mythical companion beasts. Do you want to compete with companion beasts? The six demon blood true dragons appeared out of nowhere and lined up in front of Joe one. The last time he had gone to the underground sea, he had obtained another one. Now, he was only three short of the nine demon blood true dragons. Furthermore, the demon blood true dragons were very strange. It didn't drop every time, but when something dropped, it would definitely be a demon blood true dragon with a different attribute. Jowen had never had a demon blood true dragon with the same attribute drop. Jowen guessed that it might be because the demon blood true dragon's companion beast had a unique characteristic. Perhaps after it dropped, no one else could get it to drop again. Now, Joe would only hope to have the nine companion eggs drop before others went to the underground sea to kill the demon blood true dragon. He wanted to see how powerful the nine demon blood true dragons were. Wow! Six demon blood true dragons. Three golden battle god halberds. Splitting ancient tadpoles. Devil clown. Knight immaculate sword. And the fire elemental knight who fought previously. The invisibility cloak should be here too. These companion beasts really belong to the same person. What kind of luck is this? Six demon blood true dragons. Three golden battle god halberds. Holy sh asterisk t. Together with that beautiful fairy-like companion beast, how many mythical companion beasts does this fellow have? Is this fellow having an affair with Lady Luck? Why is he getting all the good pets? Instantly, everyone was alarmed. The four mythical companion beast battle lineup from Cave Era were already very shocking. But the companion beasts show when summoned couldn't be called a battle lineup. They were like a sea of pets. The originally aggressive Ghidorah was instantly surrounded by six demon blood true dragons. The pharaoh was being pursued by the three golden battle god halberds. The knight immaculate sword transformed into a shocking sword beam that circled the world wolf. Sword marks appeared on the world wolf's body as blood dyed its for red. Others believed that it was caused by knight immaculate sword aura, but in fact, it was the invisible combination of the Light Concealment Sword and Knight Immaculate Sword. It was just that others couldn't see Light Concealment Sword. The Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General, Devil Clown, and Ancient Splitting Tadpole fought the Dark Troll. In just a moment, the Dark Troll's skin and flesh were lacerated. After being hit by the Devil Clown's magic ball, he was immediately at a loss for what to do. He could only be thrashed by the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General, and couldn't dodge the explosion of the Ancient Splitting Tadpole. As long as the ancient splitting tadpole didn't explode nine times in a row, it could slowly recover. There was no need to worry. The onlookers enjoyed the spectacle. They couldn't see the earlier terror grade battles at all. They could only imagine and make all sorts of guesses, making them feel depressed. Now, in such a battle of mythical companion beasts, although it might not be as strong as a terror grade, it was very satisfying watching it. The only bad thing was that the companion beasts in the cave were being ganged up on. They could only suffer a beating. Occasionally, they could counterattack, but they couldn't cause too much of a stir. If I had so many powerful companion beasts, I would dare by with those guardians. Pooey! I just need that beautiful fairy companion beast. That's equivalent to having the entire world. What's there to fight for? Loyans and family. Overseer, young master when's companion beast army is really terrifying. With so many mythical companion beasts, I'm afraid he has the ability to sweep through the Federation. And Shung said, as he watched the live broadcast, Companion beasts are ultimately external forces. And Tianzua said, Companion beasts are external forces. Guardians are external forces. Guns and cannons are also external forces. Humans are experts, who are good at using external forces. Young Master Wen is already at the epitome when it comes to companion beasts. I'm afraid no one on earth can compare with him. And Shung said, And Tianzua frowned and said, If you have the time to think of so many words of praise, why don't you think about how to resolve the problem of the accelerator? Yes, Overseer. I'll think about it now. And Sheng realized that he had been a little too smug and things were going south. After giving a military salute, he turned around and wanted to escape. Come back. And Tianzua said coldly. Overseer, I'm aware of my mistakes. And Sheng turned his head with a bitter expression. And Tianzua snorted coldly. It's fine if you blow his trumpet here. If that punk also thinks that he's invincible with those companion beasts... He probably won't even know how he died. However, it's good that he's dead. His death can bring me some peace. Overseer, what do you mean? What means does the dimension have to restrain young master when's companion beasts? And Sheng asked carefully. Why would there be a need for the dimension to do something? According to what I know, there's a guardian who has a skill similar to a seal. 
However, it's not a ceiling of a person's body, but a ceiling of companion beasts. Under his influence, no one can summon a companion beast. If that punk is as arrogant as you, he will definitely die. And Tianzhu drank a cup of water and added, It's good if such a fellow dies. That reduces the havoc he will create everywhere. The Federation is already chaotic enough. It's good that there's one less scourge. Overseer, when this battle ends, I'll think of a way to inform young Master One. And Shun said, It's your own business if you want to inform him. Why are you asking me? I can't wait for that troublemaker to be taught a lesson. And Tianzhu said expressionlessly, Yes, I'm the one who wants to tell young Master One. It has nothing to do with you, Overseer. As in Shun spoke, his eyes darted to Tianzhu. But I don't know where young Master One is now. How can I contact him? Don't look at me. Don't have any ideas about my voice transmission bell. Don't think that I'll lend it to you. And Tianzhu said, as he turned around and drank his tea. Chapter 1099 Blood Shaman Instead of saying that Cave Era had lured Banana Fairy away, it was better to say that Banana Fairy had held back Cave Era, attacking her until she could only constantly escape. She didn't dare take on Banana Fairy's supreming wind. Seeing that her companion beast was about to be ganked to death, and that she wasn't Banana Fairy's match, Cave Era could only admit defeat and leave the cube. This is more satisfying. It's great watching this. So companion beasts can be so powerful. Pure companion beasts can defeat a guardian. There's nothing impressive about a guardian. That beautiful fairy companion beast is practically my dream lover. When can I have such a companion beast? As no one challenged him, Zhou Wen temporarily left the cube. Suddenly, Zhou Wen's phone rang. This left him puzzled because there was no signal here. He couldn't contact Li Xian and company even if he wanted to. He took out his phone and saw that it was in Sheng. Ah Sheng, how did you get through? Zhou Wen glanced at his phone and realized that there was still no signal. But the call was very normal. It's all thanks to... Before in Sheng could finish his sentence, and Tianzhu, who was sitting in his office chair, looked up and glared at him. He immediately corrected himself. It's just a special companion beast. Let's not talk about that. Young Master One, you have to be careful of a guardian named Blood Shaman. He has the ability to seal companion beasts. No one can use a companion beast in front of him. Overs. Do. Do. Just as Enshun was about to say the word overseer, and Tianzhu reached out and took back the bell in Enshun's hand. Enshun could only shake his head helplessly. Hello. Ah, Shung. Hello. Zhou Wen suddenly couldn't hear any sound. He looked at his phone's screen and realized that the line had been disconnected. He couldn't get through again. There was no signal. What companion beast is that? It can actually forcefully connect without a signal. I have to think of a way to get one later. Although Zhou Wen seldom made calls, it was irritating when he needed to make a call, but did not have a signal. Blood Shaman? I wonder if the heaven opening scripture can withstand the power of the seal. Is the seal considered a nomological power? Zhou Wen thought for a moment, and felt that it wasn't safe to rely on the heaven opening scripture alone. If it didn't work, he would have to rely on himself. As for whether Blood Shaman would appear, Zhou Wen didn't doubt it at all. The dimensional bigwigs definitely wouldn't watch him take first place. As long as there was such a guardian, there was a 99% chance of it coming to deal with him. The other 1% was them having been taken down by Zhou Wen. Time ticked by. After more than half an hour, there was still no guardian challenging Zhou Wen. Furthermore, people were still excitedly discussing the various companion beasts Zhou Wen had used. The various media outlets were analyzing Zhou Wen's various companion beasts, especially Banana Fairy. Almost all the headlines of the various media outlets used her as a cover. Li Binyi was the fastest. During the pet showcase from before, he had already made plenty of companion beast merchandise. However, they weren't too popular back then. Now, they were absolutely popular. Li Binyi's dolls and figurines began to sell like hotcakes. As for the Guardian figurines and figurines that sold very well, the market demand was much lower. Almost no one cared about them now. In the past, they had no choice. They felt that guardians were too powerful and could only support guardians. However, now that humans' companion beasts had appeared out of nowhere, it allowed people to see the strength of companion beasts. It also changed people's perception of companion beasts and brought them back to the sights of humanity. Ordinary people couldn't come into contact with guardians, but they had a high chance of obtaining companion beasts. They naturally wished to believe that companion beasts were the strongest. At that moment, the dimension wasn't calm either. How long had it been since Earth had recovered? Yet, a terror-grade companion beast had appeared. This was extremely terrifying for the dimension. If this continued, a calamity-grade companion beast might soon appear on Earth. That was a situation that the dimension was very unwilling to see. In front of a glorious palace, 
a warrior in gorgeous armor genuflected and said with his head lowered, Your Excellency, we have already contacted Blood Shaman. He has also agreed to fight, but he wants ten divine fruits. Give them to him. A familiar voice sounded from the palace. He was the one who had presided over the cube battle and changed the rules. Yes. The warrior stood up and was about to leave when he heard another voice coming from the palace. How's the situation with the other members of the Octokind? They have already agreed to lend out the body cleansing stone, but the price is very high. They are still negotiating. The warrior answered. Didn't the Dragon King stop it? The voice in the palace said again. No. The warrior answered. You're dismissed. Tell them that they have to bring back the body cleansing stone. Yes. After the warrior left, a godlike man was sitting sideways on the roof of the palace, frowning in thought. A seductive woman circled around the man's body and leaned her fair head against his chest as she said gently, Your Excellency Vtion, why does it have to be a body cleansing stone? The monarchs of the various races are already communicating with each other. I believe there will be an outcome very soon. When that happens, that person will be kicked out of the rankings like ya. Why do you have to pay such a huge price to obtain the body cleansing stone? It's just preparing for a rainy day. We absolutely must not let existences like ya and human obtain the dimensional wheel, much less give them a chance to stand on wanging you inside. Dtion said indifferently. It's fine if he's kicked out. Otherwise, the body cleansing stone will naturally be of use. How can he not be kicked out? He's just a human. How can he resist the cube's rules? Furthermore, with Blood Shaman restraining his companion beasts, he will probably be defeated in the next round. Your Excellency Dtion, you don't have to worry excessively about a mere human. The woman said. Dtion didn't say anything. He only used his fingers to stroke the woman's beautiful hair that was like a river in the night. His eyes were deep and unfathomable. Worry excessively? That fellow is also a human. If I don't worry too much, I'm afraid a second or third person will appear. The figure of the gentle-looking man appeared in Dtion's mind. When an hour was almost up, and people thought that human was about to obtain first place, the cube suddenly lit up. Another person issued a challenge. Everyone looked at the cube's screen, but the name they saw was unfamiliar. They had never seen it before. It's really him. Zhou Wen saw the word blood shaman and couldn't help but be grateful for Ensheng's timely intelligence. Although he might not have been at a disadvantage without the intelligence, it was better to be prepared in advance than to think of a solution at the last minute. Without any hesitation, Zhou Wen agreed to the challenge. No matter who came, he had to do his best to vie for first place. As long as he wasn't kicked out like ya, he definitely wouldn't let any guardian become the king of earth. Zhou Wen and Blood Shaman appeared in the arena at the same time. Blood Shaman in blood-colored armor made a shocking move. He extended his hand and swiped at his palm, causing blood to gush out like a fountain. Chapter 1100 Sealing Companion Beasts When the blood landed in the air, it turned into specks of sanguine light that dissipated. The blood could no longer be seen with the naked eye, but the entire arena seemed to be covered in a faint sanguine light. Zhou Wen extended his palm, and a red glow appeared on the blue crystal bracer. It was faint and inconspicuous. After summoning Knight Immaculate Sword, he realized that his mental connection with it had weakened significantly. This made Zhou Wen understand that Blood Shaman's blood sacrifice technique was the power to seal companion beasts. Even on his ear, Truth Listener's connection with Zhou Wen weakened significantly. From the looks of it, evil nullification couldn't restrain the sealing power. The heaven-opening scripture had long been engraved, but it didn't appear to be of much use. Even the heaven opening scripture and evil nullification can't restrain it. It's neither a taboo rule nor a curse. What kind of power is this? Zhou Wen thought to himself, but he didn't stop. He planned on summoning the companion beasts that had previously fought. Everyone watched excitedly as companion beasts appeared, believing that they could see another grand battle of companion beasts. However, Zhou Wen had only summoned a few companion beasts without even summoning all six demon blood true dragons before he saw a sanguine glow emit from the blood shaman's eyes turning the entire arena red. The companion beasts that Zhou Wen had summoned suddenly flew back to him and returned to their tattoo form. Truth Listener was no exception. What happened? Why did he unsummon his companion beasts? It doesn't look like it was done of his own accord. It seems to have been sent back by the power of Blood Shaman. Don't tell me the power of Blood Shaman prevents people from summoning companion beasts. If that's the case, human will be in danger. It looks like it. That beautiful fairy-like companion beast didn't appear either. Even a terror-grade companion beast can be sealed? Isn't that too much of a sham? Without a companion beast, how can we humans fight? Blood Shaman's ability is basically targeted at us humans. In front of him, all humans will be unable to withstand a single blow. It's really terrifying. If he can't use companion beasts, 
Will humans still have a chance of defeating Blood Shaman? I'm afraid it will be very difficult. Unless he has the same combat ability as Ya. Everyone discussed spiritedly. Zhou Wen also attempted to summon Banana Fairy, but unfortunately, she was also sealed by Blood Shaman's power and couldn't be summoned. The power of Blood Shaman is definitely a great enemy of humanity, Zhou Wen thought as he looked at Blood Shaman. However, Zhou Wen also realized that Blood Shaman's power wasn't only targeted at him. Even he couldn't summon his companion beasts, nor did he have any equipment transformed from them. Clearly, even he was limited by this power and couldn't use companion beasts either. Blood Shaman stood in the blood-colored light. The armor on his body emitted a strong bloody smell like a bloodthirsty god. Forget your futile attempts. In the blood sacrifice ritual, no companion beast can be summoned. Even I can't. Blood Shaman looked at Joe when and continued. There's still time to withdraw. With Blood Shaman admitting it personally, everyone knew that their previous guess was right. Blood Shaman's ability was simply the natural enemy of humans. There's actually such power. Isn't this too ridiculous? With such power, how can humans live in the future? Such power is too unfair to humans. Child, you are still too naive. There's nothing fair in this world. Humans really in danger this time. He can't use companion beasts. His combat strength has been greatly weakened. Jowen looked at Blood Shaman and said calmly, I'll naturally withdraw when I'm about to die. Blood Shaman didn't say anything else. However, the sanguine light on his body became stronger and stronger. It turned into blood-colored flames that enveloped his entire body like a blood shadow. Terror grade? He wasn't surprised that Blood Shaman was at the terror grade. It would be strange if it wasn't at the terror grade if he could seal even Banana Fairy. To his surprise, although Blood Shaman had turned into his terror form, his body didn't completely disappear. The average person could still see his figure. Only some special terror transformations would have such an effect. For example, the gigantification of Jade Rabbit. This is your last chance to live. If I attack, I won't show any mercy. Blood Shaman floated in the air like a divine blood shadow, illuminating the entire arena with blood red light. Wang Lu held her hands together in worry. Although Zhou Wen was very strong, how could he fight the terror grade Blood Shaman without the help of his companion beasts? Others believed that Zhou Wen was a human who had fused with a guardian, but Wang Lu and company knew very well that Zhou Wen hadn't fused with a guardian. When they had parted, Zhou Wen was only at the epic stage. Although they didn't know what method Zhou Wen had used to get on the rankings, it was already impressive that he had advanced to the mythical stage. It was impossible for him to advance to the terror grade in such a short period of time. Many of the spectators were equally worried. Since you are standing here, you are an enemy. Why are we talking about mercy? Zhou Wen said indifferently. He was determined to defeat all humans with guardians. Unless he was at his wit's end, he definitely wouldn't give up easily. That's right. I was wrong. With that said, the anthropomorphic blood shadow charged at Zhou Wen and slashed down, like a blade. His speed was so fast that ordinary humans couldn't keep up with him. Even though he didn't disappear after his terror transformation, ordinary people couldn't see his actions. However, Zhou Wen could clearly see that although Blood Shaman was very fast, it wasn't much faster than a top mythical creature. Its speed couldn't even compare to some top speed type mythical creatures. Zhou Wen knew that this meant that Blood Shaman's stats weren't very high. Perhaps, just like Banana Fairy, he had just slightly exceeded 82, so he wasn't at a disadvantage in terms of stats. His speed attribute had already broken past 70. However, Zhou Wen didn't underestimate Blood Shaman because of this. The other party's terror form definitely had its benefits. Although their stats were similar, he couldn't treat him as a mythical creature. With a wave of his hand, a white wooden club appeared in his hand. This wooden club wasn't transformed from a companion beast. It was something Zhou Wen had picked up from the mountain god, who had sacrificed the white deer and condensed the blood oxypetalum. Apart from the white wooden club, there was also a metal disc that resembled a gong. There was no way to use a companion beast now, and bamboo blade was too eye-catching. Others would recognize him at a glance, so he had no choice but to use these. After condensing his forces, Zhou Wen used the white wooden club as a sword and charged at Blood Shaman with an intense sword aura. He wanted to see how strong a terror great creature like Blood Shaman was. Dressed in absolute defense armor, Zhou Wen didn't need to worry that Blood Shaman could instantly kill him.